Hurt made his way to his feet. Oh! oh my God. Angle caught one suplex. Anderson. We need another referee out here or something. It's no disqualification, as we said. And now no count out. Yeah. And we need some, we need somebody to hold man down. down. Wait, now what? Oh, fish off the, the chair. Okay. I get what's I going down here. Bischoff coming in with a steel chair. What? No. what? It's not here. Peacemaker here. Hardy trying to separate the two. Just daring, daring Bischoff to hit him with the crutch. Kirk made his way to his feet. Oh! this match with the key on his neck, I guess. That looks to be the plan for Mr. Anderson. And yes, he has the key to escape the cage after defeating Kurt in the ladder match on impact. And that is the stipulation for this particular match at lockdown. Victorious when you walk out the cage door to win it. Yeah, real simple deal here. And Kurt Angle, oh, he's wow, got his. Leg chopped out from underneath him, and look. Not already, right? Look at Anderson. Why not? There's the <laughs> opening, but 
does he have angle beat down sufficiently? No, he doesn't. Right. There's no. our answer as Kurt is right back up to his feet. And not only prevents Anderson from opening the padlock and escaping the cage, but it, it put Angle in control for, well, a small amount of time. And look at this. Yeah, well, that got that chain, uh, it's not a huge chain, but that chain wrapped around, wow, the fist of, uh, of Mr. Anderson. Very similar to what we saw with the Warrior Medal that he's used on Kurt in the past as a weapon. Uses the chain, the key, whoa, the whoa, head, whoa. and going back for the padlock. Ah. Oh! When you, when you turn your back and go for the yeah, padlock, no, you leave your oh, wide no. open for a move yeah. like that. Listen, man, you don't turn your back if you can. Help it, I should say, and a 13-time world champion and a world-class athlete to the level of an Olympic gold medalist like Kurt Angle. I want to keep an eye on him while you're trying to open up that lock there. It's almost as if Angle and Anderson have two totally divergent oh, oh, oh. ideas that when it comes to this. That's, that's, did you see that? Yeah. That's the key is, is in the padlock, correct? Well, yes, it is. And uh, now there's the opportunity is there. If Kurt, you think, he wants. You think Kurt I, I think Kurt, does he realize that? I see well, him looking uh, over at the padlock. Oh, Michael, I'm not certain he does. Michael, unless he has a vision problem, I think he realizes he's looking right at it. Trigger before the show, no. <laughs> oh, snap, <laughs> suplex by Angle. Talking about the differences between the two. The idea for Anderson, simply to escape the cage and win. As far as Kurt goes, he loves having the cage match against Anderson so that it confines him. It prevents Anderson from running. <laughs> Smart move by Anderson using the side of the cage as a weapon, elevating Kurt up, and he went shoulder first right into the steel. Yeah, when you have uh, neck issues to the level of Kurt Angle, surgically repaired neck, that uh, being driven shoulder first. Oh, now Kurt, wow, wow, oh my God, that's ah. a little graphic right there. It's the violence you can expect at lockdown when you put every match in the steel oh, cage. God. This is bound to happen at some point, and Anderson senses that that this is a weakness in Angle, and he drives repeated shots to the head. Yeah, and I don't think uh, Anderson is any, there's no sign in him slowing down. And... This is where, you know, if, if you're Mr. Anderson, he's gonna bask in his glory, he's gonna, he's gonna eat this up. Definitely has no, e he's got a huge ego, I should say. And... close-up camera shot showing not only the blood streaming out of the head of Kurt Angle, but also the bad-mouthing that Anderson was oh. doing. Oh, God, did you hear that? Oh, oh my she God. Oh. That's very, that's just, oh, man, that's, and you can't get much more graphic and violent than that. At microphone on the ringside camera picking up the sound as the, the head of Kurt Angle was being driven into the side of the steel cage. Kurt's almost defenseless. Yeah, he is defenseless, I should say. And definitely Kurt's health is in jeopardy. And Anderson, uh, well, Kurt tried to ooh, counter. But Anderson had an answer for that. Didn't go face first into the boot and instead drops the elbow oh my across God, the chest. Kurt's skull is just wide open. Kurt's in a grave situation here. Anderson snaps off the leg drop. Heads over to the cage door. And now he wants to get up. Oh, wait. Kurt, Kurt able to get up and stop him? Cost himself again as Angle miraculously was back up to his feet. And while Anderson's attention was turned to the door, see if Kurt could turn it around. Did so momentarily, but then oh, pays the price. God. Good Lord, Kurt Angle's blood is all over Anderson's body on the, the canvas of the ring. Look at that, good man, jeez. It's a barbaric situation here. And Anderson, he's not done. Waiting for Angle to get to his feet. Pounces on him immediately. Looks like a pile driver oh, attempt oh. that's instead countered and reversed into a back body drop. I mean, Anderson's trying to dish out more punishment. He should have just got out of here. And it looks like Kurt's gonna get out of the cage. Oof! 
Angle with full speed and momentum of coming off the ropes. Drives the elbow into the back of Curtin. I'm not sure it sounded like Curtin again continued forward and went well, into the well, side the chain, of the cage again as you see the key in the padlock. Yeah, the chain popped off, obviously, of the key. The key is still in that lock. It looked like Mr. Anderson's head was busted open as well, I think. Yeah, it could be. Wow, maybe I, the top of his head. You can see the blood dripping down from the top of Anderson's yep. head. Angles in Anderson's sights. And he's not satisfied. And he's taking a long time here. He's not satisfied with the middle rope. He better be careful. See, that's what I'm saying. Goes to the top. Let's see if it costs him. Oh, yeah, it cost him, all right. Big time belly to belly suplex off the top rope. Kurt Angle. Can he capitalize? Remember, not about pin or submission. It's about walking out the cage door to win it. And when you think about taking away the pin or submission element in this match, does it help Mr. Anderson? Because Kurt is not able to win by using the ankle lock. Yeah, no, I definitely think it helps Mr. Anderson, but Mr. Anderson's so damn cocky, he had Kurt beaten up, bloodied, and battered. He could have got out of this, this cage and, and win this thing, but he, you know, he wanted to you know, beat up on Kurt more. Anderson's got something in mind. The tape from around his wrist is unraveling it. Able to bite it off, and now he's got that tape that's wrapped right around the throat, and he's just choking the life out of Kurt Angle. It's all legal right here. I mean, just like most of our matches tonight in this career shortening steel cage, and the whole theme of this pay per view is violence. And that mouthpiece was just spit out by Kurt Angle because he couldn't breathe. Got the legs now, grapevine around the body of Angle. So he's not only cutting off the air around the oh throat. Oh my God, look how tight it is. Look how tight it is. He's also cutting off the air oh. with, with the legs wrapped around the waist. The Kurt's, scissors hold. Kurt's got to try and get a finger or something between that tape to stop him from getting choked out. And that tape that wrestles wearing that wrist is extremely strong. It holds look, joints look, together and it, it's choking him out. Look at, look, at the, look at Kurt's face here. Look at the reaction. The There's no reactions from Kurt. Referee might want to think about stopping this match. And look at the angles. He's, he's fighting through it. The damn able, guys are able to break that vice grip of the leg scissors. Gets up to a knee and he's feeding off the crowd here in St. Louis. There is no quit in angle. Let's face it. The man is loaded with intestinal fortitude. His training is put that duck under to that back suplex. A quick underarm spin that was into that back suplex, still using the basics of wrestling, his amateur style, but Kurt is in a bad way here. It was a bad landing for Mr. Anderson off the suplex, but at the same time, how long is it going to take Kurt to regroup here and try and get his wind and try and get his air back? Well, that's a good question. I mean, Kurt is just in tremendous condition from a cardiovascular standpoint, but the man was choked out in a bad way. And both men are trying to get to a vertical base. Great crowd here in St. Louis at lockdown, oh, watching this incredibly physical and violent match between Mr. Anderson and Kurt Angle. Now with both men on their knees, they're battling in the middle of the ring. The exchange, and now both men up to the vertical base. Crowd reacting with each oh, strike. Wow. And Kurt oh, had the momentum man. coming off the ropes behind that right. You see Kurt's face, his eyes, he about decapitated. Anderson with that first clothesline was sickening. Then the running clothesline. Angle follows by shooting him off and then elevating him up and over with the back body. Oh, is that Anderson able to get the leg and the boots up as Kurt charged in? Uh-oh, uh-oh. But Kurt answers with the released belly-to-belly -belly overhead. Kind of looked like Anderson got trapped there, got shot out of a cannon, and out of Kurt Angle's face, his eyes. Angle slam, oh, nice counter. Float over by Anderson, avoids the angle slam, and then he rolls through with the momentum and the headbutt. Went for the pin, well, it was just that natural yeah, well, reaction. Yeah, it's just instinctually, you go for a pin cover after you hit one of your big moves. Then Anderson, he didn't, uh-oh, wait, wait. 
Go Mike check time. Mike check time. Well scouted by Angle. Series of elbows stops the attempt. Whoa! No stopping that suplex. Caught him with one German. Grips still there for the yeah. Olympic gold medalist. And we've talked about that tight grip, the amazing finger and hand and wrist strength that Kurt Angle has from all those years as an amateur wrestler. And watch how Kurt pops his hips and lowers his level on that third back suplex, that German suplex. Kurt still there with the grip after three. Not satisfied with the hat trick. Look at that. Beautiful picture, perfect throw right there. And as, as you can see, with the impact of each suplex, the life is being taken out of Mr. Anderson. Oh, yeah. And what, what Kurt's doing is actually, Kurt's getting his conditioning back. He's getting his breath back with that sick grip as he's got that reverse gut wrench on. Anderson, he's actually regrouping, Mike. I'm telling you, I've been in the ring with the man. I know it. Just Kurt being able to reel off this series of German suplexes after having the life choked out of him minutes ago by Mr. Anderson is simply amazing. And we're at five, and he's still got the grip task. Well, we might go to 20 innings on these suplexes. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Anderson will land from but he's not. See, Anderson's trying to break the grip, but to no avail. You're going again, buddy. The six pack is the exclamation point. Has Anderson been weakened sufficiently? I think so. For Kurt to open the cage door. Kurt's out. Kurt's gonna win this thing. He can leave anytime he wants. Kurt looks at the padlock, looks at the cage, hey, what, what, looks at the cage door. What is he doing? He could have left. But instead, he pulls down the straps. And there's the ankle lock. You can't win the match this way, but well, maybe you can, Taz. I don't because think... if you wear down Anderson sufficiently with the ankle lock, he's not gonna be able to stop Kurt from going out the door. Oh, free leg by Anderson. Well, that's good because there were signs that. <laughs> That Kurt was gonna try to. Watch out, watch out. Oh! God, he hit with a mic check out of nowhere. Out of desperate desperation, but it worked. Good timing right there for Mr. Anderson. Excellent counter. An amazing recovery by Anderson. He's not up yet, but he's about to leave, it looks like. The padlock That's has it. been opened. Look at Kurt though. He opens the door, but Kurt's right Whoa. behind him. Explosive angle slam. Doors wide open. What the? What's Kurt doing here? What is he could have just left and won this thing. Judging by the reactions of Kurt Angle, he's not satisfied with the beatdown on Mr. Anderson at this point in the match. And now, well, it looks like Kurt Angle is trapping, trapping Anderson in this ring. Kurt's got the key. Look at that. Kurt throws the key into the crowd here in St. Louis. Now there's no escape. Oh, man. It's Anderson's trapped here like an animal. The look on the face of Anderson tells the entire story. Well, it's still alive from a very good friend of mine. It's a good thing that Anderson's wearing black tights. <laughs> what a visual that is. The shot over the shoulder of Anderson as we see the close-up look at the face of Kurt Angle. <laughs> Anderson's just trying to get out of here. And I don't blame him. Look at Anderson. Hey! I don't think he was trying to get into a fight with Kurt. I think he was just trying to slow Kurt down so he could climb out. Anderson looking to escape. You can't win the match that way, but he, he just wants to avoid more of a beating from Kurt. But shot after shot to the head of Angle. And that open wound that Kurt has. Oh, no. Oh, no. Look out. You're going to kill Kurt. Kurt. Don't do Kurt. it. Look out, Kurt. Anderson with the elbows right into the face, but Angle won't give up the grip. Well, he, oh no! He knocked the snot out of him. Look at his face. Couldn't describe it better. Gotta see this 
this one again, guys. Please, in the truck, cue up the replay. Here it is. But that's off the top of the middle rope. A German suplex. Let me tell you, I've done a few suplexes in my day. I've never done nothing like that or, or thought of anything like that. That was sick. Kurt, I think he did the damage, man. Get out of the cage and win the match. This is awesome. 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 Got some barbaric fans here in St. Louis. <laughs> This is awesome, though. I think they've just about had it with Mr. Anderson, too. And all of the disrespect that he's had to Kurt and our military troops. Now what? Well, Kurt Angle has a moonsault in his arsenal. I don't think he really needs to do it, but I think he's got... Kurt. Oh, no, Kurt. Kurt, Kurt. Come on, Kurt. Oh, my God. Okay. That's all I'm going to tell you. That's the most go. amazing move. Watch this. Like, look at this. Watch this, Taz. Good God. I, I never, I'll tell you, now I'm, this is not an overstatement. Oh, my God. What a shot that is. That is just, oh, that's, that's insane, man. Spectacular Good. shot. Guys in the truck. That was, that was insane. Kurt Angle, one of the most insane moves in the history of TNA. Hell, in the history of professional wrestling. Kurt's got I guess there's another king. Kurt's gonna, gonna walk out anytime he wants. That was insane. Escape the cage door. Anderson with the double bird for Kurt Angle. Oh no. <laughs> Oh my God, what is Anderson out of his mind? Oh! Did he catch him? Oh, look out! What's the money? Oh! God! Kurt had the chance to go out the door. I mean, you can understand with, with Anderson's reactions well, listen, that Kurt would want to go back, but... Let's look. Hey, look, bottom line, in my opinion, Anderson, he played a mental game here, yeah. and if he's able to walk out of this cage, right. he won that mental game. You're right, Taz. Anderson crawling. His body right at the cage door. Kurt's trying to get over there. Kurt's trying to get him. Kurt's going to get his Does ankle. He He's got the ankle. Michael. Oh, God. Ankle lock applied. And now he's going to drag him back out he's, to the middle. And if Kurt gets those legs in, Kurt will snap Anderson's ankle off. I'm telling you. It don't matter. Look at the ref saying you can tap all night, bro. And tap, and tap, and tap. Slick Johnson reminds Anderson, you win by going out the door. Oh. How, about, how about the momentum of Anderson rolling through? And Kurt goes into the cage. Both these men, whenever this thing is over, will never be the same, I'm telling you. Mr. Anderson, Anderson can't even, again. he can't even stand up, Mike. He's trying to just sliver out. Yeah, like, him out of like here. a snake. And boy, is that appropriate. Anderson under the bottom. Look at Kurt. Look at Kurt. Get him, Kurt. What the hell is that? What, what's Kurt? <laughs> Kurt's got something wrapped around his neck. It might be the chain, maybe that popped off the uh, key. Poetic justice, Mike, what we saw in that ladder match when Kurt was trying to climb to the top to get the key for this match. And Anderson was choking Kurt out with the, the chain from the key. And 
as well as what we saw earlier with Mr. Anderson choking him. Oh, so it looks like the Warrior Medal, That's Mike. It is. How appropriate is that also, that he uses the Warrior Medal? Oh, and that is the payback that Kurt Angle's been waiting for, to spit in the face of oh. Mr. Anderson. And then there's the exclamation point. That's more graphic and physical than what we just witnessed. Both these men beating the holy crap out of each other out here. Kurt Angle proved why he's on a completely different level than everybody else in the world of this industry. Look at look this. Look at that, look at that. That sick attempt, the Never. moonsault off the top of the cage. By Kurt Angle, you called it graphic. It was certainly physical. It was brutal, but you know what it was for Kurt Angle? Satisfaction. He's got the chair and in his turn. Oh my God, he gets crushed him right in the skull. Always good to go to kidairussing.com. You can also check out all the other knockouts as well and so much other. Homicide looked like he was coming out a little cocky to me, but you know what? That's his way, and that's okay. Robert Rude right now, one thing about it, LAX, they work together so well. That's one thing you have to admit. Maybe as good or better than any tag team in the world right now today. Hernandez, Homicide, they bring so much. Robert Rude, James Storm, well, this is the first. I mean, they're really going to have to get to learn each other very quickly, and it's going to have to be tonight. Homicide and Rude square off, and Rude shoves him off into the ropes. Homicide comes off, Rude ready for him, but quickly reversed by Homicide, who takes him over with a high hip toss, then follows it up, catches him with a boot high into the chest, and caught him that time with the kick right in the gut. Now he's going for the cover right here, trying to make this really quick, but Robert Rude gets that shoulder up in time. I'm gonna tell you what I think Robert Rude and James Storm have to do, Mike. I think they're gonna to have to tag each other quickly. They're gonna to have to keep LAX off balance. They can't stay out there too long or it'll be over quick. And look at Homicide right there with that drunk hole. Put him face first into the mat. And going right at him with the boot. Memphis, Tennessee was great for Slammiversary, but we can't wait till we hit Houston, Texas with Victory Road. We have late breaking news on our debut in Houston, the Victory Road pay-per-view. It's available at TNA Mobile. Text TNA to 76,000. And how about that power move from Supermax Hernandez, followed up by the in-tight dropkick by Homicide. Well, one thing is we see the pin. Oh, Cowboy gets the shoulder up in time. I think it's Slammiversary. One thing that Hernandez showed the whole world. If they had not heard it from us enough, just what an incredible athlete that he really is. And the combination between the two of them is unlike any other dynamic right now in tag team wrestling. Hernandez, you look at him and you see the strength and the muscle, but then when you see him do those acrobatic things, you understand where the Super Mex Monica comes from. And how besides, well, he's just fearless. Corner clothesline by Homicide. Follows it up with the corner mount. And now, gonna rein in those right hands. Series of shots to the top of the head of the Cowboy. And you see Robert Rude comes over to interfere. But at the same time, Jacqueline was distracting the referee. And that's got Hector Guerrero P.O. Well, that's what they had to do to get this momentum turned. I mean, you can't agree with it, but you expect it with Robert Rude. You expect it with James Storm to take it in. Look at that. Well, she's got a belt. She's got the belt. She's got it wrapped around Homicide's neck. And she was just choking him to death down there. And Homicide lost his breath. And now Robert Rude takes advantage of it. He's just choking the life out of him with that leather belt. That Leather strap and look at Rude follow up this advantage. First the kicks, kneeling with several strikes, then the punches, look and again, again the referee is taken out of play here by Hernandez, and yes, she follows up again by wrapping that leather belt, that strap right around his neck. The referee doesn't realize it. Hernandez realizes that things are going bad, but homicide right now, he's got to be going through confusion. As I mean, she was just you know how strong Jackson is. She was just. Stitching that thing against the mat, taking the air right out of him. Boy, this is such an important matchup with the TNA World Tag Team titles at stake. You hate to see it decided by anything like that kind of outside interference. Storm the quick cover. Referee Shane Sewell down for the count and only two. Well, you can see he's going for another count. There it is, two. Storm realized that Homicide was weakened. You could see it. His, his gait was slower, and he hit him with that high knee, and James Storm thought he had the shot. That's why he went right for the pin again, and look at this. Keeping Homicide over here 
in their corner, and Robert Root comes in and just, the double team on him right now is too much. He's got to get Hernandez in here quickly. Got to give him props. Back to the basics of tag team wrestling for the Tennessee Cowboy and Robert Roode. They're cutting off the ring. Homicide trying to turn things around. Inverted atomic drop. Now he tags in and Hernandez comes in. Slingshot shoulder block. Then the clothesline for Storm. Here goes Roode for the ride. And he, Whoa. Wow, look at that. He just took him up into the lights. Here comes the shirt off, and he goes right around the neck of Storm. And look at him throw him all the way across the ring. That superhuman strength of Hernandez. Throws him into the turnbuckle, and look at this. Oh, man. Got him up on the shoulder and powers him down. Here we go. One, two. Storm in to break it up, and now Homicide comes in, and this thing's broken down with all four men in it. Homicide just got decked by Storm. James Storm, nice shot on Homicide, but you can see Hernandez, you can see, trying to get him spun around. Nice kick by James Storm. As Homicide got turned the wrong direction, but, I mean, Hernandez, but Hernandez takes Storm all the way up and onto the steps. James Storm hit the steps. Yeah, bad landing for Storm when he got sent out to the floor that time. Storm outside, Jacqueline trying to revive him, get him back into play, and wow, Storm just knocked him out with that kick. Just came right up to the apron and kicked him right in the back of the head. Caught Hernandez, and now you can see Robert Rude going right after him as, as Homicide took care of Storm outside. But now Rude trying to hit him with the payoff, but he no. can't quite do it. And look at the strength of Hernandez. Overpowered with the front suplex after Homicide hit the gringo killer outside on Storm. Now, check this out. Rude up in the shoulders of Supermax. Homicide headed to the top floor. Here he goes. Wait a minute, Jacqueline up on the apron. Again, the distraction. Robert Rude able to get down and push Hernandez into Homicide. And what's going on? Oh, you can just see the Wait, you, Did you see that? She Jacqueline. gave him the belt. Yeah, and he... she just took the belt. She took that, that leather strap and handed it into James Storm. He's wrapping it around his boot. He's got it around his boot, and you can see he's got the buckle side on the bottom of the shoe. As Hernandez still right now, a heck of a trying to explain what's going on, as you can see it there. But while that's going on, Hernandez, though, has Robert Roode, and he's going to try to hit him with a border toss. Got him up. Takes him up to his shoulders, and oh! He walked right into that super kick, but the boot was loaded. One. They got the pin. They stole the title. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your winners and new DNA World Tag Team Champions, Robert Roode and Cowboy Jim Storm. Oh, this is BS. Oh, the buckle. The buckle was on the bottom of the shoe. And when he hit it with the last call, it just rang his bell. And you can see him in the He is furious. Homicide crap. I mean, you can't get it. I mean, you can't get it. They say you crossed the line. Like that's a bad thing. Like it's a bad thing. Like you've gone too far. Guess what? I don't think it goes far enough. Pain. Pain and pleasure. Blood. Carnage. Suffering. That's a simple reality of my world. Every time they draw a new battle line, we cross it. Without reservation or regret. Hey, they, whoever you are. Maybe it's time to draw up something else. Like your retirement plan. TNA Wrestling, cross the line. And we are back on Impact. Chaos and pandemonium here in the Impact Zone. Check out this replay, Don. Well, there it was. He had the belt around the foot, the buckle on the bottom of the shoe. It caught Hernandez. Now look at this. Yeah. Rude and Storm. Yeah, you, you know what's happened here. Referee Shane Sewell has restarted this matchup. Yes, LAX, their man at ringside. Hector Guerrero explaining the situation of the referee. And the referee, I think, made a great call here in well, reversing that decision to the point where he's going to restart the match and he's going at it again. One thing about it though, Hernandez is still reeling from that last call, that super kick by Storm. And Rude and Storm know it, and they're going right after the weekend. Hernandez trying to finish it so they can do it this time and keep those belts. And Hector Guerrero doing anything he can to somehow build up Hernandez and get him back in there. Hector trying to cheer on. 
wants the Latin American exchange on, from ringside. Go. Trying to get inside the head of Big Hernandez. Double team move here. Wow, oh, he's able to fight off both Storm and Rude. How do you like that? He took the arms, crisscrossed them, and then nailed them with the double clothesline. Hernandez feeling it now. You know he's gonna get revenge as he uses the shoulder for a backbreaker. Right there on Storm, and now he's got Robert Rude, and he puts him up. Oh, side slams him down, and here he goes. Oh my gosh, Homicide craned him. Senton off the top. Homicide hits the backsplash, and wow, Storm just came charging across the ring and just completely decked Homicide. He also decked Hernandez, and there he goes. But look at Hernandez. He caught him like it was playing catch, and then power bombs him down. Count two. two. Got it. Justice! Justice is served here on Thursday Night Impact! The restart of the match enables the Latin American Exchange and Hector Guerrero to, yes, retain those TNA World Tag Team Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute. He's got the chair and then it turns! Oh my god, he just crushed him right in the skull! He just crushed him right in the skull! And now, while Storm's holding homicide, he crushes him in the head! Look out! Another one for Hector Guerrero! Wow! Three vicious, stiff, lethal chair shots by Robert Roode, and look at the damage that he's done! They got the belt taken back, and rightfully so, but they got the revenge in the end. It's unbelievable Storm and Robert Roode. Now look at this, they're handcuffing Hernandez right there to the turnbuckles, and you can see Storm is doing the same thing as Jackman's got the cuffs. Oh no, they're just gonna continue this beat down right here. What's going on at ringside here with James Storm and one of the fans? He just grabbed his belt. And no. now you see that Jacqueline is using the duct tape to tie up Hector Guerrero, and, and now they've taken the belt off of referee Shane Sewell. You see Jackson's got a belt, Ruth's got a, all of them got a belt. And look at them, they're just taking the strap to everybody. Oh my gosh, look at those shots. One wicked shot after another. Somebody put a stop to this. Jacqueline and Storm and Rude are just relentless with those straps. Just non-stop, shot after shot with the leather belt, with the leather straps across the back. There you see it, Hernandez, Homicide, Hector Guerrero, all on the receiving end of one hell of a beating. And it's like they're taking, look at this. They're beating the hell out of the referee. You can see other TNA officials, other referees trying to get in here, but I mean, they're intimidated as well because they're swinging that leather. And that oh, leather God. hits that exposed flesh and the sweat and the sting, it's just, Twice the pain. What a beating this is. They haven't let up. I mean, it has just been relentless. This is sickening. I mean, you can to see, see these three the guys just Hernandez. absolutely defenseless out here. And there's nothing they can do. They've got him in the corners. Oh, and look at the scars across his it. back. Unbelievable, the shot. Boy, this is revolting. What a sick display that we have witnessed here on Thursday Night Impact. James Storm, Robert Roode, and Jacqueline. That makes me sick to my stomach. They just beat down all three members of LAX like dogs with those leather belts. And LAX tonight, what just happened uh, out there was just a little taste. Consider it a drive-by. We're begging you, LAX. We're begging you for some retaliation. Tell them, Storm. Hello, gay pasta, Mexicans. <laughs> or should I say, Mexicans? <laughs> Mexicans! <laughs> I like it. Because you guys cannot beat us. Because we have the two things that make this world go round. That's the money. Money! And the beer! Beer! Yeah. Beer! Beer! I love it. God, <laughs> that's awful. God, that's awful. That's all right. But you know what? You talk about how bad you are that you're from the streets. And you walk around with your little pea shooters. You know what, boys? I am the Tennessee Cowboy James Storm. I'm from the hills of Tennessee. That's right. I drive a 1979 Ford pickup truck with a shotgun in the back window. Damn! I don't give a damn! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! We beat you down <laughs> because we're looking for a fight. The only question is, can you senoritas give us one? Sorry about your damn luck. <laughs> his strategy at that point. I think he saw that Joe was getting back up to his feet and Stinger splash in the corner. 
I think he decided that it was better at that point with Joe getting back up not to get caught up on top. And can he uh -oh. go here for the Scorpion? He's got it now. He locks this in and he gets it cinched in. Here it is. His He's... patented finishing move. Scorpion deadlock applied in the ring positioning here. Looks pretty darn good to me. I think he's got him out from the ropes. I don't think Joe. Oh, he's applied the he pressure. Sits down. Look at him sit down on it. Is Joe going to tap? This is un... Wait a minute. Is Joe's fighting to tap? Here we go. And there he is! Taz! And if there's one person that had the right to train him, it's the submission master himself. As you see Taz coming out, and look at Joe. He just sees it, feels it, and pops right to his feet. Taz comes to ringside. We finally have confirmed who that mystery advisor was that's turned Samoa Joe, turned his career around as Sting gets shot off into the corner. Clothesline misses and Sting fights back with a big elbow shot. Just though the, the change that came over Joe when he saw Taz come down, you know he didn't want to let him down. Sting now knows he's got to try to finish it here. It's Top like, rope clothesline, one, count, no, two, no, no only two. Look at Joe, he takes one shot and gets right back up. Sting's gotta be wondering what it's gonna take. He looked over the shoulder of Taz, you can see him barking out orders, instructions to Samoa Joe and Sting up in no man's land, gets crunched up on the top rope. And Samoa Joe could be going muscle buster here. How many times tonight have we seen those high risk maneuvers backfire? And he's trying to Sting's see. trying to fight him off yeah, with everything is. out of the corner. You gotta give Sting credit. He just won't go for the muscle buster. But Joe drops down the rear naked choke that Kakina Clutch applied. And he's got it cinched in, and I don't see anywhere for Sting to go. I don't see anywhere for him to move. The ropes are too far away. And ever since Taz came down, this thing turned around, and you can see Joe's got it. Oh, he's got it in there tight. Is Sting gonna take that? He just tapped. Here is your winner, the Samoan Submission Machine, Samoa Joe! Wow. The run of success for the main event mafia continues tonight at Victory Road, and I just can't get over it. Just, just the, the addition of Taz coming out to ringside, and Samoa Joe takes over, slaps on the rear naked choke, and Sting taps. I mean, when you look at the two of these guys, come on, let's face it, it's a match made in heaven. How important was it? When you look at Taz, you look at Joe, and you think of the main event, Mafia. David, here comes Kaz. Yes, Kaz the man, who earned an X Division title shot against the reigning champ, Petey Williams at Slammiversary, gets the cover, and yes, got the three count on Lance Hoyt. Here are your winners, the Guru, Sanjay Dutt, Kaz, and Black Machismo. Sunday, June 8th, Slammiversary, Kaz, he earned that title shot, winning the Terror Dome match. And now we're gonna hear from Black Machismo, Jay Lethal, he's got a microphone. Well, Val, please into the ring. Val, please into the ring, asking for SoCal Val. Well, we've been watching the courtship between these two for the past couple months. In the world? I don't know. Handed the microphone that, over to Kaz. That belly pack that he brought out with him. Oh, man. Drops down to a knee. You think this could be? Oh, you better think this through, son. You better think this through. What are you talking about? No. Will you? Marry me. He just popped the question. What? I mean, he's doing it for the God and everybody. At Slammiversary. That's... Is that a yes? I mean, we now know why he's preoccupied, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. I oh. guess that confirms it. Slammiversary? Did he say, will you marry me at Slammiversary? That's what he said. And she said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Man, all right. It's not 
life just got a little bit more bizarre. Well, we've watched the courtship. We just witnessed the proposal. And at Slammiversary, it's going to be the wedding. Black Machismo and some cowbell. Look, look at this. Unbelievable. Scott Hall had every trick in the book. That's why he wore the Elvis costume out here. Things were going right his way. He was getting ready to become the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. And then Scott Hall, one of the kings of wrestling, came out to Jarrett's aid and turned the tide in Jarrett's favor. And that cost Jeff Hardy that championship. And Jeff Hardy hasn't seen that championship or shot at that championship since. This is a chance for him to get the payback. Troubleshooting referee Rowdy Roddy Piper interviewed recently by our website, TNAWrestling.com, and he made it clear that Scott Hall will not be able to hide behind his friends. Oh, look at that. I wonder wow. if Scott Hall's ever or been to hide foreign objects either. You wonder if Scott Hall's ever been in that position before. Excuse me? Think about it. Getting, getting searched. You know, when, when Piper talked about oh, hiding... Oh, look at this! Yeah, hiding behind he his friends. Fork. What's he got, the kitchen sink as well? Roddy Piper, so familiar uh -huh. with the tactics of Hall and Nash through the years, and he's experienced them firsthand. Who better to have here than Piper as the referee? Now what's he doing? Look at this! Unbelievable! Scott Hall had every trick in the book. That's why he wore the Elvis costume out here, because he could hide all the gadgets. And how smart now does the move by the director of authority, Dusty Rhodes, look? Oh, by bringing in Roddy Roddy Piper? Absolutely, somebody that knows the dirty tricks of Scott Hall. What's he doing? Oh. He's gonna check out the hot rod right here. He's frisking Piper. Oh, what's, oh, handcuffs. What do you think that was for? A lot of questions need to be answered. Piper says, let's wrestle. Hardy open hand slap to the back of Scott Hall. How about an interesting trivia note for you? When Jeff Hardy started his professional wrestling career, his first match in the WWF, his opponent, Scott Hall, one in the same. Talk about their paths crossing years later. It always comes full circle. Oh! Nice counter, nice kick by Jeff Hardy. Now that was perfectly placed. Oh man! Shot off into the corner. Look at Hardy. Boy, I tell you what, he's on top of his game. He just crept up to the top of the ropes right there and just catching Scott Hall off balance. A unique double spring move there by Hardy. May have caught Hall unaware. He might have even caught Hardy a little bit. It looked like he kind of caught the top of his head. And I think Scott Hall realized that too. Position Hardy against the ropes. Now shooting across. Back of the clothesline by Hardy. Oh, you could see the size yeah, of the strength. Try, try to cross body block. Hall caught him in mid air. Oh, man. Just spit him right over the back of his head and slammed him in the back. Fall away slam. Here's one. Here's two. Barely a two count from referee Piper. Oh, you, got, you know, I almost thought it was a slow yeah. count myself, but you could see Scott Hall feels like it was. Not happy with the cadence of the count. Oh, here we go. Oh, one, Hardy. Two, What'd you think of that one? Was that a little better? I thought that was a little quicker. Uh-oh. Oh, he had a quick Small roll up. package. I'll think of it. Scott Hall is trying to figure this out right here. He knows he got a slow count. He knows Hardy got a quick count. So he's got to regroup and rethink what he's going to do. As you see Piper counting him out. And Scott oh, Hall. Right there by Hardy to keep him up. Here goes Hardy over the top. Oh, catches him, and that wasn't that wasn't a pad there that Scott Hall landed on. Yeah, Scott Hall was milking the count. Hardy not gonna let that happen. Gunning for revenge. Ooh, oh man, right into the steel steps. Crash down across the shoulder of Hall, takes him into the steel, and again just tosses him, just flings him down to the floor. It's like he caught his head into the ring post a little bit there too. Jeff Hardy doing everything that he can to exact all the pain that he can on Scott Hall. Especially now knowing that Scott Hall, what Scott Hall had in store for him. Oh! With everything that he brought into the ring. Nice shot there by Hardy. Double leg drop by Hardy. Hall reeling here at this point. Even having a difficult time getting back up to his feet. Hardy's ready for him. Caught him with a pair of right hands. Ooh. 
Look at that, the elbow right to the back of the head, to the back right there, man. He just got such a, just, He's exploiting the size advantage yes. that he had. Just that opportunity to reach back and to drill him with those elbows. Follow up clothesline in the corner by Hall. He used that weight right there into the corner, you can see, and just caught him with the arm over the neck. And here he goes again, look at that. Just slingshooting that arm right in the neck of Hardy and just knocking the press out of him. Follow up clothesline in the corner by Hall. Crowd here, chanting for Hardy to try and mount a comeback. Ooh, nice right right there by... Got on. I'll tell you what, that was not open. Yeah, I was getting ready to say, Piper's now letting him know, make sure it's an open hand because that was a closed fist. Hall. Working on Hardy. Ooh, look at the death the hair. Lock. Pulling back on the arm. Got the legs death lock, cranking on the arm as well, and you're right. Grabbing onto the dreads of Jeff Hardy. Now, just kept trying to humiliate him right there. Exactly what it is, paint brushing him. I'll tell you what, though, Piper trying to keep this thing fair. Right down the line. It's his job as troubleshooting referee when Desky Rhodes puts you in this kind of a position. He's got when the hair again. Yeah, when the director of authority is relying on Piper to make sure that Hardy gets his opportunity for revenge. Oh, pin attempt off the slam and nope, just two. Again, did that count? Just, did it seem slow to just you? Just a little bit to me. Just a little bit. And again, you can see Scott Hall just doing everything he can to humiliate him because he knows. He's oh! Oh, he throws him right into Piper. Went to shoot him off into the ropes, you think? Or do you think that he had the intention? Oh, that was no of, accident. Of firing Hardy right into referee Piper. No accident at all. Hall was looking for every chance he could. Oh, what's he got here? Oh, you gotta be kidding. Looks like brass nuts. He's got him taped up right there. He's got him in his hand. Wrapped around his hand. Hardy doesn't stand a chance if he gets hit with this. Oh, I love it, Piper in time. Oh, both the eyes. Not gonna let him have the advantage. Yes. Caught him with the twist. Hardy. Is he gonna go for the swan time here? And I'm gonna start with you, King of the Mountain. You! Sending a challenge out to the champion, Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Hardy. Laying down the challenge to the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Wow, take a nice look. Got right there at Hardy. I mean, it's Scott Hall. If you see Piper telling Hardy just to back off. You got a shot at the title. Get out while you can. Roddy Piper troubleshooting referee for this victory. Jeff Hardy scores it. Jeff Hardy oh. just knocked off Scott Hall. Next world's heavyweight champion. Right here. Next world's heavyweight champion. Well, I'll tell you what, here comes the monster of it. What? What the world? Are you kidding me? What just happened here? Abyss? From the back, look out! He's not gonna take it as you say. He's got Hardy up in the rack. Here he is, Abyss oh. just slams him in the torture rack right there. What the hell? What the hell is he doing He's here? He's not even on the court. Not on that court. He's supposed to be here at DNA. Is he on the TNA roster? What is going on? Hardy just got caught on a way. with the black hole slam. Well, the lights go out here in Final Resolution, and look at who comes flying in. If you people could shut up for a minute and let the man in the ring talk.
Tonight is very special for two reasons. Number one, this is the second time the Motor City Machine Guns have come out on this pay-per-view broadcast, and you will be lucky at home if your pay-per-view provider does not charge you double. Secondly, because everyone's favorite best-selling author, former world champion, that ratty looking Mick Foley is about to come out here and reverse the decision of the Feast or Fired match. You are looking at the new number one contenders for the tag team champions. I don't know why you're booing. We are more than qualified to be champions. Mick's kind of taking his time right now. We found some chairs with excellent lower lumbar support. Why, thank you. You're very charming. Tip your waitress, she'll be here all week. And people say chivalry's dead, huh? Huh? Mick, I know you can hear me in the back. We just finished talking to you. We are sitting in this ring until you get your ass out here. The protest from the Motor City Machine Guns with a sit-in here at Final Resolution, positioning the chairs in the middle hey, of the six-sided uh, ring. Cornette's going to address guns. it. I don't mean to disappoint everybody. I'm not Mick Foley, but Mick Foley's got more important things to do here tonight than wet nurse a couple of crybabies like you. And I've known Mick Foley for a long time, and Alex Shelley, I'm looking at you, and I'm saying that you couldn't whip half of Mick Foley if the other half of him was helping you. So what you better do before you get in further trouble tonight, and before you delay this pay-per-view for these fine folks any longer, what you better do, get your butts out of those chairs, and get out of that ring, and out of the building right now. Or what, Jim? You're all high and mighty up at the top of that stage. Hey, do we look like a low red rock and roll express to you? Do I look like a cross-eyed Robert Gibson? Does he look like Ricky Morton? What are you gonna do? You're gonna hit us with a tennis racket or another piece of sports equipment? What are you going to do, Jim Cornette? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, you little smart mouth punk. You wound me down to the quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step about 20 feet this way and I'm gonna get the biggest, baddest security guards we got and they're gonna swoop you up and they're gonna drag you kicking and screaming out of that ring, out of this building, and off this property. You just sit right there, I got something for you. Jim Cornette gonna get now this taken care of. Game. Going to get the security there so we can get One these guys out of here. You hear Shelly, he says, now we play the waiting game. Cornette going to get TNA security to cards. remove the guns and get final resolution back on track. Can't wait for Cornette to come back out here. right here. I mean, think about it. The best their, they their, their entire future here in TNA right. rests on this. Let's hear from Earl Hebner. Brother Devon, tonight's the night. You make the scale weight 
or you don't have a job with TNA anymore. This is not right. This is not right. Do you people really want to see us get fired from TNA? Wow. 110% uh, response. I thought there might be some Listen, nostalgia there, but no. I'm not nope. fat, and Devon is not fat. All of these women in Virginia are fat. You're fat. Your mother's fat. You're a fat short head. You're a fat paprika head, and we're going to make weight right now. I'll tell you what. He needs to find a way to break that scale first. Brother Devon. Brother Ray sounded pretty confident, didn't he? Remember, 275 is the limit. Devon might make it. Devon might make it. I saw him running earlier today. He might make it. Look at him. He's confident. No way. What's it going to be? Earl Hebner looking at it. You're what? Okay. Thumbs up. He's in. Thumbs up from Earl Hebner. Well, at least one half of Team 3D stays as Brother Devon is able to continue on and he'll never get weight again, Mike. Facial expressions of Brother Ray tell the entire story. You can see just, just, just that moment of hesitation where he realizes what's on the line here. Everybody think heavy. Like I said, he does look a little thinner, but no way is that enough. Trying to get the, I don't think the breathing exercises work there, Brother Ray. Very gingerly. Approaching the scale, we've got one foot on. Yeah, I think you ought to jump on it hard and just break it. And then, it, then it's up. Look at it. He's he trying he to make it. He can't even bear to look down. You could see the two referees looking at it. Earl Hebner to Seth Ryan. Look at this. Is he going to stay or is he going to go? What is going to happen? All right. You made it. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Come wow. on. That's a crock. Is a crock. Earl Hebner saying that both Brother Ray, Brother Devon, Team 3D, able to weigh in. Which Johnny Devine doing and here? You know what? He's giving them ding dongs and holos and excuse me. Else he <laughs> Anything else that has chocolate in it? I mean, you, you think they might wait until after the match to do this? Why would they? Look at this! Oh, quick roll up here by both Curry Man and Shark Boy. Well, you wanted to know what a. Uh, uh, Fish Market Street Fight was, well, let me tell you something, it's on, and Team 3D is still alive, I can't believe it, but there's no sense thinking about it. It's now up to Curry Man and Shark Boy to work together. Curry Man, yeah, he's got Brother Devon. Sandwiched in the corner, and then charges at him with that flying hip attack. Well, I'll tell you something, you, 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 you love the excitement and the entertainment that these two bring, but don't, don't slide them for a second. Curry Man, Shark Boy are getting better and better the more they work together. Look at that double drop kick, and that's how you take out 274 and 99, 100 pounds right there. Curry Man and Shark Boy enjoy what they've done in the opening minute of this matchup. Brother Ray, Brother Devon, Johnny Devine as well, all out here on the arena floor. Brother Ray caught his head on the steel steps. When they kicked him out, I could see blood on the head. Brother Ray caught his head on the steel steps. And I'm going to, oh, look at this. He yeah. figures he can't be weighed in again. He doesn't want no part of this. He got green by the steel steps. I think it's the fish market part of the street fight that we're about to see as we see, oh, no, they're going to try and head up the rim instead. Curry Man and Shark Boy in pursuit. Well, you can see that they just weren't ready emotionally for this, and Curry Man and Shark Boy are. They're not going to let them out of the building. They got some fish they want to hit them with. Folks, let me tell you something. That's not a singing bass right there. That's the real thing. Oh, man. Oh, and can you imagine? Face first right into the fish. Curry Man picks it up and, oh! Drilled him right across the back. Yep. I'll say it. Don't worry, be happy. Holy mackerel, what a shot that was. Oh, man. How do you call this? He just jams him in the gut right there with a tuna or something. Wow. I tell you what, I'll identify the holds, you identify the fish. Well, that's I our see deal. A, I, see a, I see a striper right there. Is that what that is? Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. I'm, I'm going to depend on Keith Mitchell, the fisherman, to help me out with this. Wait a minute, we got the fishing pole right there by, by Curry Man. He's looking for something. 
Yeah, and you can see Brother Devon and Shark Boy going at it as well. What Curry Man's up to here, but you're right. He's got the. What did he take? He took. This match is, is, is a long way from floundering. I'm going to tell you that right now. But he took one of those holes. He's got it, one of those ding dongs. That's a ding dong. Wow. Look out. Look out, Brother Ray. Swinging a stick at Don and I. Look, look. Curry Man is dangling the ho ho from the end of the fishing line. I believe that's a deep dog. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Not that I. Well, you can see it works. And he's landed him. He's landed him. A whale. Oh, he, oh my he, God. Oh, he's hooked himself a big one, all right. You talk about a fishing story. Man alive. You talk, he's got Orca. He's bringing Orca in. It was a perfect thing, but look at that. He's able to get rid of it, but Curry Man nails him. And Here then Curry Man airborne, slingshot cross body block on Brother Ray. Brother Ray knocked out in front of the table. It's Curry Man coming right over after him. Brother Ray's got to find a way to turn this thing around as he goes back towards the fish market over here. And then he uses, look at him, just pull it on the eyes, pull it on the mouth, trying to stop Curry Man and it clubs him in the back of the head. I mean, it is a street fight, so obviously that's legal. No problem with that. Oh, no, no. Curry Man's got that fishing net. And as Brother Ray arranges the fish, oh, he's, he's got the fishing net wrapped around his head. Well, now well, down across his shoulder. Well, let me tell you, he must have made weight because no way. Uh oh. What, what has he got right there? Holy cow, that's a big fish. Oh, he creeps it with it. Man. The big striper. As, as right now, Brother Devon is turning around on Shark Boy on the other side. As Curry Man, of course, taking it to Brother Ray. Devon taking it. Oh, look at that. He just sent Curry Man right into the fish in the ice. Into that giant tray of fish. There goes Shark Boy right into the safety rail, courtesy of Brother Devon. This is what Team 3D does so well. They outlast you. And once they get the motor running, Brother Devon and Brother Ray can take over. And every fish that he can find, Brother Ray is totally Curry Man with. The good thing about it is, his fish with the curry on it makes it a lot better taste. Uh oh. There goes fish into uh -oh. the crowd here in uh -oh. Courtesy of Brother Ray. You had a oh, feeling that, that was going to yeah, happen. Yeah, something told me. And now the fish are flying back. Excuse me? The fish are flying at Destination X. Brother Ray with a shot for Curry Man. And oh, now he's got no. No, no, no get, get out of here. here. Get him out of here. Get him, get him out, out of here. here. No, oh, no. Oh, my God. He just he's no on the back. Yeah, get that out of here. Holy cow. Oh. That's gross. Oh. Why wouldn't he? Clean up at the broadcast table when you got a shot. Wow. Brother Ray, Brother Devon, and Devon's got him a table opened up as you've got. Look out! Here comes another flying fish, courtesy of Brother Ray. Oh, for the love of God. Next time the Shark Boy calls for a fish market street fight, somebody yep. say no. <laughs> Him with the kindo stick. Yeah, there's fish guts all over the monitors and broadcast table. Oh my gosh, it stinks. We're trying to keep you, you posted with everything that's still going on. Oh, some fish. Yeah, Let's good see luck. some fish on you. Oh, you now, Johnny Devine, oh. of course, he's going to get involved. And keep in mind, this is a street fight, no disqualification. This is a fight that. <laughs> Looks like Johnny Devine has. Shark Boy is some sort of a Boston Crab there in the net. Yeah, the Boston <laughs> Crab. Of course it would be. Yeah, why wouldn't it be? But you got to realize, this should be a match that Shark Boy should be dominating right now. But it's the numbers game, the three on two. And look at this. Holy cow. Oh, well, Brother Ray. Yep. French kissing the fish before he uses it as a weapon on Curry Man. Was that a snapper or a blowfish there? I'm not sure. <laughs> wow. Oh, my look God. Look out, look out. Come on. What a moment. Oh, it's... 
Now what does he have? Of course he's got a big wooden paddle. Oh, for the love of God. Dead fish all over the I place. I got broken fans. We got fish everywhere. Now Just as we were getting close. Devon using the other fishing pole as a weapon. Man, this thing is just indescribable, Mike. Steve, you okay? Our attractive assistant down here just got cream with a giant sea bass. He was throwing it at you, by the way, Don. I know he was. I'm glad she dove in there and took the hit. Wow, what a man. <laughs> well, I've only been hit with a catfish. You hear the crowd. Team 3D now looking around as this thing is just... Then it stinks in here. You're not kidding. Here it goes. Oh, he went for the headbutt. Curry Man get out of the way. Curry Man gets out of the way again. Backsplash by brother Ray. I'll say one thing, that's the strongest ring I've ever seen. That took two unbelievable hits. Look at Shark Boy sneaking back in. Shark Boy up on top. Here he comes. Double clothesline by Shark Boy. Brother Ray, Brother Devon both go down. This is his chance. Did you see Shark Boy? One shot after another going after it. As he's fired up. And look at him just sit in the back body drop on Brother Devon. Brother Ray's got him, and Shark Boy fights back. Beating Rocky with those rights. Come on, you the ride goes Shark Boy. Off the best press, and Shark Boy raining in rights. Crowd fired up. Oh, oh man, out of nowhere. Man. Did you see that shot? He ran out of room. And I am telling you, Devon Devon crushed him. Nice shot by Curry, man. He's just able to knock Devon off of his feet. Well, look at Devon. Look at that strength. Just the kick in the gut. And yeah, here it goes. Just overpowered him. Oh, the saving grace. He just cranks him on the back of the head. One, Cover, two. two. Oh, no. no. As the fight. Still going on, it's Shark Boy and Brother Johnny Divine. Brother Divine, Brother Divine, Brother Divine going at it out here. Both members of 3D have Curry Man in their sights. Brother Devon headed outside the six-sided ring. Big scoop and a slam by Brother Ray on Curry Man. Here it is. Shark Boy from behind. They just creamed it with a fish. And now you can see Brother Ray can't quite hold him anymore. And Curry Man turns it around. And Shark Boy gonna take that that giant fish and go up on the middle row band. Here he goes! Oh, and he cranked it right in the crotch. Holy cow! And a fish to the crotch. Have you ever said that in wrestling before? Well, it's a first. That is a first, but so is this fish market street fight. Curry man from the lights. Off the crossbody. Pin. No, 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 no. two only. So close for Curry Man on. Brother Devon, and here comes the stunner, and he hits it right there, and it's his chance. One, two, no, oh, no, Brother Ray got the shoulder up in time. Fired up that shoulder just before the three count. Curry Man and Shark Boy, some kind of communication they're having here. There goes Brother Ray into the turnbuckle. Shark Boy's got Brother Ray. Curry Man's got Devon meeting of the minds in the middle of the ring. They spin him around and drive him down simultaneously. Nice combination. One, two, go! Oh, they both get the shoulders up at the last split second. How close was that? Curry Man raining in those shots on Brother Ray. Shark Boy's got Brother Devon. All of a sudden, I'm watching this match and seeing 3D in real trouble. Look at the DDTs simultaneously. Here we go, one, two, again, they get the shoulders up in time. Boy, how close can they come? On the verge of wow. victory yet again. Unbelievable, Team 3D showing that resistance. And you can see Curry Man, Shark Boy, Shark Boy, both of them going to the top ropes and trying to rain on the blows. Oh, Brother Ray just took Curry Man and dumped him all the way out on the concrete. And now from behind, Brother Ray's got Shark Boy, and I think Sharky's in trouble. Up on the shoulders of Brother Ray. Devon to the top, Doomsday close by. Oh, that's the combination, the double team move. It's it. Two. Wow! No, Shark Boy! Unbelievable! I don't think the old Shark Boy would have ever got that shoulder up, but this is a new and improved Shark Boy, and he's got the attitude, and he found it there and got that shoulder up, and now 
The garbage can into play. Nice kick by Curry Man. Yeah, brother, the vine shot that trash can in. Curry Man's got it, and Curry Man just cracked Brother Ray right over the head. Got Another it again. Shot. Hit him again with it. Wait a minute, what's Divine doing? Oh, oh look at this. He's, he's got, got the powder. powder. He's got powder. And he, oh, oh, he threw the powder right in Brother Ray's face. Trying to help out. But you can see now, they've got Divine. There's a stunner to Divine. You can see look at this. Sends it right on. Oh, my God. Right into the table. Divine goes through the table. We take him out of play. But now, Shark Boy, Curry Man, they need to deal with 3D and D. Vaughn oh, double no. close line. One arm for Curry Man, one man, yeah, one arm for Shark Boy. Boy, guess when you think they're getting it turned around, but now the double close line. Here he goes. Oh, 3D! But guess what? He 3D'd his own partner! Shark Boy 3 d his Shark own Boy partner! Two. Shark Boy 3! Ladies and gentlemen, here are your winners, the team of Shark Boy and Curry Man! He couldn't see! He couldn't see because of the power! Yeah! Oh. Yeah! Oh. Man, right on his skull! Oh. Right on his 
Get up, Get up, Come on. Get up, 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 Get Get up, 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 Get we're not done, Jared. Get your ass over here. There you go. That stupid son of a bitch. It's on, bro. It's on. Oh, 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 He didn't say nothing. Hey, he didn't say up. nothing. Screw it. He's in a Marley with Shut up. Hey, I don't care. I don't care who wins, but I just want to get a He said something. He didn't say nothing. Come here, Gunner. He didn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing. What are you guys talking about? He said something. He didn't say nothing. Adios, brother. Turning point was the coming out party for the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, Jeff Hardy. I annihilated Matt Morgan, destroying him, leaving his hopes and dreams with the invisibility of the wind. Overrated my ass. As I look down at all of you, it's clear and safe to say that I am the disciple. I am the chosen one. And I have sipped from the fountain of youth, the holy cup of Hulkamania. Therefore, I am and forever will be immortal. The night is about to get just a little more exciting. We've got a very special guest for you. Stand up, bow down, give it up for the one, the only, the true immortal, Hulk Hogan! himself, the legendary Hall of Famer, Hulk Hogan. surrounded by nothing but family. Do you know what it feels like? Well, you know, 
when I came to TNA, when I made the deal to run this company, the one thing that I requested, the one thing that I had to have was this right here. I had to have Ric Flair because without Ric Flair, you just don't have a wrestling company. And while I've been out the last few weeks taking phone calls, chasing leads down, my phone has been ringing off the hook once a mortal was formed. I've been taking care of the next big thing for a mortal. And on the backside, Ric Flair, you've done a great job keeping it all together right here, getting everybody on their toes, making everybody step up because the level that you raised, the bar that you raised, brother, everybody in this company either steps up or they get out. And now that we've got a mortal working like clockwork, I've got a little surprise for our main man, the champ. What is it? What, what? It's a surprise. and immortal brother now that you've drank it from the cup of hulkamania you now are immortal my son and the belt represents life after life after life to the greatest heavyweight champion of all times jeff hardy you are immortal my brother Oh, excuse me, Mr. Bischoff. I'm not used to taking out the trash, but in this case, Dixie Carter and her whole old TNA company are represented by that belt. Oh. Now that there's no stone left unturned, if there's anybody left, that opposes immortal. If there's anybody left who dares challenge any one of us or our champion in this ring, the only thing I have left to say is the only thing you can do is drop down to your knees and pray, brother. Position, and he gets it in the form of the Pope, D'Angelo De Niro, and he's amongst his congregation. Pope can't be too happy. Bischoff got one over at turning point, paid off the lumberjacks, the Pope's own congregation, even including his own brother. What the hell do you think you're doing? What do you want? What do you want? Did you buy a ticket? I guess the prayers of the congregation has been answered because Pope has arrived. Why don't you just take your business somewhere else? Eric. After what you pulled this past Sunday at Turning Point, the way you paid off my family, 
my cousins, and my very own brother. I'm telling you, Eric, tonight, I got a casket that I intended for Abyss, but I'm gonna take you over the hill behind. I'm gonna put you in that casket, Eric. I'm gonna roll you up that ramp. And just as if that stage was a cliff, I'm gonna push you over the edge. I'm gonna watch you crash and burn, Eric. And there's not a darn thing, not one thing, Eric, that you can do about it. Not one. Well, there might be more opposition to Immortal than just the Pope D'Angelo De Niro. Well, that was a serious threat by the Pope to Bishop, but Samoa Joe has arrived now. Talk about questionable wins. How about Jarrett's victory over Joe, tainted by the interference of the immortal goons, Gunner and Murphy. Immortal! Don't think that the Pope is your only problem tonight. <laughs> Jarrett, Gunner, Murphy! Don't think for a second I forgot what you did last Sunday. And Jeff? I think it's adorable you're walking around here tonight calling yourself a mixed martial arts specialist. Hey, look, big shoot fighter Jeff Jarrett. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff. Come play shoot fighter with me. Come step in the ring with me, you gutless coward. And I guarantee you one thing, Jeff. When I've grounded you, when I've beat on you, when I've choked you out, it's going to take a whole hell of a lot more than your two new hillbilly girlfriends to wake your ass up. First the Pope, then Samoa Joe, and now Rob Van Dam. Right out here to our right. Yeah. You recall Bischoff fueling the paranoia, tried to split RVD from EV2, came on the heels Eric, of Jeff Hardy stabbing him I'm in the sure back. I'm sure by now you've realized all this fun you've been having at my expense, it stops now. Yeah. See, after I found out at Turning Point, EV2 is just the tight family that I always thought it was. Everything became so clear to me. I only know one person, one friend, shallow enough to stoop so low to completely sell out because he wanted something that was mine. Look at you, Jeff Hardy, standing up there with that title that I never lost. And you never won it, Jeff. I take great comfort in knowing that every day, Jeff, I know you have to live with the knowledge that someday you're gonna have to face me in the ring. Here's something you might not know, Jeff. Guess what? I'm making that happen tonight. Tonight, Jeff, I'm getting my match tonight. And then tonight, I am gonna leave this building the TNA Heavyweight Champion. RVD wants that world title rematch tonight, but what about Matt Morgan? He got screwed Sunday at Turning Point. No disrespect, Rob. RVD, no disrespect, bro. I agree, you should get your title shot. But not till I get mine first. Jeff, Jeff Hardy, you call yourself the world champion? You are no champion, Jeff. You're not. You're not. I exposed you in the middle of that ring at turning point. Dead center of the middle of that ring. One, two, three. And if given the opportunity again, I'll expose that ass all over again, son. Guaranteed.
But you know something, Hardy? I can't put all the heat on you. I can't. We all know who the real puppet master is pulling your strings. And that's you, big boy, Hulk Hogan. Brother, you're jumping on the wrong dog now, boy. You know something, Hogan? As a kid, I worshiped the ground you walked on. There was nothing you could do that was wrong to me. Nothing. Nothing at all. And you know what? It wasn't the prayers. It wasn't the vitamins. It was your integrity, Hulk. That's what lured me in. That's what made me want to be a pro wrestler. Hell, that's the reason I'm on this stage tonight. But look at you now, Hulk. Where's the fight? Where's that never say die attitude? Hell, where's your balls, Hulk? Huh? Because if you had a set on you, I'll guarantee you, you'd stand up like a man and you'd fight us. Well, when you talk about fighting us, Mr. Morgan, if you want to fight, that's what you're going to get, brother. We're going to go in the back. Myself, the greatest wrestler of all time, Ric Flair, and Eric Bischoff, and we're going to put a battle plan together. All I can say in closing is be careful what you wish for. If you want to fight, you're going to get a fight, brother. Take that to the bank. <laughs> They're going to put their heads together. What will the new regime come up with? We're going to find out tonight on Impact. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the portion of the evening where the asshole comes out and poses the freaking question, where's my rematch? Huh? Where is it? Can anybody tell me? Anybody tell me where's my rematch? I don't see it anywhere. Is it hanging up there? I don't know. Is it down there? Where, where is it? You know, you really are an asshole. Oh, whoa. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, yeah, I'm an asshole. I own it. I live it. I love it. You know what? I'm an asshole. So I'm an asshole. Let me tell you something, asshole. You couldn't beat RVD. That was for the number one contender spot. So guess what? I guess you're just out of the mix because you, asshole, couldn't get the job done. Oh, and for your information, RVD couldn't beat me either. So it's your call, Terrence. <laughs> idea that's all about money. See, if you kick his ass right now, we're going to enjoy it. And we'll get a big kick out of it. But I've got a better idea. For the last couple of the weeks, the network's been getting into our business. See, they want ratings. Well, I've got an idea. Since everybody's here and you want your shot, everybody wants to be the number one contender, I've got an idea. Why don't we have a four-way tonight? In our main event, let's make some money off all this hostility. You and RVD, you've already got your spot in a match. Since there wasn't a clear-cut winner at Victory Road, and since the bully here wants to be a part of Immortal, why don't we prove a point and see just what he's worth? And oh yeah, by the way, AJ, since you back sting so much why don't you join the little party be a part of this four-way because if you win you'll get your shot at sting and let's see how much you back up so let's do it let's do it tonight no i say no i say no i own that freaking match you can't do that i just did it we can and we just did hit my damn music and you can just feel, you can just sense the anticipation 
here in the Impact Zone, the whole effing show edition of Impact. And this crowd's just dying to see the guns and beer money settle it once and for all. Look at you, just touched on something as simple as an arm ringer. How James Storm just wrenched the arm of Chris Sabin. Right, you don't want to get too overzealous in this thing, especially if you're beer money with a team that's as quick and, I'm sorry, slick and quick as the guns. You know, and with every matchup between these two teams, you know, this rivalry, it's all of a sudden turning into Yankees, Red Sox, Dodgers, Giants. Yeah. Right, you could say Ohio State versus Michigan or Texas versus Oklahoma. I mean, that's what this thing is turning into. I agree with you in regards to the rivalry. And in my opinion, it's a stalemate here, stalemate. Taz, in my opinion, this is the best series of tag team matches that I've ever seen. And you know what? Maybe it's the best series, period, tags or singles ever. No argument for me. Listen to our live audience here in the Impact Zone. Big time behind Alex Shelley of the Machine Guns. And I think the reason for the reaction, these fans have seen the four previous matches, and maybe that match at Victory Road, where the Guns finally broke through and finally became TNA World Tag Team Champs for the first time. Great exchange. Shelley oh, momentarily gets the best of it off the chops before Rude breaks the eyes. Well, the, you know, the key is, I mean, this is two out of three falls. In my opinion, you want to try to get the first fall. You want to try and get that first pin of submission early to keep, you know, get momentum going for your team. Who, which team will do that? We don't know. We'll find out here. Tilt the world, tilt the world, and that head says a Shelly Sharpest attack. Boy, sense the confidence on the guns. The look on the face of Alex Shelly. Oh, lighten up the chest of Rude. That time, it's a tilt the world backbreaker by Rude. Directly into the pin for two. And Robert Rude, he just, you know, he. He doesn't rush into moves. His transition from move to move is so crisp. That standing switch right there for the tag. Into the roll of the Saban. Right. Saban's legal. Yep. I don't, I don't believe that Rude realized that. Double team. Storm squashed with the double kick. Inverted atomic drop for Rude. Saban takes out the knee. And then the unprotected face of Rude is caught with the Saban drop kick. Here's the pin, Saban on top. Fever pitch reaction tonight for the whole effing show here in the Impact Zone for this match five in the best of five series. Well, if you don't realize how important the first fall is for, for either team, <laughs> if you just remember a few seconds ago how quick Chris Saban tried to get the victory. It's very important to get that first, that first fall, I'm telling you. What an incredible impact broadcast this whole effing show has been to this point. Promises even more wait, wait. surprises with Hulk special surprise, RVD versus Abyss for the world oh. title, as all of a sudden beer money with the double team, and they take control of this match. Stairway to Janice, RVD, and Abyss. Ladder leads to that sick weapon. It's legal. Used tonight, Eric Bischoff, special referee, and that is still to come tonight on Impact. Well, now this is what Beer Money, I think, needs to do is try to keep Chris Saban in that corner. And Tag Team Wrestling 101, cut the ring in half. Look at that, stomping. Storm stomping on Saban's hands and fingers. Vicious. Gotta love it, man, by any means necessary. Talked about how important in terms of momentum winning the first ball is going to be. But think of how important it is. It's just magnified by the fact that there's no rest period between the falls. Oh, yeah, there's no chance to regroup. I mean, it just shows. No chance to recharge those whoa, batteries. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's exactly right. Series of double team moves, just one after the other. Punctuated by the rude knee drop before Shelly comes in for the save. Well, he put it. Shelly poked while Robert Rude in the eyes and beer money and only goes of the match. Each Storm and Rude both poked a member of the guns in the eyes, so turnabout's fair play. Block of the right hand by Saban as Rude tried to connect. Series of strikes by Saban. Leads to an attempt to drive Rude to the corner, but it's reversed. Saban floats over. Down and 
tries to make the tag to Shelly, but gets cut off. Beautiful Insegura right there. And you hear our live audience here showing their respect a moment ago with a chant of this is wrestling. And you ain't lying, because it is. <laughs> Phenomenal. I dare you to find something like this somewhere else on TV, anywhere all week. Trust me, you're not going to. No, you're not. You can look all you want. You're not going to find anything like this series between the guns and beer money. Beautiful Watch Shelly. this. Shelly could be the first fall. No, broken up at the last second. One little minor thing if Shelly was able to do it, but he should have tried to chuck James Storm out of the ring, but he couldn't. He might have got the victory there. Or I should say the fall victory. Catapult. Oh, but Shelly reacts by catching Storm with the forearm shot. Oh, I never anticipated that. Oh, Shelly baited Storm in and he came right in. He's setting him up oh because God. Saban cut the drop kick off the top missile stop. Here's two. Whoa! You see that DDT and now Robert Roode's neck. Leg sweep by Saban takes down Storm and enables oh. Shelly for the double foot stomp. Oh, but he never saw that big boot from Roode. What a and match. My God, this what is just match. the first fall, Taz. It's unbelievable, man. Up the back oh. of Shelly. It's a Saban drop kick, and there goes Rude to the floor. Both guns are looking good, while Beer Money's not looking too good. What the hell's going to happen now? Oh, they come at him from two oh. different angles. Guys That's in the truck, please, we got to see a replay of this. Look at this. Almost like misdirection, cross bodies. Oh my God, amazing. Now, Rude rolled back in. Saban up in the apron. Storm tries to cut him off. Uh oh, uh -oh. Saban oh, in a God. precarious position and gets dropped directly down on his face right on the apron and that's the, hard the hardest part of the ring, that's right? That's exactly right, the apron is the hardest part of the ring. Shelly up to the corner, but Rude quickly makes his way up to the top. Can Shelly put him away and Whoa. win the first fall? Alex Shelly! Double foot stomp, Rude rolls out of the way. Oh! oh. oh my. Double team, Storm stabs him in the back, sets him up. Oh yeah, DWI! Gonna get him! Gonna get him. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the first fall, Beer Money. The second fall begins right now. Oh, Go for a cover. It Go for that a cover. First fall, huge advantage for Beer Money, gaining the victory. No rest period. The immediate start to fall number two, and Rude goes right for the pin. That's what you got to do. That's the, the benefit of which te whatever team gets the first fall, which in this instance it was Beer Money. Go for the cover right away. And especially with Shelly in the ring and Saban was outside just, just barely making his way up to the apron at this point. They've got the potential here if they can cut off the ring to keep Shelly on their side and put him away and win the second fall, win the series, and win the tag team titles. Oh yeah, it looks like, looks like beer money they kind of got Alex Shelley picked out right now as a sacrificial lamb, and they could just basically do whatever the hell they want to do. You better watch Shelley, don't. Shelly's gonna make that tag. These guys are celebrating over here, Beer Money. They don't realize what happened. Dual drop kick. One late for Storm, one for Rude. As Saban connects missile style off the top. Quickness of Saban. Oh, oh and then God. Rude sandwiched with the double kicks. Tag, Shelly's legal. Oh my God, look at the guns here. Robert Rude's neck, look at his neck. Cross body off the top, two, three, and they get it to even it up at one, one. The winners of fall number two, the Motor City Machine Guns. The third and final fall begins right now. Here we go, third fall.
Well, whichever team wins this next fall will be the TNA World Tag Team Champions. Oh, the offense was on the side of the guns before Saban gets cut off. Beer Money's got something planned. Reed elevates his own partner, Storm, directly onto Shelly. Well, that was Saban, actually, now. It's, it's Shelly with the shot in the ring on Rude. Oh, my God, a suicide dive by Alan Shelly. Well, the Rude didn't even know what the hell happened to him. Look at Rude, look at Rude! Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to take a break, but don't go anywhere. We're going to record all the action while we're away. More of the third fall the series and the titles when we return to the whole effing show. And ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Oh, this is the third. This is the deciding fall. Best of five series, Motor City Machine Guns, Beer Money Incorporated. Who leaves the impact zone with the TNA yes. World Tag Team titles? Oh, Shelly got driven. This might be it. How close was that? Holy smokes. We are in that mode of the match where it's sudden death, sudden victory. This is the third fall, and everything is at stake. Everything's on the line here when it comes to the TNA World Tag Team titles, as well as the bragging rights for this best of five series. Well, that's the key, you know. If Beer Money can now, I mean, look, you can just see that all these high octane moves by Al Shelley and Chris Saban, they might be worn out right now, Mike. But this is, like you said, the third and final fall. Back to back corner close lines by Beer Money. And I mean, both shots, both of those lariats with impact on Shelley and now Storm Jax's jaw. Yeah, there's not much fight back in Alex Shelley right now. Oh my God, look at James Storm here. Look where he's going. Going up in the high risk area there, baby. Tennessee Cowboy up Ooh. on top. Maybe he shouldn't have drank that last beer before this match. Gets knocked down directly into the tree of woe by Shelly. Oh, God. What an amazing over that ring shot by our director here. That was awesome, an awesome view of what we just had there. Alex Shelley maybe leveled the playing field right there, Mike. Boy, it felt like you were right inside the ring. What a great shot that was. The double boots to the chest to Storm. Saban legal at the same time, so is Rude. Saban, like the proverbial house of fire. Gonna try and follow up the edge that he's got, but he's instead reversed and shot into the corner. Able to get the boot up. And then Saban comes right in room and oh. snaps off the hurricane run. Look at that Chris drop kick. He's unreal, man. The piece of drop kick to the yeah. mid storm. Just non stop. Can't tell we're excited. Spring huh? ball, spring ball to the DDT. Oh, oh, God, God, he God. spiked him. He dropped him on his head. Yeah. Here we go. Get two. No. Oh. Did he get him? He Just didn't get two. him. That was just sick. God, Robert Rude really, really landed in a bad way on his top of his skull. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if Rude's okay. That's why he's tagging out. I don't. I tell you, I think Rude got his, Rude got his bell rung big time. Beer money double team. Saban able to float over on Storm. Off the standing switch, Saban catches Rude with the boot. Then Storm with the elbow. Oh, Pop Rude with the kick. Oh, it was cool, man. Uh-oh. Oh, God! Shelly tells Saban, cover and He's cover up the double team. Two. He's got him! Oh! Uh-uh. It's incredible. This amazing, deciding match in the best of five series between Beer Money and the Motor City Machine Guns, and you're damn right it's awesome. Oh, you see that last call? Super kick by Storm, but Saban instead caught Storm unaware. There it is, double R spine buster by Rude. Watch the catapult. Into the DDT. 
Saban down. Saban, yeah. Saban. Shelly gonna go for slice bread in the corner. Counted, counted by Beer Money. Look at this, Mike. Oh, you see his neck whiplash. And the impact of the blow to the throat of Shelly. Both members of the guns down. Beer Money standing tall. Shelly doubled over with the boot. Gonna go double team again. Kind of lost him for a second. He's trying to fight it out. And he did. Saban, what a hell of a job there. Used the free leg to kick off. Oh, went for the last call. Back he cut his own partner. Oh. Oh. Then Storm gets sandwiched with the dual kicks. You can feel it, Mike. Oh, come on, baby. You can come feel on, it. Come on, baby. Shelly to the top. There it is. Cross body. Count, count. One, count two. Oh, God. Saban shocked. So am I. I thought he had it. show for a deciding fall who's gonna win the series who's gonna win the tna world tag team titles look at shelly watch shelly here Abyss slides in, counts two, counts he three. Got him! Jeff Hardy just pinned the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. The first match back in TNA is a victory for Jeff Hardy. Watch behind you, watch behind you, Rich. Watch, watch out, Flair with the chair. Oh, oh God. First for Hardy, then the shot to the gut, and the shot to the back for Abyss. And Flair, uh, yeah, we he, saw... you know what he wants to do here? He wants to weaken AJ's challenger this Sunday at Destination X for the title. Oh, he's angry. Ric Flair's angry. His boy just got beat here. God. Look at that, 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 you can see right there, just kind of, I hate, I gotta use a term, hulking up. Yeah, with, with every chair shot, you can you can just feel the vibe, the power of the Hulkamaniacs of Abyss. Nate, you gotta try something different, buddy. That's not working. Shot after shot with the chair. Flair face to face with the monster. Oh, the, the big punch, the shot just knocked the steel chair right out of Flair's hands. Got goozled. Nature Boy got goozled. No, don't do it, Nate. Oh, my God. Good Lord. Abyss just annihilated Ric Flair. Oh, my God. Girl. And now, on to some unfinished business. You. Yeah, you. Why are you still hanging around the beautiful people?
for the so-called stalker, Hugh Kip, to be removed from the premises here. What's he doing? Take it up. The bottom line is he has to do something real simple. Take care of Kong. That's all he had to do was make sure that Kong didn't bother okay. and he couldn't even do that. Get out of here. Done. Screwed up the whole situation. Okay. Could have cost him okay. the title. Shark Boy, very dire situation here, and certainly, as you can see, it appears as though he is drowning deeper and deeper into a sea of oblivion. Shut up, JB. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. You think he deserves all the attention because he's in a coma? I'll tell you who's got problems around here is me. I have resorted to getting TV time on impact by hanging out with a bunch of sharks. Well, look, is that it's a situation? It's a dire situation here. This a is dire situation. Look at him. That's ridiculous. It's, it's not funny at all. Stop smiling, Shark Boy. You don't see me smiling, do you? I'd really like to know how he got all this TV time. Is his last name Angle now? Hey! 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 Oh, Shucky hey! Holmes! What's up with Shucky? We just can't be a take up on Shark Boy. That's all. Hey, Blue! We're down with the fan. You know what I mean? You want to take off? Yo, you the boss today. You know what, Jimmy? No, no. I've been here since day one, just like you. I want to know why I don't have my dressing room yet. I want to know why I still have to eat that crappy catering when I should have the food brought to me. And number three, what I really want to know is why why do you pick up uh, Kurt Angle all the time? Where, where's my ride? Where's it's hardly board? a time to talk about me or Kurt Angle. Where's, Look at where's this my man. limo at? Okay, let's your limo? Yeah, you, you and Kurt Angle are buddy-buddy just like that. What about me? You looking at my man, huh? You looking at him too now? Huh? I'm giving okay. something. Good luck. Hey, but I'm telling you, Mahomes, um, you better check up on Sean Paul because I think he's dying right now. You dying? Yeah, but... You think he's dying? He's dying. The only thing dead around here is my career. <laughs> you okay? Here Ash here, and we are still on a 24-hour bed watch with the family and friends of Shark Boy in this dire situation. We have sent the camp crew here, hopefully, to document these days as we watch Shark Boy. Angelina Love, Velvet Sky ladies. Oh, Sharky. We heard of your condition. We came right over to see you. We had no idea it was going to be this bad. 
Angelina, look, he's green around the gill. I've never seen anybody look this bad. What, what do we do to help him? Well, obviously, drastic times call for drastic measures, and there's only one way to help, Paul. Okay? Mouth to mouth. Wow, ladies, are you sure that's a good idea? I mean, really, he's a What are you doing? Stan! Oh! Wrinkled swordfish! Wrinkled swordfish! Old Finn! Old yeah, Finn! No kidding. Old what are you Finn. doing? Old you're not the video, you're gonna kill the guy! Shark, are you okay? Are you okay, Shark? I am still here bedside. At the home of Shark Boy, as you can see, the family is still here. Dr. Fishman's still here. Nurse Bass is still here as well. Unfortunately, things do not look good Guys, at I, this point. I, Eric Young! I as fast as I could. Oh my god. Sharky. You can't go out like this, man. You gotta fight. All the great fish fought. Nemo, Charlie, my goldfish pork chop, the big tuna, Mr. Limpet, SpongeBob. He's not really a fish, but he, he does live under the sea. What about Jaws? He fought to the bitter end, man. He grinded it out until he got blown up and his guts went flying everywhere, man. But, but he fought to the bitter end. You gotta fight, Sharky. We gotta help him. Maybe, maybe he needs some water. I'll get him. Oh. And he, Guys, his, his eyes are open. His eyes are open. Look at Sharky. Are you okay? Shh, shh. Shark boy, do you have something that you want to say? Well, hell yeah. The next time you stick that thermometer up my ass, there's going to be hell to pay, you son of a bitch. And that's the bottom line, because Shark boy said so. Oh, my God. It's a miracle. What the? Holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. Somebody's leaving found for glory in a casket. And Jarrett immediately goes to the attack on the already weakened Rhino. Oh, I'll tell you what, he's gonna make a mockery of this, and it's just like you said, this rolled right into Jarrett's favor. And I don't know, I might even question maybe the decision on how this was done when I think of somebody who could have been out there, but look, uh, oh, nice drop kick. Drop kick by Jarrett the champ, top foot directly into the face of Rhino. Rhino's been through hell and back tonight. The monster's ball. That incredible four-way matchup earlier that he was victorious in, that he wins the gauntlet, and now he faces Jared with the NWA gold at stake. I'll tell you what, Rhino's just gonna have to pick his spots. If he sees an opportunity, he's gonna have to hit it, and he's gonna have to be relentless. Because Jared, you gotta maybe even make Jared get a little cocky right here, because Jared knows. He knows he is in so much better position right now, and you can see him taking straight advantage of it. You can see the cockiness. You can see the confidence on the face of the NWA champion as he made his way down to the ring and now he takes Rhino. Oh, he drives him face first right into the steel safety ramp. Get up, uh, Rhino. Rhino, I mean, what's he going on? Sheer emotion, just, sheer adrenaline? That's it, just pure fumes at this point for him even just to be able to get back up to his feet while Jarrett sends him from steel guard right to steel. Oh, oh look, look at him now. Right here, right here. The Oh, table. Back and he put a right on the belt. A bloodied rhino. The man it beast goes face first into the title belt. And now, oh, oh, God. man, one, one right rhino after rhino another. Rhino this isn't even a fair rhino. fight. Oh, look at his Jared just busted open the garbage can. Oh, he's destroying our set here at the oh, broadcast good. table. Gosh, this isn't even a fair fight. Just absolute. Now he's got him right here on the cast. Ah. And the blood flies How everywhere as the, as the bloody head of the man beast rhino is crashed against the casket and Jared bad mouths him, gets right in his face. Tito Ortiz letting it go, he's telling him to get back in the ring. That's what you gotta do right there, get him back in the ring. Oh man, Jared, no! Oh, right on top of the casket, you can see. Just knock the wind out of him, Mike. Get up! And now... Get up! Open get hand back. slaps. Get just, one more. He's been physically decimated at this point. Back. He's just taunting him right here. Just taunting him. Oh, now rolls Rhino back in. Jarrett, don't see this often. No. High risk, perched up on the top. He's just, gonna finish it right Just here, waiting for Rhino to turn, and when he does... Oh, oh, there it goes. I mean, it's like Rhino can see it coming, but I don't think he can, his brain can get to his body to move fast enough. Drilled him with the clothesline. NWA World's Heavyweight Title at State. This matchup sanctioned by the National Wrestling Alliance, and Jarrett doing everything within his power to keep the goal. Jarrett back to the top. 
Rhino trying to get to his feet. Just Don't challenging even... Rhino to get back up to his feet. There goes another one. Just end oh. it. Dropped him, drilled him with another clothesline. Jarrett, a third time going to go to the well. You don't often see it one time with Jarrett, but now for the third time, the champ up on top. Oh, this is just insult to injury right here, literally. And then wait a minute, Rhino! Catches him! Oh, 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 right in the nuts! Man! I thought he was going to choke slam him. Instead, he took him high up into the air. That'll... And you're right. Caught him with the boot. Oh, no. Look at this right by us here. Who is that? That's Gail Kim, wasn't it? Oh, she's right behind, trying to look at see him. Yeah, you can see him right there. Look there he goes. Oh, he misses. He went for the gore, and Jared sidestepped him and put him shoulder first right into the corner. I'll tell you what, he should have just went ahead and hit him. Wait a minute, you can see right there, Gail Kim going to the top rope. Tito Ortiz, cutting in beats bad boy, special enforcer. Oh, it's not going to happen. He's going to, look at this. But Gail Kim in mid air, oh, got no. turned down. Trying to be a gentleman here. Trying to be a gentleman. Trying to slap the man. Not the baddest man on earth. Oh, God. Well, that's one way to take care of Gail Kim. See ya. Set her up on the apron. And what are you going to do, Tito? He's trying to do this diplomatically. No, no. Jared's oh, got the guitar. The guitar. No. no way. Oh, he's he's got the guitar. Oh, gosh. He just caught him straight on. And, of course, Tito, or T Tito never saw it. He didn't see it. Jared crashes the guitar over the head of Rhino. Tito Ortiz, of course, is not familiar with the referee job here. Get Jared, him distracted you, and trying to keep order, and it just cost him Rhino. And you can sense here that Jared knows he's got him beat. It's pin two. Oh, he gets his shoulder up what? the time. What? Jared can't believe it. Only a two count after that guitar shot, after everything else that Rhino's gone through. Oh, this is this is just wrong. Like they're giving him another guitar. Harrison Storm, AMW, the associate. Oh, the shot by Ortiz. And there's one for Storm. He caught him with the gore. Gore. One, two, three. What? Oh, no, my man. And new. Monsters Ball! He wins the top contenders gauntlet! He deserves to be the heavyweight champion of here oh. comes AMW. And he just has done the unthinkable! He wins the NWA World's title! And now Jarrett and AMW are beating the hell out of him! Oh, this is just wrong right here after everything he's gone through. This is just frustration and no one, I love it. We don't need security, I want the crew and here they come. Here comes the three live crew to save Rhino. It's Conan, it's the truth, it's BG James as their crew hits the ring and they're... they're well, who's Wait a that? minute, here comes Keith Canada in. We saw them at the funeral. You can see that they're over there taking care of the three live crew. Yeah, the Canadians have hit as well. Oh, and now this is all strength and numbers at this point. Come on, let's get it. Three live crew and Rhino, they're being taken out by AMW. Jeff Jarrett and Scott Demore's Team Canada. What gets me is this takes away everything that they oh, did. No. Everything right that they did. What are they doing now with this casket? They're taking it into the ring. Remember what Jarrett said? He said no matter what, somebody was leaving here in the casket. Somebody's leaving bound for glory in a casket. Rhino's already beaten him for the NWA World's title. Oh, man, I'll tell you something. Man. The numbers game was just too much, and it's so sad after what Rhino's gone through. This is sick. Coming down his face, and of course, symbolically, it's oh. a guitar shot, and then they're gonna finish. Oh, another one, man! What is this guy gonna go through? He put him in. Oh, that is just awful. This, this is sick. This is a horrible way to leave you at bound.
for glory. Oh, sorry, that's no longer your belt. No longer your belt. Jared, you don't hold it. You can post it. Wait a minute. Could it be? It is Team 3D. No freaking way. Here comes Brother Ray. Here comes Brother Devon. My God, rumors of their death. Yeah, they were highly exaggerated. And they're going to town. And they want to take it out on everyone involved in their burial. And look at that. Eric Young gets caught in the middle right here. Team 3D in. And here goes Eric Young. You ready? 3D. 3D. Oh, yeah. He, got, he was at the funeral. Oh, he sure was. And they're going to make sure that somebody does leave here in a casket. My God, what a night it's been in town for glory. And it's all punctuated by the return of Brother Ray and Brother Devon. I'll tell you what, what's going through the minds of A&W? They thought they had a very to God. What's going through the mind of Tim Garrett? He lost his title. Everything. He should be For the Ladies introductions, and let's send the it to JB. is scheduled for one fall and is for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship of the World. Live from Orlando, Florida, it's your Hard Justice main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Tito Ortiz. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing uh, from Gainesville, Georgia. He went in this morning at 218 pounds and is TNA Wrestling's only two-time Triple Crown winner. He is the challenger, the phenomenal AJ Styles. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing from the Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. He weighed in this morning at 234 pounds. Since June 1st, 2004, he is the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. He is the king of the mountain. Jeff Charles. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The matchup, the bout that we've been waiting for and anticipating for so many months. It's about to become a reality. Third man in the ring. Huntington beats bad boy Tito Ortiz laying down the law. Just the way NWA Doctor of Authority Dusty Rhodes felt that he would. And here we go. Tito going to show that belt. We talked earlier about honor, prestige, tradition that goes with a championship belt that's been held by all the greats through the years. From Luthez to Jack Briscoe to the Funks to Ric Flair to Harley Race to Dusty Rhodes. And of course now around the waist of Jeff Jarrett. The phenomenal AJ Styles. This is it. Don West. The Man. biggest match of his life, bar none. I'm just, it's like being on pins and needles right here. I do like how Tito Ortiz took control right from the beginning. He wasn't going to let AJ and Jeff get started before it was time. He showed his authority, and you got to like that. you got to respect him. Three years of UFC champion, that's just incredible. And look at right there, and you can see Jeff Jarrett looking at him through the corner of his eye. I think he's wondering how he's going to call it. But right now, you've just got to get it on feeling out process as they lock it up collar and elbow in the opening minute of this match remember Jarrett has the weight advantage here and actually using 
that 20 plus pound edge to power Styles off into the corner. Tito gets right in. We get a clean break from Jarrett. Might be respect for Tito Ortiz with the clean break. I'll tell you what, it's obvious that the director of authority, Dustin Rhodes, has talked to Tito and we'll let him know how he wants this thing to go because Tito Ortiz keeping an eye on it, keeping his distance, but making sure that the action keeps going. And right here, when you see him clinching up, he gets right in there. How about that? And just moves him out of the way. Look at the look, at the look Jared's giving him right there. Like, you got to be kidding me. Referees don't grab me and throw me away like that. You know, at the same time, Don, though, I'm thinking back. We saw backstage in the locker room area when Tito Ortiz went into Jeff Jarrett's dressing room, his locker room. Remember what Jarrett said to him? We've got an awful lot to talk about. I'll tell you something else, too, man. Remember, Monty Brown was there, and he talked to him, but Tito Ortiz got in, too, and said, you got it? Well, Tito definitely showing that he is going to ensure that there is justice in this match. Oh, look at that, man. I mean, he just, I mean, he just let you know. He's in control. It's his ring. No way he's going to be intimidated. Oh. But I'll tell you something, though. Just keep your eye on Jeff Jarrett. You talk about a man who can play mind games. He can play mind games with anybody. But don't put it past him that he can play mind games with Tito Ortiz. Jarrett with the goal behind him. Styles tries to power out. Standing switch. Jarrett's got to do everything he can to keep AJ Styles grounded. That's going to be his advantage. Just, Just like, like this. Exactly like that. Drop to hole tight move. Scissors the legs. I mean, this is really back to the basics here, and you almost felt that there would be this feeling out process. You know, if he can find a way to get a figure four in there to get AJ to submit, it wouldn't bother Jeff here for one second. He knows what AJ Styles, the phenomenal AJ Styles, can do when he gets room to move, room to maneuver. So watch Jeff Jarrett to just close the distance between them as often as he can. The smart NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. Maybe this is best case scenario for him. Get into a wrestling match with AJ Styles. You mentioned it earlier, Don. Take away the phenomenal one's strengths. But I tell you something, though. I don't know if Jeff Jarrett, I'm sure he has done his homework. AJ Styles was a phenomenal Matt wrestler, though, through high school. So I think that's something that, that you know, he wouldn't run away from. But the problem is when you get into a match style match, the man with the most weight it has a superior advantage. They collide in mid-ring. Neither man goes down. Jared off the ropes. Again, tries to put the shoulder into Styles, and AJ says, bring it on. No, oh, you, you know, you talked about it. They're feeling each other out right now. That's all they're doing. They're trying to play mind game. They're trying to see what the other one's got. Nice move right there by AJ. Oh! Kicks and buckles him at the knee, and now he takes him. That's really the key, though. It's a series of moves. Catch him off guard with the kick, and then the follow-up moves. Takes Jarrett down to the mat, and now AJ. Shot off into the ropes by Jarrett. Off the leapfrog, Styles. Showing his agility right there. As Jarrett slides through to the floor, we mentioned earlier how smart he is. Yes. The experience edge, and we're seeing exhibited here by Jarrett. Slides through the floor, and of course he's going to point that out to the world. Now look at this, Tito Ortiz calling him back into the ring. Jeff Jarrett walking up the ramp. He wants things on his terms. He wants that. Oh, look at this, Tito Ortiz going to start counting him right here. Jarrett probably going to take it all the way down to the end. Of course he is. Again, keep in mind, though, remember the disqualification rule. You lose by a disqualification, you lose the title. There's no protecting your championship in TNA. Jarrett has to keep that in mind. Making sure he gets right in there just in time. Kind of a little dig right there at Tito. Oh, look at him pointing to his brains. He's going to need every bit of them, but I'll tell you what. That's how he's retained that championship so many times because he knows how to use them. And he knows how to use shortcut moves just like that. First the knee, follow up, oh, series of right hands to the side of the head, yeah. Showing Tito Ortiz that he was using the forearm instead of the right hands, and oh, face first goes Styles into the turnbuckle. And you know what, he didn't need to show Tito that. Tito can see that, he knows what the forearm is. He just gave a nod. He didn't like it, he would have said something. Slide through by AJ. Oh, oh. Nice kick right there by AJ Styles. Right back to the offensive, scoop in a mid-ring slam. The phenomenal one off the ropes, and... Oh, oh who's there, man? He man was that perfectly placed, and you can see it snap Jared's head up. Dropping it right down across the bridge of the nose. Tito down to the count, gets two. No.
Again, this is Tito Ortiz, first time ever as a referee in a professional wrestling match. So the wrestlers are going to have to adapt to the That's cadence right. of his count. And the good thing for Jeff Garrett there, I mean, one thing you could say that wasn't was a fast count. It's two. He can't complain about that. Jarrett sent it to the corner. Styles. Oh, oh nice move right there by AJ. Put all of his weight behind that flying forearm shot in the corner. AJ's going to have to wear Jeff down. He's going to have to keep coming at him from different angles to where Jeff doesn't know where he's at. But again, there he takes a shortcut. You mentioned it. He'll yep. do it every chance he can. AJ answers. Point of the elbow directed to the chest. Oh, nice move right there by Jared as he throws him up and has him land right on the knee. Took him high up into the air. AJ crashing down, stomach first across that knee of Jared. You know what this is, don't you, Don? Oh, man. That's step, step number one in setting up AJ Styles for the figure four leg lock. Now yeah. watch this. He stakes out the leg across the body. Oh, oh, he, oh. he cannonballs down across the extended leg. 235 plus pounds crashing down across the extended leg. No, no, no protection for it there. Oh, you can see right there. Good strategy. And now you can see Tito Ortiz letting him know that he had his foot on the rope. But you can see that strategy there by Jared. And another thing, not only does it give you a chance to get the figure four submission, it grounds AJ. If AJ doesn't have his leg, probably equally loses, as important, yes, isn't it? He loses 50% of his ability. And man, right there, not even wasting a second as Jared goes right at the leg again. You can see him lift it on the left leg and he just gets it again. You know, but what we've learned through the years of watching AJ Styles is his ability to improvise. If you take away one of his strengths, AJ is likely to come back with something else that's going to surprise you. But boy, Jared. Looks awfully oh. good here and very sound strategy. Oh, what a great, great game plan. Oh. This is a great game plan by the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion, and he is employing it to perfection. We talked about his brains right there and how he knows how to use something. He knows what AJ Styles can do. He knows about AJ Styles' abilities. So he goes at the one place he knows AJ cannot afford to have out of action, and that's the leg. And I mean, he can see AJ's having a hard time getting any kind of balance on it. You see that? Look at that. Every time he does it. Oh, he tries to go to the left, and he had nothing there. Yeah, Jarrett answers. Back heel trip. Here he goes. Going to set him and lock it. He's got it capped now. Just what he wanted. Leg lock. He set him up for it. Just the way he wanted to do it. He's got it in, and you can see AJ say no, but look at Tito. He's looking right there to see if he's going to count out. AJ fighting for everything he's got. It's unfolded right before our eyes. The past several minutes, we've watched Jeff Jarrett and think about the work problem. on the legs, work on the knees of AJ just for this one purpose, to set him up for the figure four. And the pressure he's applying on that leg right now is intense and immense. And AJ Styles is really in pain, and you can see it. This is not what he planned. No way did he ever plan on Jeff Jarrett getting him at this at this stage. And he's fighting it, and he keeps going back down to the mat. You know, oftentimes you'll see Jarrett wait until, you know, he's, he's worn down his opponent, maybe even more to go for the figure four. But I think his game plan, his strategy, was to use the figure four early in the match to ground AJ Styles. Good strategy. And boy, it is right on the money. And look at AJ fighting for everything he can to get to a rope. It's Tito Ortiz looking on him. Look at the pain. And just God, he's fighting for it. Right back. You know, there's basically two counters for this. You can either get to the ropes and get the break, or you can try and use all of your weight and turn Jarrett over. Oh, man, you can see AJ. He has to go down there at some point just to take, get a breath. But what he does, the, Tito's right there with the count, showing great fairness. You've got to give it to Tito Ortiz. Calling it right down the line. The champion adding insult to injury. Oh, look at this, though. Bad-mouthing AJ. AJ. This is what I talked about. Can he turn him over? Oh, he's got so much drive as he's trying to. You can see, but look at this. Jeff, did, no, he turns it there. He's got the momentum. He's he gone. did it. He turned it over on Jared. He reversed it. He countered it. And he gets the break escapes by touching and making contact with the bottom ring rope. How much damage was done, though, to that leg of AJ Styles? I mean, you got to admire the fact that he was able to, to get it reversed. But how much damage is done? And he's holding that left leg. And when you think of how many offensive moves that AJ Styles really uses his legs for push off, the springboard moves when he comes off the ropes, the power that he uses from that vertical base, I think Jarrett's taken away a lot of AJ's game plan. Oh, you can see there right it is. There. He just doesn't have the confidence. Nice move up by AJ. Again, he just knows how somehow, and he doesn't. Wow. 
spiked him that time out of the corner. Tornado DDT by the challenger. I mean, he's unbelievable how he can adapt. He fights through the pain, and there he goes. It takes him Jarrett right out of the ring. Discus clothesline by Styles. And Jarrett out to the arena floor. AJ, however, in the ring has gone down. Well, again, we talked about it earlier, the damage that Jeff Jarrett has done to him. And every move that he makes, I mean, he'll fight through it, but when he does it, he pays the price. It's almost like a build-up as the match goes on here, where AJ has to fight through that pain. Slingshot move, lands on the apron. Jarrett moves oh, the way, oh. and he clipped it. Great move by Jarrett. Took his legs right out. I'm telling you something, he's doing this right by the textbook. I mean, AJ Styles, we all know what he can do when everybody had so much anticipation on it. And what Jeff Jarrett's done is completely taken his game out of play. I mean, by this time, we expect to see AJ fly over the ropes four or five times and do things that people can only dream of. But Jeff Jarrett is not allowing it. That's why he's the king of the mountain. He's forced AJ Styles to play into his hands. The champion's match, the champion's game is what we're seeing here unfold in this NWA World's Heavyweight title matchup. Counts to five right now as AJ Styles hears it. He knows he's got to get back in that ring. There's no danger of him not getting back in. Watch Jarrett. Oh, look at that. Jarrett sends him right back out. AJ tries to get it going, but just as soon as he does, Jarrett is there. With, a, with another strong offensive move. Takes him back down to the floor again. The vulnerability, though, of trying to get back in that ring. You're so exposed. Jarrett knows that. He knows he's got to expose himself to get through, and Jarrett just doesn't allow it. He closes that distance, and uh oh, uh -oh that's one way to stop him. Not gonna allow it. Tito's got him throttled. Takes him over to the corner. He warned him. That's the law and order that we talked about earlier that we expected. I'll tell you what, while this is going on, AJ takes advantage of it and pulls Jeff right out. AJ on the floor, unloading, series of rights. Oh, oh. just didn't have enough right there, and Jared just goaded him right into it and let him take his momentum right into the ring. Went at him with the clothesline, you're right, Jared Ducks moves out of the way, and AJ's arm just wrapped around the steel ring post. This thing is going exactly the way the champion wants it to. He's completely taken AJ out of his game, and oh, wait a second, he's got a guitar in his hands, and look at this. Tito Ortiz not even going to allow it. Tito told us in the pre-match oh, yeah, interview. Look at that, bring it on. He's just, he's daring him, challenging Big him. Guy, yeah, you better think about it, champ. You better think about it. Oh, he did take it. Oh, look, look out. at this. Tito's not going to allow him to use it either. Styles takes that guitar out of Jared's hands, and... Tito right in the middle of these two. He's not going to let I'll tell you something. This guy is all about gamesmanship. He's all about, about the hardest competition. And he's obviously not picking any sides. Remember what we said earlier? Oh, oh, there you go. That oh. takes the guitar out of play, doesn't it? He better believe it does as he just slams it every which way. Tears it in half with no more guitar. As you see right now, AJ's using to fire himself up. AJ unloads, right hand after right hand. He's got the champion rocking and reeling. Knife edge chop, follow up right hand. You can see the right score right here. This is just what he needed somehow to get it back to side because Jared, I mean, he didn't even look weak at that point. He's been in such control, but this is what you do. AJ finding a way to get that fire back. Let's check there it. AJ's goes. leg strength. Spring. Yeah, he catches him right with the elbow. Flying forearm shot out of the spring. Oh, and he... then he cut him with a spin kick. Unbelievable. He is just fighting through the pain. He knows what's at stake here. You know, if you break it down into finishing moves, would it be the figure four or will it be the stroke for Jarrett? Will it be the Styles clash for AJ? AJ off the ropes. Oh, look at how smooth he is. Can he drop him here? Oh, he does right on his head. Inverted DDT. Here he they go. Here's two. two. No. Oh, he's got his arm up. Just gets the shoulder up in time. AJ looks back at referee Tito Ortiz, confirms that it was just a two count from the special referee. Momentum, however, definitely it swung to the phenomenal one of the challenger. He's going for the Styles Clash right here, but Jared knows it, countered it, it, reversed it. Oh, look at this. You can see him going to the ropes, going the elbows back. Oh, nice elbow right there by Jared. Oh, look at this. Oh, Jared though counters it and just brings him down. Powerbombed him down. Here he goes. Jared's got his shoulder. 
I gotta tell you though, Ortiz is doing the same cadence with every 10 attempts. You're right. Remember what Dusty said. I want you to call it right down the middle. That's exactly what we've seen from the Huntington Beach bad boy. He's handling the high pressure like the pro that he is. Again, you talk about counters there. I, it looked like Jarrett might be going for the stroke, but AJ was ready for it. He countered oh. him. Quick snap slam by Jarrett. Tito oh. down. Count two. two. Not enough. I'll tell you what, man. Jarrett just able to grab that so quickly. I think he surprised a lot of people here tonight. The fact that he's gone toe to toe with him against Dallas. Why not? He's the champion. Backslide. Here we go. Here's two. No, Jarrett kicks out at two. AJ right back to it. Small package, the inside cradle. Ortiz down for the count and another near fall for the challenger. The crowd on their feet right now. They sense something going on. But they realize Oh, it. nice kick right there. Going for the Pele as he spins around. Not quite completely upside down like we've seen him do it before, but just enough to catch him. And probably because of that leg, he wasn't able to get the full extension, but it was enough. Fans show their appreciation for this great NWA World Heavyweight title matchup. The title hangs in the balance. The champion, Jeff Jarrett, looks to be at least momentarily in control. First man to get back up to his feet. Offensive move unleashed on Styles, but it's blocked. Oh, nice, nice elbow right there. Oh, he goes for the stroke. He fights out of it. AJ shoots him off. Oh, Looks wait a minute. Center. Jarrett's got him. Going to take him up. Oh, and he's going to go for the Styles Clash himself. Look at this. He's got him. He's got him hooked. Oh, no. He's going to beat him with his own boot. Styles Clash by Jarrett. Yeah. And it's amazing that, of all things, he uses his leg strength to kick out after Jarrett directed his total offensive attack on the legs of Styles. But AJ still in it, just a two count off hey, the Styles plan. Time to heal tomorrow, man. You gotta, you gotta go for the title right here, Jarrett. Though, what a, what a way to get in so quickly, beating him in his own move. Off the float over, catches him with the knee. Oh, look at this! That's one way to do it. He goes with the stroke and he hits it. Stroke by Styles. Pin two. No. Well, we've seen both wrestlers use the patented finishing move of the other, and both gain just two counts, just near falls. What's he gonna do right here? As you see, AJ Styles going up to the top. Here AJ he goes. Perched up on the top. Here he goes. Oh, he misses. Flying off oh. the hole. Jarrett pointing out to the world just how smart he is. Yeah, but he wasn't too smart. Could be the, oh, oh, what's this? Armani Brown gets the alpha man. Oh, but he, but he, AJ gets out of the way and he pounces Jarrett. He took out Jeff Jarrett with the pounce. And Tito no, Ortiz, that's law and order, sent him to the back. Get him out of here. AJ's got him pinned, Tito. But Tito's got to take care of Armani Brown right now. He's got to make sure. Wait a minute, another referee in, too. Oh, look at this, Tito. Tito pulled the senior official, Rudy Charles, out. Oh. He said, I'm the referee here. Oh, now look at this. AJ can't believe it. And now he's getting to Tito's face. Tito's saying, oh, oh, no. Oh. Shelly, that's the low blow what from Jared. You've got to be kidding. Jared able to get the low blow in there. Take advantage of this. Got him up. That's Perch what he meant to Monty by you. You got it, Monty. But it backfired, it looked like. But... With all the confusion, Jared able to get it back. Oh, he just pushed Tito Ortiz out of the way. Uh -oh. How wise is that, Jared? Oh. Tito just yanked him right down. Here's the face-off. Here's the showdown. Oh, oh come on. You gotta be kidding. Oh, what a right hand. A knockout shot. Tito Ortiz just knocked out Jeff Jarrett. AJ Styles going up top here. Can he take advantage? This could be the opening do? from the top. Unbelievable! It's the spiral down! Spiral tap! AJ! Here's one! Count one! one two! He's down! No champion! No champion! He hit him with the spiral tap! He had to go to a move he hasn't used in over two years! Adapting. Who's better than changing his offense on the fly? The Styles Clash, it was countered. The Styles Clash, it was blocked. So you're right, Don. He went to the bag of tricks and he used the spiral tap and he has done it. The phenomenal AJ Styles. All the hard work, all the dedication is paid off. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, live from Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida, it's time for your Against All Odds main event of the evening. When the bell rings, the man in charge, official Mr. Earl Hebner. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the combatants. First of all, standing in the corner to my left. He weighed in this morning at 230 pounds. Born in Toronto, now making his home out of Tampa, Florida. Tonight, he attempts to fulfill a 12-year dream by becoming the heavyweight champion of the world. This is the number one contender, Captain Charisma. Christian Cage! And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing in the corner to my right, he is accompanied tonight by Gail Kim and weighed in this morning at 238 pounds. He is the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. This is the king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett. And Jarrett gets right in the face of the challenger, Christian Cage, and referee Earl Hebner backs Jarrett down. Well, he's going to have to take control of this match right from the start. And look at Larry Zabisco. He's got words. He shakes the hand of Captain Charisma coming over to the champ. I've got to give it to him. I've been very critical of Larry Zabisco, especially with the Raven situation and how I thought that was just done wrong by Larry Zabisco. But he seems to be very sincere about seeing that this thing is a level playing field. I think he realizes what's at stake. And what's at stake is his job. TNA management laid down the law to Zabisco, and Larry Zabisco laid down the law to the entire locker room. He said, we're not gonna stand for any outside interference. If there is outside interference, you're gonna get fired. Well, I, I think Larry Zabisco's hedging his bets too. He's making sure that whatever the outcome is, he's covered, and he can say that he did the right thing. But again, all eyes are gonna be on Earl Hebner. You talk about controversy. And there you see the championship belt displayed. And Jeff Jarrett has really been a true world's champion. In the past four years, he's had title matches all over the globe. Finland, Scotland, England, Ireland, New Zealand, Germany, Mexico, South Korea, Canada, the United States, of course. A true world's heavyweight champion. And that's when you win the NWA world's heavyweight title. That's what you represent. You're not a company champion. You're a champion all over the world. The chess match begins here, Mike. As you can see, the face off, they're sizing each other up. They've got to be careful they don't let their emotions get the best of them early on. Each one has a game plan, and they're going to have to stick to it. Shoulder block and quick pin attempt by Christian Cage. Springs off the ropes again, drops Jarrett right in his tracks, and again goes for the cover. Wow, quick pace here in the opening minute of this matchup. It's almost like. Christian Cage is just a little wound up right there, but he every time he gets Jeff Jarrett the pin, Jeff Jarrett doesn't allow him to last long. It's just almost like the, the hit of the hand from Earl Hebner just forces him back to his feet. Both men circle and hook it up in mid-ring, and Jarrett cuts him off. Caught him with a knee right into the midsection. Rocks him with a series of rights to the side of the head. Grabs the side headlock, but Christian Cage fires him off into the ropes. Jarrett able to duck the clothesline, catches him with a drop toe hole, and then he just paint brushes him. You know he wants to get Christian Cage out of his game. He wants to get under his skin, and with moves like that, he can accomplish just that. Well, that's what makes him so great as a champion. He knows how to get in your head. He knows how to make you so frustrated that you're going to make a mistake. And all Jeff Jarrett needs you to do is make one mistake, and then he'll become victorious. But Christian Cage's not going to bite on it right now. Quick reversal. Jarrett shoots him off into the corner. He head and shoulders fake into a roll up pin attempt. No, just a two count. Great move right there by Christian Cage as he had Jeff Jarrett guessing the wrong way. Jarrett positioned now by Christian Cage. Going to try and elevate him up into the air and does Jarrett lands on the ring apron. 
Dirt gonna try and fight back. Shoulder block from the apron, from outside. Now Jarrett's gonna try a suplex. Christian up, lands on the apron. Great agility, gonna try and fight him off and does. Series of rights. Oh, to the side of the head, and Jarrett rocked him with the right, and Christian Cage fights right back. You can see they're just trading blows right here. Oh, what a shot right there with a little inverted DDT action right there. Look at right there, you see Christian's wife. That's the knee. concern on her face. Denise, the wife of Christian Cage, looking on from the front row, from the ringside seat, has to be happy with what she just witnessed there as Christian Cage hit that inverted DDT and Jarrett crashed the Look at this! He's going all the way up! Oh, oh, but Jarrett gets out of the way and he hits the rail dead on! Just crashed and burned. That's what I'm talking about, the champion. He, died, he goes to and doing whatever he wants. Right there, looking on, and she's got to be concerned. Well, you're not kidding. Cheering him on, but at the same time, obviously concerned over a series of events that has seen Jeff Jarrett quickly take control here. And a weakened Christian Cage going to be, oh no, look at him, right into the rail. He just swung it at the side of his body, as well as his shoulder, went crashed right into the safety rail, and check out Earl Hebner. Well, I'll tell you what, he is doing an unbelievable job of taking control of this match as a referee. That's what TNA management wanted. They said, we want somebody who's gonna lay down the law. Look out right here at the broadcast table. Oh, man, I am right into it. Jarrett fires Christian Cage right into the table. Rocks him with the right hand. He's got him right set up here against the table. Just Look one after serious. another. One oh. after the other to the side of the head. Jeff Jarrett's in total control right here as Christian Cage still hasn't recovered from that shot he took to the rail. That shot that he took, and look at this. Oh, man, right oh. into the table. Catapult move by the champ and the challenger. Don, you felt it and you saw it. Christian just went directly right into the side of the table here. Oh, man, and again, right on that chest. Right on that chest point where he hit the rail. Unbelievable. Jeff Jarrett is in total control. A weakened Christian Cage sent off What a drop kick! Caught his perfect timing, perfect leg placement, but the drop kick only leads to a two count. Oh, you can just feel the tension. You can feel the excitement. Somebody's life's gonna change here tonight. Think about the victory this would mean to the king of the mountain. Everybody they throw at him, he defeats. Just, Nash, just Payne, in. one, two. In the mind of Jeff Jarrett, the champion, just another one added to the list of victims. You talked earlier about Kevin Nash, Diamond Dallas Page, Jarrett mentioned Rhino, talking about going to Japan to take it to Hulk Hogan. Think about this too, if Christian Cage loses this match, where does he go from there? At what point does he go back to that mid-card? And Jeff Jarrett said he would. I mean, he's got so much pressure on him. And that was the one thing that really got, oh, really got under Christian's, without question. That's the one thing that took him out of his game, really got under his skin when Jarrett referred to him as that mid-card comedy act. How about this? Earl Hebner pulls Jeff Jarrett at the hair and pulls him oh. right back and Jared had to look him in the eyes and realize he can't go too far there. But oh man, Christian Cage out of breath. You can see the spit coming out of his mouth. The throat, uh, yeah, the throat and the windpipe of Christian Cage across that cable, that steel cable, the ring rope. Jared crashes down with all of his weight across his back, drops out to the floor. Great look at Kim, Kim! Oh, the referee, and she snaps over on Karana. She's interfered, and the referee didn't see it. Behind the back of Earl Hebner, he never saw it. Two count for Jarrett. If he would have seen that, she'd have been fired. So close. But she took a risk right there. But again, they're just wearing Christian Cage down. And I have the feeling about this. You are so jacked up for this match. You're so nervous. You get so emotional. And that saps your strength. How many, it saps your energy. How many times, Don, have we seen it? In professional wrestling and in other sports as well. You're right, you get so high. The adrenaline rush at an all-time high level for Christian Cage, the challenger, going into this matchup. But then, once the bell rings, you have gotta do it inside this excited ring. The float over by Jarrett leads to a sleeper attempt, and Christian Cage fights through, fires him off into the ropes, and now the sleeper applied by Captain Charisma. And, and that's perfect for him if he can hold on. 
on to it. Something to get his breath and take out some of Jared's. And look at this, oh man! Wow! Christian Cage able to take advantage of that. Counters with a power bomb and gonna spin through here and Set apply the figure, the figure four. four leg lock. Jared is blocking it. And Christian gonna sit back and cap it off. And there's the figure four leg lock. A hold that we have seen Jeff Jarrett use on many, many occasions. Now being used against him. Gail Kim. Look at this, he's reaching out as Gail Kim is helped pulling him back toward the ropes. And it worked. And again, Gail Kim is able to do it out of the sight of the referee. Difference maker. Gail Kim pulled Jarrett over to the side of the ring and he was able to make contact with the ropes and get the break. I'm starting to wonder, is it really out of the sight of the referee? Well, he's behind his back. That's all we know at this point. I and I think know. I think Christian has the same question yes. in his mind. Uh, like I said, I smelled a rat at the beginning. Nice kick to the back of the head right there by Jarrett. Oh, Christian never saw that one coming. Jarrett drills him in the back of the head. And now Jarrett senses that it's time for him to take advantage. Gonna do the of same the, thing, uh, it looks like. Gonna step over and... Oh! What? Sharpshooter? Oh, look at this! No, don't tell me! Oh, this breaks but, back memories! But, but, look at this! Christian Cage hooked onto the ankle of referee Earl He's Hebert. saying, no, don't you dare! Don't you dare do it! Don't you dare do it. Don't, do. dare do it! don't you dare do it! We don't want to repeat in 1997! He's begging him not to do it! Look at this, Earl Hebner looking on, and he works his way, and he gets a hook! Oh, he touched the rope! I, did, I don't think he saw it! Oh, come on, how can he miss that? I, how can you miss that? Christian Cage fighting through the pressure, fighting through the pain as Jarrett sits back on the sharpshooter. I mean, think about the pain, the ankle, the knee, the back, everything that the pressure's applied to on that hold. That's but one Christian way. Cage fights his way out of it. He's got it reversed. Now, can he turn it around? And yes, he does. He's steady to his feet. And now look at it, Jarrett can't believe how the tides have turned. Oh, and he pulls him away from Gail Kim that time. And as he pulls Jarrett back into the ring to try and keep him away from the ring ropes, he lost the pressure. He lost the grip on the sharpshooter. Oh! He nope. timed that and just placed it perfectly. You can see that Christian Cage, though, has got to get a second win. He's had so much taken out of him. So much taken out of him. Both champion and challenger are down. Gail Kim shouting words of encouragement into the King of the Mountain, Jeff Jarrett, while referee Earl Hebner puts in the count. He's up to four. Man, both of them haven't even seemed to have done Not even to moving. get up. Not even moving at this point. Think about this. It would be the Jeff Jarrett Championship if Christian Cage can't get up. And you can see both of them now realizing where they are at the count. Earl Hebner just stops right there. Jared springs off the ropes. Christian prepared, saw the move coming, blocked it, stops him and blocks it again, and now fights back with a series of rights. Oh, beautiful shot right there, right where he hit him before. And now the rights, the lefts. Oh, and he hits him with a clothesline. Inverted atomic drop, the series of rights, and you're right, the disc is clothesline, and then the flying forearm shot put the shoulder into him at the same time. This is a chance for him to get some momentum because he hasn't really had any since the very beginning of this match. And it seems like he's finding himself. I think he's he realizes that it's a war, not a battle. But look, oh, and he hits the DDT. Dropped him, spiked him on his head. Desperation move, but now here's the cover. Here's the press. Leg two, two. Got it, no. Wow, so close. I'll tell you what, that's the kind of move when you hit it like that, it can be all over, but Jeff Jarrett just has that instinct. That's why he's the champion. He can hear that count. Even when he's dizzy and trying to figure, oh, look at him. Oh, he, he slid and he caught the referee right there in the ankle. Exactly. And Earl Hebner went down, you can see Don, grabbing and grabbing onto the ankle and favoring it as Christian has taken control of this match and he's going up to the top and Gail Kim interferes again. Well, she realizes that he's going up and Oh, and Jeff Jarrett uses the advantage to get right to his feet. You're right, it's a free shot for Gail Kim in her mind with referee Earl Hebner down, and now Jarrett as well. Look at this. Oh, wait a minute. Is he's he gonna... setting him up for the stroke? From the top row? You're kidding me. Oh. He nails it from the top row. Stroke off the top. The patented finishing move of the King of the Mountain, Jeff Jarrett. Is he going to cover Christian and keep the title? He's got it from the top, and the referee, though, still reeling in pain. Jeff Jarrett now covers. Yeah. He's calling for the ref. Hebner favoring the ankle. He gets a 
over there. Drags himself One, over. Two. No! Oh, he kicks the shoulder off. Just two. Only two. I'll tell you, if it hadn't been for the fact that Earl Hebner was down, that would have been a pin right there, but it took a little extra time to get him over there. Crowd screaming Christian's name, trying to fire him up. Almost as if Christian hears he's just daring Jared, and Jared's ready for him. Series of rights by the champ. Oh, that one caught him in the side of the head. Shot off into the ropes. Oh! Again! You see that contact made with the referee's head that time. Look at this. Earl Hebner is he's, down. He's knocked out. Everything. Is he going to go for the move? Oh, no, he's got it. He's got it. And with referee Earl Hebner knocked out, unconscious, he comes down to employ the count. You can see it was so close. Christian Cage realizes it. He's got to be glad, though, that there is a referee out there now. Look at Christian making the motion that the NWA World's Heavyweight title belt, it could be around his waist. It's just a three counter, a submission away. Catches him with the knee, and now he's going to try to set him up for the... Oh, but oh! He was going to try and beat Jared with his own move. He was going for the stroke, and Jared caught him with the low blow. That's a high risk. He's going to disqualify oh, ah! He gets nailed, the referee! I think Johnson was going to disqualify Jared. Oh, man, he wasn't going to take it. Now he's looking up, and he's what? yelled for... He's, he's motioned to Gail Kim. What? She's picked up. What has she got? She Steel chair. The chair. Oh, wait a minute, with all the referees down, they don't see this. Christian Cage, though, goes at it, and he kicks it right into the head. Missile oh, drop, Jared, right into the steel chair. And then the chair goes right into the face of Jared. He's got it, but he knocks no referee. You can hear him counting the impacts on. They're at seven, they're at eight. And now Christian Cage has come out here. Chasing Gail Kim around the ring. He's had it. He knows what she's all. Oh, wait a minute, he's got her. Well, that's one way to take care of this repeated interference. He's had enough of this. Is he going to set her up? Oh, wait a minute. No! The no! Oh, he crushes him with it. No! Guitar shot by Jared. No! No! Look at Gail Kim clear up the evidence. Look at her clean that evidence out of the ring. And so putting it underneath the ring, Jared's got it. He's waiting again, though, the referee not Nobody, there. nobody there to make the count. Here he comes. Earl Hebner, he Hebner, it. Revive. He's got it. Goes over. Here's the count. One. No. Two. No, no this can't be happening. He got it. Directed on you.
you in the war machine's not letting him. Out of the ring goes both of them. Impactful clothesline by Rhino sends both men up and over the top, down to the arena floor, and turn them loose, baby. It's falls count anywhere, and they are already out in the crowd. Rhino going to try and follow up this advantage. Abyss outside. What's Rhino going to do? Rhino measuring the monster Abyss, and now he's going to just charge right off the rail. I think he realized that this is a marathon, not a sprint. He didn't want to miss that and have him Abyss the advantage. So he got took it short in the distance, and now they crawl into the crowd. A dangerous situation. Out among the crowd here at the Impact Zone and against all odds, Abyss gets the better of it there. Couple of right hands, then rocks right over. But here comes the War Machine back. I'll tell you what, this crowd, you better be careful because these two are, these two are only focused on each other. They're not going to worry about who's around them. It's just going to be a vicious. Oh, oh, wow. man, you can feel the vibration. All over the building. We wow. felt it here. We're on the opposite side of the arena, on the opposite side of the impact zone, and you're not kidding. When he threw Rhino into the wall, we felt the whole building jar. I'll tell you something. That ring right now is really just going to be there for show. It's a backdrop. It's a backdrop. This is now about wherever they can find room to do more, the most damage. And whatever you do, do not forget about the James Mitchell factor. In a match where it's close count anywhere, you've got to be prepared for your opponent to attack, oh, to attack from the blind side. But with Mitchell out there, Abyss, in essence, has an extra set of eyes to watch Rhino to help formulate, maybe to help revise strategy as this matchup goes on. And now the War Machine is going underneath this excited ring to get some weapons. Oh, he just fighting anything that he can get. Look at that. He's found, what is that, the old, like a Super X trophy or something that he's found? I don't know what he's got. I mean, look at that. Just whatever he can use, that's unbelievable. Oh, I didn't know that stuff. I didn't know some of that stuff was underneath there. I don't know. I was him before him. And no selling that stuff on eBay, Don. Weapons tossed in the ring by Rhino. I just talked seconds ago about turning your back on your opponent. I think Rhino, he was looking out for the floor. Mitchell momentarily cost him, and that time it really cost him. Abyss extends the leg, and the big boot from the 350 pound. Oh! He just nails him right there with the kendo stick and hits him again in the back. Little wow. early spring training here. Little batter up for Rhino. I know we got some Major League Baseball players in attendance. David Eckstein of the St. Louis Cardinals has to appreciate that. Shut up! I'll tell you what, he won't be afraid of taking a, a pitch to hit him in the body anymore from somebody throwing a 98 miles an hour after watching the oh! abuse that Rhino just took right there with that garbage can. Look at the dent, completely dented in the side of the trash can after he nailed him right in the head. Mitchell's got to love it. Look out. Man, I'm going to tell you something. I would not want to be a cameraman out there, I would not want to be the referee. I don't even feel safe. I was just behind say, this death. What do you think? We're right in the middle of this, also. Folks, in fact, if for some reason you hear silence, it's because Mike and I have departed to save our lives. Oh, feel that. Oh, the kendo stick, the Singapore cane shots repeatedly to the back of Rhino from Abyss. Blood pouring out of the face and head of Rhino. Oh, I tell you what, that's from that, that garbage can shot that oh. just crushed him in the forehead as he's bleeding right there. And again, the blood going through the eyes is not going to do Rhino any good whatsoever right here. Not at all. It's going to weaken him, it's going to sap his strength, and at the same time, it's going to take away the vision that he has. But, oh, oh. Man, you, the, the, the sound of the blood. Oh. Are just, it's almost like they're magnified. That's how hard they're hitting each other. Suplex out. Oh, right on the ramp! Right on the ramp as he hits it! 
Oh, man, the fish just reached down and just saw the opportunity and nailed it. Think of the strength that the Monster Abyss needs to take someone who's 280 pounds and suplex him overhead on the ramp. Where's the monster going? We've, we've often talked about that tunnel vision that he has, and the monster abyss is headed the, uh, to the back of the arena, and he's gonna position a table. Oh man, everything that's not bolted down is being used in this it's match. It's in play, Look it's right legal. Here. He's setting up another table right here. Mitchell directing traffic. You can see they're positioning these two tables together. Obviously, they formulated a strategy and a game plan, and now Abyss is going to carry out whatever six. He's got another he table right there. What's he? There you see Rhino just trying to regain his. Oh! oh. Caught him with the baseball bat right on the forehead, right there where he's busting up. He's, he's using what he can to keep Rhino occupied as he sets up another table right here. This is that tunnel vision that we talked about. Once the Monster Abyss gets focused, gets centered on a certain game plan, he's gonna follow through no matter what. This might enable Rhino to regain his strength to turn it around, but every time that you anticipate that that's gonna happen, Abyss cuts him off. I noticed right there where James Mitchell is guiding Abyss, and when he realizes that Abyss has to use the to, to take the shot over there and hit him. Another he table? He's got, what in the world's going on? How many tables are in the building? Well, he's, got a, he's got a stack set up alongside the bleacher area. A two table stack. And now Mitchell points at Rhino and says, put him away. Oh man, he puts him through that. That'll be the end and of Rhino's it's, chance. It's, it's false count anywhere. You drive him through those tables, you can pin him right there, and watch Rhino fight back! That was a situation where it took too much time for a miss, and it gave Rhino a little bit of a chance, I think, to regroup. Look out! Oh, no! Gonna try and go for a powerbomb here! Oh, look at the crowd on their feet! They know what it can be! Oh, no, Rhino fights back! What's he doing? Oh, right into the tunnel! Right to the side right there where the tunnel entrance is! Rhino has somehow countered this. Is he gonna go for the floor here? Oh, oh. big boot by a fist stops it, and you see Rhino go to the floor. You saw the war machine get down in that familiar position. Get down in the crouch and charge at a fist. Looked like he was going for the floor, and the monster dropped him with the big I mean, boot. look at this right here. Rhino's trying to find some room, and he's going right outside the building. Right there, look at this. And the fist just runs him right out the door. And he's gonna follow up outside the impact zone. You can see the floats right yeah, there. Yeah, they've got a parade here at, at Universal Resorts in Orlando as we see the Monster Abyss. Oh. Oh. Look at this right there, you see crowd coming up. Oh, right onto the car! It's parked out front as he just hits him right onto the windshield. You can see that there's fans, Don, that have left the impact zone area. Oh! oh. Swing and a miss with the baseball bat. Just smashed the window of that car. Now look at this, you can see, oh man, he misses. As Abyss does it, look at the blows though. He would have caught it with that bat. Could have done unbelievable damage. And now Rhino grabs Abyss around the head. He's gonna drag him right back into the building. This gave Rhino the momentum that he needed. And wait a minute, Abyss counters off, man. As he nails it right here into that. What is that? Another trash can yes. of sorts. Shoulder first goes Rhino right into the trash can. How often do you see Rhino done in a match where his opponent outweighs him by 70 pounds, where his opponent has, would you say, maybe five inches and a height advantage as well? It's a situation that Rhino's not used to, but boy, is he digging down deep tonight. I'll tell you what, though, he's just somebody that's so compact and powerful that it's not, I don't think, as big a differential as people might think, as he's always, I mean, he just, Rhino looks bigger than he is, you know what I mean? And he's pulling out a table. Oh, he's got a double stack of tables in the back of the building. And now, the war machine gonna position a table of his own and gonna slide it into the ring. Mitchell's got something cooking out on the floor with the Monster Abyss. Oh, what's what he got? It looked like a staple gun. I thought gun. that's what it was. Yeah, it is. it is. He's got a staple gun. It's legal. 
Anything is in this match. I mean, how are you going to stop these two? I mean, there's nobody. Oh, oh, no! Shoot him right in the head with it. God. Oh, no man. No. The, the forehead. Oh, they already opened up forehead and another staple oh, right you can in. You just hear the sound of the staple. Right, right into the room. Off flesh. And they're grabbing another table. This time, it's the Monster Abyss who's going to slide a table in. Referee Andrew Thomas checking on the condition of the War Machine Rhino. But he has really taken a brutal beating from the Monster Abyss. It's false count anywhere. TNA management, they made the right call when they turned them loose. I'll tell you what, with these two, there is no other way. I mean, they've already gone beyond any rules that we can put on them. Did you see that? Yes. He says we're going to set off the detonator. The doomsday right there as he's calling for it. Mitchell says to Abyss, finish him off. And they have that communication between the two, unlike anything we've ever seen where it involves Abyss. Somehow Mitchell can communicate with him. Look at this. Oh. Belly to belly. He planted him 350 the, the pounds. The strength. The strength of the war machine. And he's setting up the door. Look at that. He's wanting to. Table in place. And there he goes. Right into the table. Choke slammed him right through the wooden table. Here it is. Now pin one, two, two and no. no! 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 We do! He got out of it! A bitch can believe it as you see the broken trophy, the broken tables. Rhino operating on fuel. Well, here's tonight. the tax! No! He's got the bag of tax. The thousands and thousands of thumbtacks being brought into play by a bitch. Ah, uh, he knows it is. He holds him up. Rhino's not going to let him do it. Yes, he gore. 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 Wow. Cover one, two, two. It's done it. No. 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 Oh, my. Look at the gore right here. Bam. Oh. Listen to the crowd. He's gonna go for the floor again. He's missing oh, it. Look at that. Mitchell. Mitchell stopping it right there. He used the cane to hook the leg. Sure. He distracted him. Just enough so that Abyss can get on his feet. And Rhino follows up outside. Whoa, look out right here in front of us, coming by the broadcast machine. Oh man, I got nowhere to go. Uh, he turned his back. He turned his back on Abyss, and that's gonna cost him. And now they're going right up into the stands. Right here above us. What? What in the world? Oh my gosh, the crowd trying to scamper out of the oh, way. Oh, they better move out of the way. And again, it's false count anywhere. You can see him right there. Abyss has the advantage right up there on the top of the stand. That's a precarious oh. place that they're at, Don. They're, yes. well, they're well above the broadcast position. They're way above us up here in the bleachers. Oh, he oh. Gets there. you can see there. He threw it with such force. Did you see that? Just board him all the way down through a double stack.
at the door, and he's able to keep it. Oh, oh man. My God, take another look from another angle. Oh, God. He scored him from the bleachers here at the Impact Zone, and Abyss crashed down through the table. Here's a big light a great shot. shot. Oh, man, what a shot. And he grabbed onto the rail to save himself, but they're attending to the Monster Abyss. Yeah, the Monster Abyss laid out, not moving. You see trainers, you see the concern on James Mitchell as well, checking on the Monster Abyss. Wow, what a drop. We, we've got to send it to the back. Is, is JB ready? Yeah. All right, we're gonna take it, we're gonna take it out of the building, we're gonna send it to the back. Jeremy Borash standing by with the X Division champion Samoa Joe. Abyss is out. On the line is America's Most Wanted, about to put up their legacy as the greatest tag team in TNA wrestling history for one last shot at LAX in the World Tag Team Championship. Sunday night was probably one of the worst, most embarrassing nights of our lives. We let a lot of people down. It was such a horrible feeling to see that Mexican flag raised and hearing that national anthem. But what was worse than that is having my integrity questioned by my own partner. But we're past that now. We're past that because Storm and I finally had that heart to heart that we've been needing to have for a long time. So the bottom line is that we stand here as a unit. Me and my brother, we stand here as a team united. And tonight, there is nothing, one eye or not, there is nothing that is going to keep him and I from taking out LAX and getting our gold back. That's what I like to hear. That's the wildcat I know, and you know me. You know, I don't want to apologize, and I don't never say I'm sorry, but I did it to you, and I did it to you, and I'll do it to each and every American out there who had to sit there and watch that Mexican flag be raised, LAX. We are one of the greatest tag teams in wrestling history. The only way we're disbanding is over my dead body. Let's go get our title, Jack. All right, it's up next, the World Tag Team title match here on Impact. Yeah. And you know what? You've been pawing on me and grabbing on me and snatching on me. I wish I'd have brought some peanuts for you, Conan. That's just personal. Wow. I'm sorry. And here we go. NWA, World Tag Team titles on the line, LAX against AMW, but there's even more than that for America's Most Wanted. That's right, if AMW does not win this match, they will be forced to disband their tag team. If they do win, they'll be the World Tag Team Champions for what, Mike, about the umpteenth time? Oh, you're not kidding, I think it would be seven times. Harrison Storm on the attack in the early going. Oh, Homicide's turning around, look at this, he's gnawing on the head. Wait a minute, here's Harris with that trigger patch, obviously. Oh, Storm has that damaged eye, getting right in the face of Conan. Wait a minute, we've got to take a commercial break. More of AMW and LAX for the tag title when we return. Wow. The Wildcat, Chris Harris, wearing the eye patch, remains on the offensive against Big Hernandez. It's AMW against LAX NWA World Tag Team titles on the line. AMW's tag career as well. And Jim, I know that a major decision has to be made earlier. You were in the ring with Kurt Angle. You've got to have some kind of a decision on the tag team partners oh, yeah. for Joe and Angle next Thursday. Oh, I've been thinking about it. You know something, two other guys that have problems in TNA are AJ Styles and Rhino. So let's make a tag team match. Samoa Joe and AJ Styles against Kurt Angle and Rhino here in the Impact Zone next week on TNA Impact, and we will let it all hang out. But right now, Conan, watching his men while trapped inside a steel cage. He cannot interfere in this contest. Talk contest. He's been neutralized. But so far, the, the momentum has changed since right after the commercial break. Now, LAX on the offensive. Harris is in there, and Harris, you got to think with that eye patch on, his depth perception is, is affected. Also, his peripheral vision. My God, look at the power of Hernandez and Homicide going to the air. You know, I figured with Conan taken out of the equation, it might hurt their game plan or their strategy. But what I've been seeing is the Latin American exchange. They're always cutting off on the blind eye side oh, of Harris. Wait a the minute. He got the tag, but no, the referee didn't see it. The referee was distracted with Hernandez. The referee did not see that tag. But Storm, oh. nobody can stop him. Oh, man, is he on fire. Drilled him in the back of the head. He shoves the senior official out of the way. Storm drop kick for Big Hernandez has him rocking. Well, I'll tell you, look at Storm trying to take this big tree down. It's a, and there's the lumberjack kick. He did it. He chopped him right down, but the referee doesn't realize that Storm made that tag. And he's, he's
He's ordering James Storm out of the ring. Chris Harris, with one eye, has been beaten and pummeled and pounded. Gail Kim trying to beg and plead. Conan screaming over here at the announcer's desk at us and everybody in sight. Yeah, check that out. Gail Kim even trying to instruct the Wildcat, Chris Harris, to get that tag in. Oh, and Homicide hooks him by the leg and brings him back over to their side of the six-sided ring. Harris had gone to the wrong corner. Wait a minute, there's Storm. Storm's got a beer bottle. Storm drawn back at Homicide who gets out of the way. Storm has that beer bottle trying to even things up. The referee's going to have to make some kind of ruling here because... I don't care whether it was called for or not. You can't just bring a beer bottle in the ring. And what? Hey, oh, hey, wait a minute. Oh, my God. He just busted his own partner, Chris Harris, right in the face. And there's oh. glass everywhere. He took the beer bottle. That's his, that's his own partner. I am not believing what I'm seeing. Gail Kim with a look of shock and astonishment written across her face. My God, he, he didn't catch it over the head. He caught it right in the face, Mike. The entire impact zone is shocked by oh, what no, happened. Come on. something that nobody's done more than twice. And that's become the four-time X Division champion. On the other side, Chris Saban has a chance to become only the second person to win three X Division titles if he wins here tonight. And you said it, Petey Williams has held this belt longer than anybody. What a matchup, let's get it on. You mentioned earlier that you were selecting Chris Saban. He was going to be your pick in this match. Well, Saban with the victory on impact was very, very good to him in the year 2004. I'll tell you something. I don't know how you can top what we just saw, but if anyone can do it, three of the greatest athletes in the world in one of the most high risk, one of the most feared matches of any opponent, one of the most challenging matches that's ever been aired on television or pay-per-view on anywhere. Ultimate X. It's what you want to follow what we just saw. Petey Williams on his bicycle, Chris Saban chasing him around the ring while AJ just waits patiently. And you know what? It's a great word to use for a match like this, an explanation. You've got to wait. You've got to have eyes in the back of your head. You've got to wait for your moment. And when you see it, you've got to seize it. Because if you don't, you're awful high up in the air to mess up. We talked about Saban, the three wins and the three Ultimate X matchups in 2004. Yes, you do, and I'll tell you something. 
Petey Williams knows it, but I'll tell you something, Petey Williams is the kind of competitor that is up for this challenge. AJ starting his way up that steel structure that Saban able to come from the arena floor to stop his ascent. A series of shots from Styles from up there, perched in a very precarious position. Oh, what a move right there by Saban. You talk about getting his I want you to realize how high these tables are. You saw how high Saban was. And the belt and the steel cable to the top were nowhere even in the picture. Look at how high that is. a great shot as we go wide, and you can appreciate just how high up that X Division Championship belt hangs. What a drop kick by Saban. And now Saban leaping across. He's got to make his way across the cables. Oh, he's so close. Oh, come on, Scott DeMore. I've got it with this, this guy. Is, this is unreal. This Not is so in this match. Of all things, Dusty Rhodes, we need to do something about DeMore. And of this course, that allows Williams to get in here. And Wait a minute. Wait. Wait a minute. I think they are doing something about it. And they were co-champs for a while. And then they had to solve that 
Oh, by having the gauntlet, and that's how Petey Williams became the X Division champion over five months ago. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Styles and Williams and AJ. We are broadcasting in another city. You're right, now springing up and oh! AJ Styles can kick you from anywhere. I mean, this guy can got eyes in the back of his head, Mike. AJ able to drill the champ, Petey Williams with the kick. Got to take another look at this. Look at this. Oh! You saw there that he tried to get his hands up. Tried to block that move. Great effort by Williams, but Styles connects nonetheless. You see Chris Saban, and I'll tell you what you've got to do if you're, you want to win this match. You've got to let two of the wrestlers get involved. You've got to let them... You focused on each other where they lose sight of you so that you can shimmy up the, the poles and get on top of the steel cable and grab that belt. As you can see, Saban realizing he can't win unless he's up on those ropes. Well, you're right. One of the good strategies might be just to try to avoid the other two. Yes. And you're right, maybe sneak up from behind and go up that steel structure, climb across and take down the title. Petey, I think that's what he's got in mind just as we talked about it. Well, he knows he's saving and Styles battling. Petey oh, Yeah. 
fatigue that they're going through right here. You're right with every second. Oh, oh, no. No. Look at 
this, amazingly enough, he's regrouping and trying to keep in mind what he has to do to take down that title. Look at everyone's oh. face. You have never seen such pain and agony. Every time they show a close-up, folks, AJ still just days. I don't even think he knows or cares where he is. Can't even move. Save it on one side. Save it up. Now you see Petey Williams on the far side. Both of them. Looks like Saban's got quite a clear advantage here. Again, trying to get up there. Trying to pull this belt down. Trying to get a hold of it. You see Petey going up there. Saban's got his hands on the now belt. Both, both, men men both men. Both men have got a grip on the Wh belt. Whoever can pull it down first. Looks like Petey Williams has got it unfastened. No, it looks like Saban does. ladders, anything that's not nailed down. These guys have been a part of it, and of course, they've been in cage matches. They are made for this, and when you're stuck oh. there with nowhere to go, oh, they've got you pinned in right where they want you. They are just ragdolling Eric Young here, tossing him from side to side of the six sides of the field. There goes the Canadian enforcer, Bobby Roode. He's dropped in his tracks with the brother Devon clothesline. It's all Team 3D from the, oh! Oh, look at that, that is just a terrible sight to see as Eric Young is absolutely gushing the blood. Look at the, look at the canvas on it. It's already oh, covered in Eric Young's blood. This, this reminds me of that new TNA DVD release. Best of the bloodiest brawl. And speaking of six sides of steel, there's a couple of different six sides of steel bloody cage matches that are also in that DVD that you've got to see. Oh, man, it's all team 3D. As Eric Young is in severe trouble, popping around like a fish right now. Well, you're not kidding. It's been a full court press from the opening minute of this matchup. It's been all Team 3D Eric Young, a bloodied Eric Young. Gonna take a shortcut here and rake the eyes of Brother Ray. I guess there's really not such a thing as a shortcut in a match like this. We just turn them loose, put them inside the six sides of steel, and just let them beat the hell out of each other. I guess Eric Young realized what else could happen to him. He might as well fight back in some way. As you can see him now trying to get, oh, there's not much, there's hardly any room between the ropes and the kill. Look at it. Wait a minute. Eric Young's got him and he's just raking that head against the steel cage. Look at that. I'm going to remind you that yet to come in this impact broadcast, TNA management allowing the paparazzi productions footage, I understand, involving James Mitchell. Of course, he took Alex Shelley with him. And due to the newsworthy nature of the video, TNA management has agreed to air it. That's yet to come as well. And now the Canadians have turned this thing in their favor. Oh, look at there, the combination suplex between the two of them as they send Brother Ray over. Oh, I don't look at that. Eric Young, absolutely. It's hard to look at. But that's what happens. There's no give in that wall. And you just, the skid just grades right across that steel cage. And it's almost impossible not to bleed when you're in a match like this. Oh, this action is great. We'll be right back. And welcome back, everyone, to Impact on Spike TV and more of this Six Sides of Steel cage match. We missed it. Wow. Top rope moonsault, and he just crashed and burned. I bet he wishes he would have had just climbed on out of there after that. Senior official Rudy Charles has at least maintained control to the point where we have partners outside the ring, well, at least momentarily now, Brother Devon unloading on both members of Team Canada. Wow, look at that extension. Brother Devon on fire, just taking it to both of them. Oh, wow, did you see the impact of that clothesline by Brother Devon on Eric Young? And then the face plant for the Canadian enforcer, Bobby Roode. It looked like Bobby Roode was busted open, too. Devon pin, one, two. Wow, amidst the pool of blood, Bobby Roode makes the save. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. It just, there's nothing there for you. There's no way to cushion the blow. That's what you talked about, Don, right in the opening minute of this match, and it's surely prophetic right there. Pin, one, two. two. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners of the six sides of steel, Wait a minute! What? America's most wanted just goes flying into the 
cage. They just went right through the door. They knocked Andrew Thomas, the referee, down. I guess they figured this was their chance to take it out on Team 3D. And then here comes the other members of Team Canada. This is just wrong. Petey Williams and A1 as well. What a destruction this has turned into. Just when we thought Team 3D, I mean, totally dominant in the match, getting their hands raised. Look out for the hockey stick. The Canadian flag wrapped in the hockey stick to take down Brother Devon. There was no way that Team Canada was going to win that match as Team 3D just dominated from start to finish. And then look at this. Did PMW waiting for him and, and then the rest of Team Canada. Did you hear what DeMore just said? He said, get the tables, and AMW is going to get the tables. Harrison Storm now bringing a table right by the broadcast position. This thing has just took a wicked turn right now. This Team 3D is outnumbered. Six to seven if you throw in DeMore. Well, actually, eight or nine if you throw in DeMore. It's a two. Now they're going to position the table in place. The Canadians do, fortunately, from the back. Well, here comes Jay Lethal. And AMW just took out Jay Lethal with the double team. I admire his courage, but it came to the wrong end as he got caught. Wait a minute, what's going on? And Sanjay Dutt. Sanjay Dutt's out here as well. He's going to try and climb the side of the cage. Oh, my God, they pulled him down right into the guardrail. And then through the, the table from Brother Ray. Petey Williams from the top on top of Brother D. Brother Ray, you see Brother D. Von getting hey, the move. 3D! 3D, you want to make fun of our national anthem? I think it's time we show you a little respect. Canadian style! Well, Chris Saban is well taken out by AMW outside. What does Damore mean? I'm going to show you some respect Canadian style. This is just turned so badly here for Team 3D. They are stuck inside that cage. They've been cornered on the back side. They can't get out of it for freedom. Oh! oh! They stacked the table, and they just went brother right, right through the wood. Absolutely destroyed him in there as he knocked out oh, guys. You see, outside AMW took care of Saban, Dutton Lethal. Brother Ray completely knocked out. Look at the blood flowing from the head of Brother Devon. Oh, everybody busted up. Oh, and they just smashed Brother Devon back into the pit, back into the cage. Then look, check this out. Oh, They've they got the Canadian flags and Team Canada. You want to fight for our country? There's your haymack. Come on, guys, loud and proud. Oh, Canada. They buried him. They buried Team 3D oh, and the Canadian Absolutely turned ugly. What a bunch of cowards. And there's the biggest coward of all. That big load singing the Canadian National Anthem. The coach Scott DeMore. Just turned absolutely bloody and brutal as Team 3D is out cold. They buried Team 3D in the Canadian flag. year history and he's on his way to the impact zone
today. So I can, I can guess you can imagine the question that I got asked the most this week. Are the rumors that we've been hearing true? Is it true that you're going to TNA? And if so, why? Well, I'll tell you this much. I didn't come oh, here yeah. right there, to see the same you. guy come out and say the same damn thing week after week after week. For months and months and months. And, it, and I didn't come here to see a grown man dressed up like a doctor pulling things out of another man's ass. And you can be damn sure I didn't come here because I got fired. He jumped! Which brings me to another rumor that I want to address and put to bed right now. The rumor that I got lowballed in a contract offer. Well, that's not true at all. Actually, I was offered a very hefty sum to stay exactly where I was. But the reason that I came to TNA is the same reason that each and every one of you is in this arena right now. The same reason that everybody's watching Genesis live on pay-per-view. And that reason is that I love wrestling. Then you come to the right place. You know, I've been known to crack a joke or two, say something sarcastic, pull a rib. <laughs> but I don't want anybody to ever forget the fact that I am without a doubt the greatest all-around performer in this sport today. It's like this. I'm tired of egos and politics. I want to see guys in this ring busting their asses. I want to see wrestling reinvented. Like last night, I turn on Spike TV. I'm watching Impact. Little plug for you. And it reminded me of when I broke onto the, re the national wrestling scene eight years ago. There was two companies. One was old, stale, and lacking direction. The other one I was a part of. It was young, hungry, and cutting edge. Fast forward eight years to this very moment, and there's still two companies. One is old boring and lacking direction. And the other one is T-N-A. Yes, sir! And I said this is something that I want to be a part of. In fact, I want to be the biggest piece of this puzzle. Which brings me to Jeff Jarrett. NWA World Heavyweight Champion. I've got two things to say to you. One, you should never wear white pants after Labor Day. Fashion tip. And two, I've come to TNA to take the one thing that's eluded me my entire career. The one thing we both can agree on is the most important and prized possession in this sport, the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. That's his goal.
So I want everybody right now to stand up and take notice that Christian Cage is here. And Christian Cage will fulfill his destiny because that's how I rule. What's this? Well, it's obviously Scott Damore and Team Canada, and he's got a big grin on his face. It's the boss of Team Canada. It's Coach Scott Damore, accompanied by Bobby Roode. Damore coming to the ring to confront Christian Cage. Oh, I'll tell you something. It will be a dark day if these two hook up. I don't know. Look at the look on Damore's face. Oh, it's a shit-eating grin. Look at that thing. I've been looking for you all night. Christian Cage in a TNA wrestling ring. And nobody in this building or anywhere around the world is happier to have you here than me. Think. Hey, think about the times we shared, the memories we had, Moncton, New Brunswick, me, you, and Adam, that crappy little hotel, that cheapskate Emil Dupree's horrible payoffs. Remember that? What about Calgary? We were all there. Me, you, Lance, Jericho. Hey, remember that time we went up to Brett's house and Stu stretched Adam's ass? <laughs> Is the young head saggy bastard? <laughs> Weren't those great times? Stu Hart impersonation? We've came a long way, and we've got even bigger things ahead of us. What's it gonna be, Damore? You see, I heard what you said about Jeff Jarrett and a world's heavyweight title, and hey, everybody wants to be world champion. It's every boy's dream. But I know if there's one person in this business that I don't have to explain how crucial it is to align yourself with the right people politically, that person is you. And it doesn't take a genius to see that we're in the midst of a shift in the balance of power. Petey William will walk out of this ring tonight with the X title to add to America's Most Wanted's tag title to add to the crown jewel of them all, Jeff Jarrett's World Heavyweight Championship. And with you, Christian Cage, joining the fold, we'll rule this place together. They do have a history. Oh, he's obviously playing on it. Well, Scott, that sounds pretty good, but let me ask you a question. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'll be rude. There's no questions, Christian. Do you not understand what Coach Demore is offering you? Do you not understand the opportunity that's knocking on your door right now? You have an opportunity to walk into TNA and be a part of something that me and the rest of the boys have been busting our ass for for the last three damn years. So it's quite simple, Captain Charisma. That's his nickname. You're either with us or you're against us. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? We want an answer right now. Whoa. Bobby Roode, Christian Cage nose to nose. Check out Demore. Looks like he's gonna try and calm Root hey. down. Hey, Shh. Bobby, zip it. We don't need an answer right now, Christian. We've got a little time. But I was sent here to get an answer from you tonight. And I know that you'll make the right choice. Is that a Team Canada t-shirt? 
Tell you what, what an acquisition that'd be for Team Canada. That would give them some major strokes. Well, Scott, it looks like it's the right size, but it's gonna take me some time to see if it's the right fit. Whoa. The more said, we want your answer. We want your decision by the end of the night. Christian Cage has been offered the Team Canada shirt and a position with the Canadians. Up next, Jeff Hardy, Monty Brown in a contender's match. Thank you very much, Don and Mike. And while I'm certainly excited to be here tonight in high definition television, I received an urgent phone call from you last night, Kurt Angle, at 12 o'clock, instructing me to be here right now for an announcement that you have, that you claimed would actually trump the announcement Mick Foley will be delivering later on tonight. A huge announcement. What is this? Well, after seeing Jeff Jarrett and Mick Foley talk together and talk about this huge announcement that was going to change the face of TNA forever, and watching them ride off into the sunset, I thought I had to do something drastic. So I decided that I would change the face of professional wrestling forever. Not just TNA, but professional wrestling forever. So I made a few phone calls to some very, very, very important people. Yeah. And by midnight last night, the deal was done. <laughs> yeah. Well, what does this have to do with Booker T? Why don't you ask him? You see? You see, Jeremiah, what we have here, the elite, the best, the best of the best. You see, in my country, back in Africa, the lion, the king of the jungle, the lion runs in packs. Very dangerous, meat-eating beast. You see what you have here, Jeremiah, is the lions of DNA. From this point on, we take what we want, we don't ask. We want respect from this point on. Kevin Nash, you seemingly left TNA two months ago. We never thought we'd see you again. Now you're here. What, what's this about? I did walk away. I had nothing left to accomplish. I thought about it. I mean, this business has always been about three things. Money, power, and respect. Respect! You know, Joe gave me no respect. Respect. Joe gave Scott Hall no respect. Respect. You know, if you read the Bible in Proverbs, it says that with gray hair comes wisdom. I try to give wisdom to Joe. He spit in my face. I've always, I've always taken this as a business, but Joe, he made it personal. That's why I came back. No disrespect, gentlemen, but the three of you together, you're all legends. You're all icons. You've done incredible things in this business. But I've been backstage. I've seen what Samoa Joe, what AJ Styles, the Motor City Machine Guns, what everybody's doing seems to be an uprising. And at least on paper, Kurt Angle, while the three of you are icons, the three of you are legends, I think the odds might be stacked up against you. JB, this business was built on honor Dignity and respect. Respect. You are seeing three of the greatest wrestlers of all time. But there is one more. Because when I go into battle, I am not going to go in with a stick. I'm going to go in with heavy artillery. So let it be known who that last person is. Reveal. <laughs> Stink? JB, you look like you just saw a ghost. Why be so surprised, JB? I mean, look, look around this room. You know, Kurt, Booker, Kevin, and myself, we tried individually. We tried it the nice way, JB. All we wanted was a little bit of respect. respect. You know, between Kurt and Booker and me, Charmel, Kevin, 75 years combined history right here. <laughs> 75 years 
of blood, sweat, and tears for this wrestling business, JB, that we love. We ask and we ask nicely, but there's going to be no more asking, only demanding. And it's not going to be pleasure. It's going to be business, JB. Gentlemen. Good night, Sting. Sting in. <laughs> All right. Just a little bit bully. Yeah, it's not a big since bully Sting won, since Sting does not want to stay for the party, I'd like to make a little salute. <laughs> Gentlemen and Charmel, here's to the main event mafia. Born tonight. Amen. <laughs> Victorious! Victorious! AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, and check that out. You can see Samoa Joe was busted open from that championship belt shot by Nash. Oh, he caught him with that. I mean, you think about what's on that belt. Now AJ, one on two, but look at this. Joe gets up. Look at that. He's got that rear naked choke there. And they pull it back on Kevin Nash. And they're trying to stop this, but there's no way you're going to break this up. All hell's broken loose here after the matchup. AJ is, wait a minute, here comes. Jared 
gonna try and shoot him off another ropes and oh, down. And Sting just took him right down, put the shoulder right into him. Again. Leapfrog by Jarrett. Attempted the hip toss. Blocked by Sting. And he hip tosses him right to the man. Took him way up in the air. Sting goes airborne with a drop kick. Questions answered, Don? Absolutely. I'll tell you what. I've seen some comebacks before, but this is unreal. You still got it. You still got it. Listen to him. You still got it. Let him know. You still got it. You're damn right he does. Going to lock it up again. No, Jarrett takes the shortcut. Drives the knee right into the midsection. Follows up with a series of rights, and now Sting's rocking. You've got to be able to block out that crowd noise, and Jeff Jarrett does it right there. He knows that no matter how you look at it, it's been a while since Sting's been in that ring. And if he can get some kind of momentum going, then he can use it to his advantage, but Sting not showing any kind of rust just yet. Doubled over Jarrett. Sting off the road, drives him down face first into the canvas. Here comes the alpha male in. Monty Brown, he's gonna get set for the ride. Sent off into the ropes by Sting. Doubled him over with the boot. And then the face jam, you saw Christian Cage from outside putting in the tag, the blind tag. He's now the legal man. I'll tell you what I like what Christian did is he got Sting involved early. Got the juices flowing. The competitive juice is working. And you can see the blows writing down on Jared. Oh! Oh, no, blow. Distraction by Gail Kim. Referee pulled aside. Oh, man. Christian Cage driven out to the concrete, sent out to the arena floor by Jarrett. Wow. That was a tribute to Sting. You saw Christian in the corner. What, you, oh, what a turrican run of my Gail Kim right what? there. She just snapped that off, and that's left Christian Cage in no man's land as Monty Brown's got him. Look out! Oh, on the rail. Oh, man. He dropped him. Thrown first across that steel guardrail. And the alpha male are gonna toss a weakened Christian Cage back into the ring to his partner, Jarrett. Gail Kim was the, the person that turned it all around right there. What a drop kick by Jarrett as he just levels Christian with it. Firmly plants both legs, both boots, right into the chest, and there's the strut. It's kind of right back in your face right there, and that's one thing if you're gonna Make fun of somebody, be prepared to have it come back, but look at the fighting Christian. The rights, the lefts, from his knees and now back up to the vertical base, but stopped in mid-move by the alpha male, and Monty Brown takes him down. Oh, oh backbreaker across the knee, quickly drives him down again, and then just T-boned him overhead with the suplex. The strength of this guy is unreal. If he does the patented scream right at Sting, and then this goes over to business right there. Referee Andrew Thomas letting Sting know he can't come in, he goes to the pin, no. Right back to the cover. And again, able to roll the shoulder in two. Monty Brown is relentless with these pinfall attempts on Christian Cage, but not able to put him away. Oh, look at this. Good quick tags right there. If they got a game plan, once they got through all the initial, you know, the initial force of this crowd and the initial sting entrance in the ring, it's now Jared and Monty Brown doing what they do best. You're right, that feeling out process, that high level energy. And now Jared. Drops down to the floor and oh man, caught him with the right hand. Quickly, Jared back into the ring. You're gonna come charging at him. Oh, nobody home. Christian Cage moves out of the way and Jared crunched against the middle rope. Cheap shot from outside by the alpha male. I'll tell you what, man, it was a wicked shot too and Jared saw it and he goes right down there because Jared's in pain down there himself. And this is the way for him to get his bearings and keep a grip on Christian Cage. Christian. He's got to try and move Jarrett. He's got to get all of his weight behind him. Get over to the side of the ring and get Sting tagged into this matchup. And you know Jarrett's going to fight for his life to not enable him to make the tag. Look at the hand out there. Oh, the tag. And Sting's in. The referee didn't say it. Oh, wait, come on. The referee did he not got say it. him. And now the double team on Christian Cage. Oh. Double front suplex by the alpha male and the king of the mountain. Jarrett and Brown dropping right across the rope. Pin. Two. Whoa. Whoa. Shoulder barely up, another pin attempt by the alpha male. And Christian uses his leg strength to kick out. I'll tell you what, Monty Brown's been relentless on these pin attempts. I mean, you kick out once, he goes right back at it. And you can see they're wearing Christian out. They're, they're closing off the windpipe right there, trying to cause him to not get in the air. And you can just see the spit coming out of Christian Cage's mouth. He can't breathe. Well, he's had his neck, he's had his throat. 
draped right across that top steel cable by Monty Brown. Gonna try and go for a suplex here. Takes him over, snap suplex, right into a pin. No, just in time. He's got to get a tag into Sting. Or these guys, especially someone with the strength of Monty Brown, will wear him down. Someone with the experience of Jeff Jarrett will know exactly what to do. He's trying to set him up for the pounce. Oh, but again, look at that. Just using tried to, good momentum. Yeah, tried to use the head scissors, extending his legs. Monty Brown would have none of it. Sends Christian Cage out to the apron. Quickly, the alpha male gets up to that middle rope and now going to try and bring him back in. Christian Cage fights him off. You can see Sting yelling at him. To just hang in there and find your way over here to get the tag. Look at this, it's just Cage is fighting it off with everything he's got on the strength of Bonnie Brown. Yeah, but those words of encouragement. Uh -huh. You gotta do what you gotta do. And in that case, it's called survival. Look out. Oh, Whoa, he can pitch barely balance. stand. Fighting, gnawing on the head of Bonnie Brown. Oh, splash! He hits it, but he doesn't have enough to go for the pin. And at the same time, when, when he came crashing down with the frog splash, the impact that he, that he crashed down across the chest of Bonnie Brown did not enable him to go One, for the pin. Two, the arm. just no. doesn't have enough. He didn't have enough leverage right there. He did not have the proper weight positioning. It was a desperation attempt. He extended the arm. He draped it across the chest of Bonnie Brown, but it was not enough to put the alpha male away. And again, he gets close over there to the tag, and Monty Brown pulling on the feet, knowing exactly what he's got to do. Christian Cage, not nah, look how close he is. They're leading out, and Monty Jared, Brown. Jared, oh, he's Jared got a pulled cheap him, shot. Jared pulled him down off the apron, just when it looked like Sting was going to make the tag. Oh, look at him using Gail Kim as a shield. Yeah, human shield. And look, shield. he goes over to tag him, and there's nobody there. Oh, no. And Sting back up, but no. Christian Cage tossed back out to the ring. Right here in front of us, Jeff Jarrett grabbed two chairs. There you can see he's setting him up. Again, Sting trying to get in here. The referee's not letting him. Look out! Oh, the... Able to avoid that concerto. And now, Christian Cage, he just double TDT to both. Now he's got to get the tag. He doesn't have any strength left. He's got to somehow roll up to get in there. Listen to him. There he jerks. He's got to go on gut instinct right here. Just he... on pure guts, Christian Cage gonna try and slide, get your body anyway over to that side of the ring. Sting's got his arm, his hand extended in. There's the tag! No problems with the referee seeing it this time, and he's fresh, he's fired up, and look at those right, look at that clothesline. I mean, he's relentless out there, one after another. In the corner! As he hits it! Stinger splash on Jarrett! Oh, he ducks under. Oh, no. Oh, no, the referee down. Contact made with Monty Brown. Now he's got him stacked up in the corner. The alpha male and the king of the mountain both. What's he going to do? Monty Brown tossed out to the floor by Sting. He did it effortlessly, too, as he just absolutely picked him up and threw him over. Now he's got Jared. Scorpion, turn him over. He's turning him it. over. But the referee is down. The referee is still down. He's got the scorpion deathlock applied. Jared trying to make it to the ropes, but you're right. Referee's knocked out. Look at this, you see right there. Oh, he, he got the rope, but the referee didn't see it. They pulls him back to the middle of the ring. Jared tapping out. Oh, Monty tries to come in. Cage cuts him off. Christian Cage. And look at these guys just blow after blow. Jared's been tapping out for minutes. Look at this. Oh, no. Right on top of Sting right there. Christian Cage was tossed overhead by Monty Brown, and Christian Cage just, he just crashed right into Sting. Oh no, look out. Sting and, and Christian Monty Cage. Monty Brown's got the belt. Face to face, nose to nose. I mean, Jared earlier talked about this mistrust, trying, trying to plant a seed. Monty Brown with the title belt. Well, there's some trust for you. He as pulled he him out of the way. Away. He pulled Sting out of the way. Now the exchange, Christian Cage sends Brown out to the floor. Sting's got the title belt. Whoa, look out! Well, you can see right now, you're just anybody that touches you. He's got the belt right there in his hand. There is, a, is there some mistrust? Look at this! He drops it and goes right after Jarrett. 
Jeff Jarrett and Monty Brown. They planted the scene about the mistrust between these two, but now they're working as a team, and they take the alpha male and drive him right into Jarrett. And now they're going to send Monty Brown out to the floor. That leaves Jeff Jarrett in the ring by himself, two on one. Who's this? Wait a minute. No. What is, come on. Bobby Roode and Eric Young of Team Canada, the associates of Jeff Jarrett and the alpha male, they've now hit the ring. More of Jarrett's minions coming in here to help him out in his time of need. of TNA 
It's changed forever! History is made at Final Resolution! The following contest, live from Universal Studios Orlando, Florida, is scheduled for one fall and is a three-way match for the X Division Championship of the World. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Andrew Thomas. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first of all the challengers in the corner to my left, weighing in at 280 pounds. From the Isle of Samoa, he is the undefeated Samoan submission machine, Samoa Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing from Gainesville, Georgia, he weighed in this morning at 218 pounds and is TNA Wrestling's only two-time Triple Crown winner. He is the phenomenal A.J. Styles. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing from the City of Angels, he weighed in this morning at 221 pounds and is the longest reigning X Division champion in TNA history. He is the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. It is time for the X Division Championship matchup, the three-way bout. First pin, first submission, that's the winner, that's the individual who will leave Unbreakable with the X Division goal. It's a situation where you've got to have eyes in the back of your head and look at this right there. Samoa Joe and AJ Styles partner up at the beginning and go right at the champion. Yeah, the two challengers taking it right to the record holder, the six-month reign of the ball and angel Christopher Daniels. Well, let's just say, oh, oh Samoa Joe or AJ Styles, they want to end that tonight. Well, I like just kind of to show you that the belt's what's important. Oh. As well, Joe says, watch this. Oh, oh man! Oh, man. Oh, that's just jarring as Christopher Daniels is taking everything right there. Unbelievable that AJ Styles and Samoa Joe working together. I couldn't imagine Samoa Joe working with anybody. Daniels gets right back up on his feet and then he gets right knocked down just as quick by another stiff kick from Samoa Joe. Did you see that AJ went low? Samoa Joe went high. And Christopher Daniels. Stretch back, trying to break on the elbow of AJ, trying to pop that elbow right out of its socket. And here comes Daniels. Did you see how Samoa Joe able to apply that leg right there in the middle to keep the pressure on AJ, keeping him down and then pulling back on the arm? Nobody can do submissions. Nice kick right there, drop kick by the fallen angel. Wow. Great drop kick, and at the same time, Styles was springing off the ropes. It adds even more impact to the move. Speaking of impact, look at these knife edge chops from Joe. There's, oh my gosh, he just, it looks like kicking a football right there. I mean, you could just see AJ Styles going up. And, oh, you can see Christopher Daniels, though. Good timing on his part. Daniels hooks the leg of Joe, and now Daniels going to slingshot in and catch AJ with a series of fights directed to the jaw. Big forearm shot for Samoa Joe, and now the champ takes over. Oh, oh nice combination right there by the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. This guy has held the belt longer than anybody. You saw right there how Samoa Joe had to break that up. I mean, this what makes this, this match so unique. If somebody beats somebody and you're on the outside looking in, that's your tough luck. First, so 
he in. gotta break it up if he can. can. First pin or first submission wins the match and wins or retains the X Division title. And Samoa Joe has got the champ Daniels in a bad way. Face first into the turnbuckle. Now Joe's got AJ for a knife edge. I mean, it's hard to believe, but when you look at it, Samoa Joe is one of the few people in this world or in this business that has never lost a match to AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels here in TNA. You noticed how Daniels got out of the way when Joe whipped AJ into the corner. Joe with the forearm shot, and now Daniels goes in, he's got him stacked up, but Daniels gets the boot up as Joe charged in. Oh, look at the power right there of Samoa Joe as AJ Styles feeds Christopher Daniels right to the Samoa submission machine, and he just blasts him. Now AJ charges. Oh, wow, he's so fast, he's so agile, he's so quick and so athletic. Snapped off the head scissors takeover. Joe down, AJ slow to get to his feet. Daniels also is still down at this point. Oh. You know, it's a situation if you can find a chance to get a breather, you take one, but you also run the risk of a pin happening while you're doing that. You really just got to have eyes in the back of your head and know what's going on at all times, and right now, AJ Styles, oh man, he just, look at the Samoa Joe, first he took him up and it looked similar to a bear hug. From there, he released him overhead with the suplex and AJ crashed into the corner, turned buckles, and now again, Joe puts him first face first and now here comes the face wash. Oh man, and when he does it, it just seems so much more violent than when anybody else does. Yeah, look at the size of his legs. This backwards moonsault, and he hits it on Samoa Joe. Daniels, the split leg moonsault. You're right, crashing into Joe on the floor. Boy, are they appreciative. Here in the impact zone, listen to him chant TNA. Well, they know they're seeing three of the best wrestlers in the world vying for one of the most important titles. We always talk about the significance of that heavyweight title, but the X Division title.
special. Uh, Daniels to his feet. Oh, oh he, take, he took AJ by the trunks, and he just tossed him right out to the floor. I'll tell you something, the fallen angel's showing why he's the longest reigning X Division champion of all time. Think of how they both ganged up on him at the beginning. And he's still standing in that ring, and twice he sent AJ out. He knows he's keeping. If you've got one, you know where they're at. But you're caught up. You're caught up into the fever. Oh, you want to put the... Listen to these clips. I know it is. And he's got him entangled up there on the road. Look at him. Just go. He's oh. Sandwich Styles and Daniels both in the corner. And look at this. You can see Daniels is still caught. Daniels is in no man's land. He's got the leg up. Look out. Oh, damn. What a brutal kick by Samoa Joe. Think of the power of 200.
is it? He can smell he's it right now. the blood, and he's smelling the X Division title. Styles up, Joe caught him with a right. And another one, but AJ fights back. Yes. Series of forearm shots. Look at this, AJ now, AJ just fired up. Just reaches in, fights something, and you can see Samoa Joe not ready for it. Look at Joe now, he comes back. Open hand pull, went for the wild swing. AJ and Zagiri doesn't connect. No, the power of Samoa Joe again, what he gets with his clutch. Suplex, dropped him on his head. AJ crashed the back of his head, crashing down into the canvas. Muscle buster, if he can take him out of the corner, he's got him up. Oh, here he goes. Daniels just took the title back. Oh, he nails it. Muscle buster. AJ Daniels. Daniels took the title belt off our table. Daniels is, he was trying to make his way to the ring and he just slumped down. And you can see right there, he's got it in his hand. And he went for it, but it, Samoa Joe saw him coming and just power smacked him around. Just as Joe was gonna go for the Kikina clutch, the rear naked choke, Daniels hits the ring with the belt. Now Joe's got the title. He's got the championship belt in his hand. You can see Andy Thomas gonna try to take it away from him. I don't know that he, that's why. To take it home. But look at Dan. Daniels kicks the belt right into the face of Samoa Joe. The championship title belt just driven right into the head of Joe. Courtesy of the Enzigiri kick by Daniels. Joe Dave. Daniels, slow to get back up to his feet. Slow to get to the face, but AJ is too. It's a battle of wills at this point. Who's gonna fight through the pain? Who's gonna fight through to win the X Division title and retain it? You're only gonna get maybe one more opportunity and you better take it because these guys are worn out. And look at this, Daniels sensing it right here and AJ doesn't stop swinging elbows. You can't stop your motion. Strength, trying to find it. Is he going to go for the BME? Here he goes. Best move shot ever, and he hits it. It's going to be over. Oh, oh, no, Joe's in there. Oh, Daniel, oh, oh, then the kick, oh, those, hey. the shotgun effect of those kicks. That third one was blocked by Daniels, and he caught him with the jawbreaker. Tell you what, anything that you can do to stop the Samoan submission machine. Oh,
for Samoa Joe on both Styles and Daniels. And now he's got Daniels up for power bomb. division title joe's got him hooked daniel's close to the ropes he knows he's close to the ropes he can sense him he can see him out of the one eye and he gets a hold of it great job right there by christopher daniels aj on the far side of the ring slowly makes his way up but joe realizes that he has daniels sufficiently weakened and now he's going to try and put him away first the headbutt right hand oh man i'll tell you what when he hits you you can feel it all the way through the building Cut shots by Joe, rocking the phenomenal AJ Styles. Oh, the Pele! Out of nowhere! The Pele! How does he have the strength to do it? Look at the strength! He's got it! He's got him up in a lap! Torture back! Submission! It is unbelievable! He snaps it down! One, two, three! He's got it! No! Unbelievable! How about AJ Styles? 80 pounder up in the rack. Up to the oh, headbutt right there by Christopher Daniels. Oh, unbelievable. AJ, have a, how can you even have the strength at this point? Stack him up, take Styles, slams him across the chest of Joe. Listen to the crowd. Daniels gonna try and suplex Styles. Takes him up, AJ floats over, could go behind. Series of elbows by Daniels. Oh, look at this! He's got his, he rolled him up! Oh, he's going for the clash! Styles close! No, he can't it! Here it is! Can he roll him over and win the title? Here's one, two, no! Joe gets in there and breaks it up! Just at the last split second, Samoa Joe breaks up the pin, and all three are still alive. Oh, look at there, AJ gets thrown outside of the that's, ring. That's the smart strategy. Yeah. Take AJ out to the floor, concentrate your efforts on one man. It's now Joe and Daniels to fight it out. I'll tell you what, just when you thought, oh, look at that, what a move! Daniels goes down, and the momentum takes Joe all the way out to the floor, and he lands on the concrete. Perfect timing by the fallen angel Christopher Daniels. The drop down move, and Joe goes right through the ring ropes and crashes and burns on the arena floor. Daniel shakes his head. Gonna try and pull the cobweb. AJ rolls back in. Joe still out on the arena floor. Daniels. This is his opportunity right here. AJ fights back. Both men, mid-ring exchange. Who's gonna get the better of it? It's just become fist of cups right now. It's a matter of just, let's throw the technique out the window and blow after blow as AJ trying to take it down one after another. Rights and lefts from the phenomenal one. Then the chop to the chest, but the shortcut by Daniels as he caught him, raked the eyes, and then the forearm shot turns it in his favor. I call it survival right there. Is he going to set him up? He's got to get Angel's wings. And here it goes. AJ fights it all. And he sends it back. One, two. AJ's got it. Daniels has got it. AJ's won the title. The winner of the match and new exhibition champion of the world.
premier event of the NWA TNA. It's all about total non-stop action. Tonight, a very special evening. It's an evening that revolves around history and history on so many fronts. Number one, we are going to be respecting history. The legends of the NWA are in attendance. People like Harley Race, Dory Funk Jr., and Ricky Steamboat. And gentlemen, we are also going to be making history this evening. Not only the first ever event, but we are also going to be crowning an NWA World's Heavyweight Champion with the gauntlet for the gold. If you'll give me just a second, I'll run down the rules for the gauntlet for the gold. Please do. We will start off with two competitors in the ring. Every 90 seconds, another wrestler will come from the back. The only way that you can be eliminated is by being thrown over the top rope and down to the arena floor. Once we reach the final two competitors, NWA World Heavyweight Championship rules will apply. It will be one fall to a finish with the winner by either pinfall or submission. And yes, Ed Ferrara, tonight we will make history by crowning a new NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. And don't forget, Mike Tanay, this is my kind of match because it's just like it is in real life. No friends, no allies, every man for himself, only the strong survive. It's Darwinism in action. Don West, it's great to be a part of history. It's great to have you and Ed here out at the table. Tonight, the new NWA World's Heavyweight Champion crowned with the winner of the gauntlet for the gold. I tell you what, though, guys, we got more history. We've got the legends from the NWA. So let's send it out there to Jeremy. And Jeremy, who do we got? Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, as part of tonight's premier broadcast of NWA Total Nonstop Action, it is my pleasure to introduce to you some of the legends of the National Wrestling Alliance. At this time, please allow introduce to you the former eight-time NWA heavyweight champion of the world, handsome Harley Race. The man who defeated Dory Funk Jr. in 1973 to win his first world's title also defeated Terry Funk, Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair, and the Giant Baba among his eight reigns as the NWA world heavyweight champion. Is he wrestling tonight? Who? Harley Race. No, he's not wrestling. He's here because he's a legend in this sport, and he's here because we respect the legends of the NWA and professional wrestling. What do you mean we, King Sadi? NWA tag and world champion, please welcome Dory Funk Jr. From the famous Funk wrestling family, his father Dory Sr., his brother Terry Funk. Dory Funk Jr. won the NWA title in 1969 when he defeated Big Thunder, Gene Kaniski. It was an incredible four-year, three-month run for Dory as champion. The second longest run of any champion next to Luthens. He is the original fabulous one. Please welcome Jackie Fargo. What can you say about Jackie Fargo? The biggest star of Southern wrestling. How about this? He was a first ballot Wrestling Observer Hall of Famer, Ed Ferrara. Wrestling Observer? What's that? Wrestling Observer. It's a fa very famous newsletter in this business. Uh, I'm hearing you, but it's all pops and buzzes. Yeah, I have no right, idea what you're right. talking about. The man that invented the Fargo strut. Jackie Fargo was strutting before Ric Flair and Jeff Jarrett ever stepped into a ring. He's the father of one of the greatest wrestling families of all time, the Fighting Fireman from Marietta, Bullet Bob Armstrong. How about it for the Patriarch of the Armstrong? He is a senior vice president of the National Wrestling Alliance. Please welcome Mr. Bill Behrens. Bill Behrens, one of the executives with the National Wrestling Alliance in attendance tonight. He is a former NWA world champion. 
He is a former six-time NWA World Tag Team Champion with over 6,000 matches spanning a spectacular 20-year career. Please welcome Ricky Steamboat. Listen to the reaction from the Dragon, and he has in his hand the NWA World Heavyweight Championship belt. That's a title that Steamboat won in 1989 when he defeated Ric Flair. But he's not going to leave with it. It must be like old times for Ricky Steamboat to have that belt in his hand again. And isn't it great to see the Dragon bringing the gold to the ring here in the NWA TNA? The fans all around ringside on their feet, bowing and saluting the stars of the past, the legends of the National Wrestling Alliance in the ring. Listen to this crowd. You know, is this the Cauliflower Alley Club? Or Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, wrestling fans across the world that are going to be watching this pay-per-view tonight. That's right. It gives me great pleasure to stand in this squared circle and the many times that I was in this circle. And throughout my wrestling career would someday be a world champion. And it did happen. That memorable night with Ric Flair, the nature boy. That's what we're talking about. Chicago, 1989, and became an NWA world champion. You know something, ladies and gentlemen? This belt, of all the championships I've won and all these gentlemen that stand here with me, this belt means more to me and to them than any championship I've ever held in my life. The NWA Championship. And that's coming from his heart. This belt to us and in this business of wrestling it's like the Stanley Cup is to hockey players. It's like the Super Bowl to football players. The World Series to baseball players. Winnie Wimbledon for the tennis players. This is what this belt means to us in our sport. To be the NWA heavyweight champion is the ultimate goal. Yes. I've got to respect his passion, Mike. It's what you strive for your entire career. You know, ladies and gentlemen, tonight there have been a selected 20 wrestlers through these NWA representatives that are going to be going the gauntlet for the gold, and that's for this belt. I think Harley was just eyeballing the belt. And also through these good friends of mine and some old foes, they have chosen me that when it comes down to the final two wrestlers, that I'm going to be the special referee for this belt. Whoa! Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, unbelievable on. on the stripes of the referee! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, what kind of an interruption is this? Uh, uh, hopefully, we're going to kick things off a little bit here. What do you mean, kick things off? This was a very respectful way. We're kicking things off right now. Look at what's happening. started Mike today the gauntlet for the gold two guys are gonna start and there's gonna be a total walking down this aisle that's the biggest bunch of crap I've ever heard in my life what do you mean explain yourself Ricky Steamboat, did you win the title in a stupid battle royal no, he beat Corey, Ric Flair. did you win your title back in 1902 in a battle royal? It was, Hell no, you didn't. It was 1969. This is the biggest joke of an NWA title that I've ever witnessed. I win my title man to man, Fargo. You butt out of it, you old fart. Kiss my ass. Whoa! I don't want to hear about how, and how you try to. There's the strut that we talked about. We don't do it like the fabulous one does. So don't give me that for all of your mouth running on that stage. I'm going to do you an honor tonight, Mr. Jack. I'm going to put you on the very first match and let you try to beat all 20 of them people. He's going to be the first entrant in the gauntlet for the gold. Right. 
forcing him. Oh, no, no. All right. he, he's an NWA if representative. I'm step in the ring first. That's all right with me because what I'm going to do is I'm going to proceed to kick 19 other asses and I'm going to walk out of here the new NWA World Heavyweight Champion. I've got to respect that from Jeff Jarrett. He's just been given a raw deal and he's going to step up to the plate. You're right about how this NWA title match is played out. It sucks. Hey, man. But you may be whipping 18 other people's asses in that ring, but you ain't whipping number 19. And that's me. Yeah. Oh. It's on like Nick Bone. But he's looking around. Will we hit the music? Hey, look, Whoa! Up look up there! There he is! You talk about a familiar entrance! Scott Hall! It's wrestling's real outlaw, Scott Hall! The man who turned the wrestling business upside down! Memorial Day 1996 with his appearance on Monday Nitro for World Championship Wrestling and Scott Hall! He says, Hey, yo. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's that's happening. Happening. Having flashbacks. There's that dude pick. Jeff Jarrett, Ken Shamrock. I agree with you about this battle royal for the belt. It sucks. But one thing's for sure. Right here in TNA, we are gonna do it tonight. So quit crying about it. <laughs> oh, it's just a fact of life, Jared. And Jared and Shamrock, I don't know if it's 18 or 19 people you gotta beat up. Just focus on trying to beat up one. Scott Hall. Jared. Well, let me tell you something, Hall. You can stick it. Shamrock, you can stick it. All you old farts can. And Fargo, you're going to regret this day as long as you live. What does he mean by that? All I know is he's, he's pretty upset that Jackie Fargo put him in number one in the gauntlet for the gold. Okay, well, let's going to go to the back. What's up, guys? This is Goldberg. I know there's a lot going on out there, but we got the action right back here. You want to talk about uh, TNA? I got your total nonstop action right here, baby. With me is the original midget killer puppet, the Psycho Dwarf, and he's told me that he's got something that he wants to say. That's right. Let's start the show off with midgets. Why? Because midgets are the true stars of this country. The day I came out of my mama, yeah, I said the day I came out of my mama, the nurses and the doctors just stopped and stared. When I was a little child, we were wobbling down the street. Everybody stopped and stared. And now TNA brings me to Huntsville, Alabama, and they got these two midgets up at T.O. in Hollywood. All I want to say is I want to see some TNA midget girl. blood and I just think I can provide that. Horrible contest for NWA total non-stop action is scheduled for one fall with a 20-minute time limit and is a six-man tag team competition. About to make their way to the ring at a combined weight of 641 pounds. The team of AJ Styles, Low Key, and Jerry Lynn. Are you ready to experience exactly what we mean by total nonstop action? It's time to scrap your seat belts on for a tag team matchup featuring six incredible athletes from our X Division. When we talk about the X Division, Ed Ferrara, we're not talking about...
talking about a specific weight situation. Wait, We're talking wait. about extreme athletes. And let's look backstage at the legends surrounding the monitor. Look how proud they are to see these kind of athletes in the ring. That's what they want to see. They want to see pure athleticism. And their opponents. At a combined weight of 649 pounds from Memphis, Tennessee, the Flying Elvises. Now, this is what I like to see. This is my kind of sports entertainment, total nonstop action. We see Jorge Estrada. We see Sonny Siaki in the middle of the screen. Jorge Estrada on the right and Jimmy Yang on the left. The Flying Elvises. Well, as we take a look backstage, the legends looking on, and judging by the reaction of Jackie Fargo, Dory Funk, and crowd, it looks like they're a little bit surprised to see the Flying Elvis is coming out here. Maybe shock would be a better word. Of course, because this isn't what they see as what the NWA should be all about. But this is NWA TNA. This is total nonstop action, and that's what the Flying Elvises are all about. And that's what this match is going to be. You know, in the past, gentlemen, we had a cruiserweight division or a light heavyweight division where there was a set weight limit, whether it be 225, 230 pounds. Not in the NWA TNA. We're not going to narrow it down to just a particular size of a wrestler. It's all about style and it's all about the X division, meaning extreme, total nonstop action, high flying, incredible athletes like these six men. And that's exactly what we're going to see in this match. And I can't wait for this to get underway. Well, we see the offer of the handshake from Low Key Styles and Lynn to the Flying Elvises, and oh, they're not going to accept it. Oh, oh, man! Back even before the opening bell and the Elvises attack. You know, guys, I always it heard. Started. I always heard that Elvis was a huge wrestling fan, legitimately in Memphis. Well, Elvis was huge in Memphis. Did you see that move AJ Styles just did? Drop kicks and a hook and Rana from AJ Styles. Action all over. Oh. He just hit the cross body block. Siaki and Estrada are out back here. Bodies all over the ring. In the ring. Jimmy Yang in the Elvis outfit. AJ Styles. Oh, power slammed him. This is unbelievable. Next week on this program, we will have a round robin tournament where we will crown the first oh. ever ex champion. Styles and and a two count. They are partners tonight. They will be rivals next week. Styles caught him with a flying forearm smash and tags into Jerry Lynn. We will have AJ Styles, low key, and this man in the ring, Jerry Lynn, competing next week along with Psychosis when we crown our first ever X Division champion. Trying to make you wonder, these guys are on the same team this week. Are, are, are they looking at each other with suspicious eyes Off at the all? the world backbreaker, a two count for Jerry Lynn on Jimmy Yang. Next week, they're going to be going at it tooth and nail for that X Division championship. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm curious how they're going to be working out tonight, but they seem to have their stuff together. Jerry Lynn looks like a tornado, DD. Jimmy Yang immediately up and caught him with a drop kick. This X Division is going to be something else, guys. Jimmy Yang, formerly of the Young Dragons in WC. Boots all off the chest. Flying shoulder block in the corner. The tag is into Sonny Siaki, a graduate of East Carolina University. Played inside linebacker for the East Carolina. Oh, oh. Lynn telegraphed the back body drop. Got, oh. Attempt at a somersault into a leg drop. Missed. Jerry Lynn, former ECW heavyweight champion, former WWF light heavyweight champion. He's the veteran of these six. Oh, tilt the world flying head scissors takeover by Lynn. This is what I call total nonstop action. Oh, bulldog in mid move by Lynn. Drove him face first, hooks the leg, gets two and only two. You know, you just watch in this match, it makes it almost impossible to handicap who's going to come out on top of the X Division. Round out in tournament next week. Tag is into low key. Where do you see the blend of styles from this youngster from Brooklyn, New York? And he was just stopped with a shot by Siak. Oh, off the ropes into a spinning neck breaker. Hover. Two didn't hook the leg, only gets a two count. Mike, have you ever seen such six equal competitors like this? Well, this is what the X Division is all about the incredible competition, the competitiveness, as well as the NWA TNA. It's total nonstop. We talked about a large background and he caught him with a kick, attempted another kick, missed, and Siaki stopped him. I don't think Elvis.
Rose ever look that jacked? <laughs> oh, 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 version of the backbreaker oh, by Siaki. There is no way he's going to make it. Oh, up before the two. Give me a one. Siaki going to turn it over to his tag team partner, Jorge Estrada, but first attempting to oh, oh, some more punishment on Luki, which split leg moonsault. Estrada for a two count and only two. Jorge Estrada, trained by the American Dream Dusty Rhodes, a former NWA World Heavyweight Champion, wrestling for Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling, and fires a chop into the corner on Loki, who reverses Estrada. Oh, look the float over. Great action! This is not what I call loving me tender, I'll tell you that, guys. No, they're all shook up. <laughs> oh, Estrada oh, just dropped Loki on the back of his head. This is what we promised you when we talk about NWA TNA, the total non-stop action of this organization. Oh. Drop kick directed right at the knee, and it took the pins out from Estrada. Ooh. Here comes another one of those. Oh. Kicks and he just lines him up. When you look at Loki, you see he's not the biggest individual. Oh, oh, here. I'm not going to see suplexes from him. He relies on those brutal mixed martial arts kicks. I'm surprised Estrada's head is still attached to his shoulder no. after that shot. i got to agree with you, Ed. That was phenomenal. Almost took it off. I'm surprised he did. Styles in the ring with Jimmy Yang. Yang sends Styles up. Oh. Flying forearm smash. An inverted DDT the way he dropped him down out of the waist lock. Is he gonna German him? He went for the German suplex, but he stopped and stood on his feet. Oh, boring leg attack that time. Another hit in the third row. Low key in to break up the pin. I think I'll be disqualified for that. Low key able to hook that top rope, avoid the contact. There's that. Oh, my goodness. Position. The cartwheel kick that Loki calls the title crush, like a tidal wave. Oh, oh, sit down. Oh, 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 God. One, Jerry that. Lynn in to break up the pin. The teamwork is unbelievable. Everybody watching their teammates back. Jerry Lynn motions for the cradle pilot driver. He's got him up. Oh, 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 oh. He stood him on his head. Wait a minute. Sonny Siaki's out there. Now AJ Styles caught him with a great kick to the side of the head. The goal behind now Jimmy Yang. Oh, able to back Here him up in the Loki. corner. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. A kick by Loki. He caught his own man. He got his own partner. Oh, no. Missile drop kick off the top rope. Oh, got it. Put it. Jimmy Yang motions to the crowd. This is it. Twisting move that he calls game time. Oh. Absolutely amazing. Speaking of absolutely amazing, check this out. Now that's the way that you kick off the NWA TNA organization, ladies and gentlemen. What a spectacular matchup as the Flying Elvises defeat AJ Styles, Low Key, and Jerry Lynn. Jimmy Yang hitting the Yang tie move off the top rope, scoring the pinfall on AJ Styles. Really? When I asked him about oh. it, took him over. 
Harper in the corner. He said, my name is not about geography, it's about style. Tio, the world's smallest extreme athlete, now on the attack, covering up the oh. waist and the knife edge trap in the corner. Of course, Tio came to prominence on some recent WWA paid reviews in Las Vegas and Melbourne, splitting a couple of matches with that cycle. for a diving headbutt. Uh, that was that was uh, one of the most dangerous moves I've seen all night. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, a puppet's going to handle one of these guys. He better be watching. They're unbelievable. Check this corner mount. Driving down right hands, and the fans count right along. Whoa! <laughs> you know, T.O. lists Rey Mysterio Jr. as one of his influences. And it's interesting that Rey Jr., when he first started wrestling as a teenager, the Mexico because he was so, so small wanted him to wrestle as a midget and then what happened obviously he didn't and became a great star in this business that could be debated by who no not about the great star that he went on to wrestle as a midget he didn't I never said that quick roll up now attempt and a two count oh that was a, a close line that caught him in the chest you know, Hollywood. He's wrestling. going all the way up to the bottom rope. Okay, second. Yeah. Top rope. Yes. Oh! One of his finishing moves is a big splash off the top. And yeah. oh, gets one, oh, two, oh. and oh my! He kicked out. He traveled twice the distance anybody we've ever seen just now jump off the rope. He kicked out at two. You know, Tio, from what I understand, is quite the ladies' man, or at least he fancies himself as quite the ladies' he man. He claims he is. Well, hey, you know what? He's the right height. Hollywood on the attack, now reversed. Oh, caught him with a right hand, did Tio. Series of right hands to the jaw, rocked Hollywood. Hey, this is just not something you're going to see every day. No. Side Russian leg sweep. Not unless you're in the kindergarten wing at a juvenile detention center. <laughs> the back of Hollywood's head making contact with the mat. Now, talk about high-risk moves, we call him the world's smallest. Extreme athlete, T.E.O. Oh! Twisting move, the swanton off the top. Look at the leg. There's the three. That is unbelievable. TNA. As the TNA girls dance, we want to remind you about NWATNA.com. Go to the internet, check out NWATNA.com for all the latest information on upcoming events, all the latest backgrounds on the wrestlers. You'll see letters from the wrestlers to the fans. Check out NWATNA.com. What a way to kick off the premier event for the NWA TNA organization. It's time to send it back up to the ring. And my broadcast colleagues, let's go to Ed Ferrara and Don West in the ring. You know, when we heard about something that was coming up next week, we couldn't believe it, and we wanted to give you a sneak peek. And I'm talking about TNA, I'm talking about the Lingerie Battle Royal. I knew you'd like that. So when we heard about this, we begged, no wait, Don begged, I demanded that we give you a sneak peek tonight and start bringing out so you could get a glimpse of the eyeful you're going to get next week. So let's, without any further ado, Don, start bringing them down. The only Miss Joni! You knew her in the ECW at Daphne! I mean, the WCW at Daphne tonight! We bring you our own Shannon! All my personal favorites from the Hottest Kids, the most talented wrestlers on the Indy circuit, Alexis Love. 
in this ring. Because none of them can compare to me. Let's face it, ladies. I'm the queen of extreme. I mean, really, what has any of you ever done for the wrestling business? I'll tell you. Number one, who deemed you queen of extreme? I see there's many other ladies in this ring. And you want to know what? This is a new company. I don't hear extreme in the title. Unless you're ashamed that you single-handedly bankrupted another company. Mortimer Plumtree, story of a life filled with torment, torment leading to pain, pain leading to will, will leading to power, power allowing me to bring my tag team, who in our formative years were my tormentors, now my servants. They do what I tell them to do when I tell them to do it. They wear what I tell them to, without questioning, for they know that they owe me their freedom, their livelihoods, their very lives. <laughs> they don't speak unless I allow them to. They listen only to me, and now I call upon them to once and for all make their presence known in this arena rewriting the history books of this sport, I give to you my tag team, <laughs> the Johnson. All right. First we had the lingerie set up. Now we got a couple of Johnsons. Now, who are the Johnsons? Think of something. I don't know, but there can be no denying that Mortimer Plumtree has been the center of internet controversy since the announcement that the Harvard grad, as you see him make his way down to the ring, was bringing the Brothers Johnson to the NWA TNA. Uh, you had a lot of people on the internet that were casting aspersions, casting judgment on a tag team that they had never seen. Now, we are all going to see the Johnsons together, we're all going to see them in action, and we're going to see what they can do. Then we can cast our aspersions. Let's go back to JB in the ring for the introduction of the Johnsons' opponents. And their opponents! Tag team. 
Tennessee Cowboy from Franklin, Tennessee, just outside Nashville. This is very natural for him. So he goes around town wearing a duster and no pants on, is what you're saying to me. I'm not saying that in the least. Okay, he's got a gun. Whoa! Hey, Ed, you got it, man. You and I saw him in one of the most incredible matches we ever saw a few weeks ago. He can do it, James Storm, and you got to admit it. Hey, I'm not, I'm not saying that he can't. I'm just saying I'm looking forward to seeing what the Johnsons can do out here tonight. Looks like they can do some damage. They're huge. They are quite an impressive looking tag team with the full body suits and masks managed by Mortimer Plumtree trying to make his name in the NWA TNA with his tag team of the Johnson. I'm not exactly sure that I understand everything that he was talking about during that interview with Goldilocks, but it almost seems as if he feels that he owns this team. For whatever reason, that's what the man said. He said he owns them and they do whatever he says. They wear whatever he says, and they'll destroy whoever he tells them to. So whatever hold he has over them, it's strong enough to get him to wear these outfits. Double underhook out of the corner, and it attempted a pinfall by, I'm not sure whether this is Richard or Rod, obviously, but the snap suplex on Psychosis. Cover, and another two count, and only two. That's a very interesting point you bring up, Mike, today, and that's something that I think that Mortimer Plumtree was probably his brainchild. You have them looking exactly identical. You have them dressed exactly the same. There's not one difference between the two of them. You'll never know who you're in there with. You're right. In terms of oh, strategies, we see the Enzigiri kick by Psychosis in terms of strategy, in, in terms of maybe even being able to swerve the referee. It's probably the perfect situation for him as James Storm off the top rope hits the missile drop kick. And that's what just happened. If you notice, the, the, the one Johnson that got the missile drop kick, he rolled out. Now Johnson number two, he just rolled out. And what do we have here? That is Alicia. That is stunning. You know, we've seen her in the past in WCW. I believe she was with the Maestro, is that correct? Absolutely. We've seen her in WCW and WWF. And uh, well, what is she doing out here? What does she have to do with Plumtree, the Johnsons? I have no idea. Storm, she's standing there with her hands on hips, just taking it all in, observing the scene. I'm just begging for the cameraman to go a little lower on her. I'll tell you what, though, while that was Thank going you. on. Thank you. just got your wish. While that was going on, Mortimer was giving it to the Johnsons. I mean, I don't know what he was saying, but he was giving it to him. He was what? He was just giving it to him, buddy. Uh -huh. That's what I thought you said. That's a major softball there, Doug. <laughs> you know, the one thing is these Johnsons, you just look at them. They're both built like fire hydrants. They are just, they're rock solid. There you go. Oh, he's going to spin. Oh, look at that. He just skinned the cat. Oh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat back into the ring. Series of right hands in the side of the head rocked him. Storm able to come off, hot with a waistline takedown. Variation of the Bulldog that time by Storm, and he turns it over to Psychosis. Nice basement dropkick, caught him right in the face, right in the mask. You know, Psychosis wrestles in Mexico as Nicho El Millonario. And what does that mean? That's Nicho the Millionaire, and you call him Nicho because his real name is Dionisio Castellanos. I'll just say Psychosis, it's fewer syllables that way. Into the ropes goes Psychosis. Oh, drop him face first. Plumtree directing traffic from ringside. Psychosis in trouble in the corner. You know, I'm not going to say he's getting pounded by a Johnson. No, 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 I'm not going to. Released overhead suplex and tag into the other Johnson. There you go. Will you just look at the legs on these Johnsons? Look at the legs on these Johnsons and then think about the grammatical construction of that sentence. Plumtree appears to be very happy with his charges, plotting strategy, as well as cheering them on as we see Alicia still at the bottom of the ramp. She's just, she's looking at something. She's Great reversal of a power bomb by Psychosis, driving his opponent head first into you know the what? canvas. Wait a minute, I think the referee just gave her a signal or something. He just, he was looking at her. James Storm in. James against both Johnsons and doing quite well on loading with right hands. Oh man, now that's incredible. Pearl Panrana, super kick by Storm. Making a motion for Psychosis to join it. I'm telling you, I think 
Tony Storm could become a member of the X Division. There's many things he can do. That's unbelievable. Johnson's able to reverse it, turn it over. Uh oh. Double team. Oh! Whoa, simultaneously. Storm's in there with two Johnsons again. Uh oh. Out of the fireman's carry, Storm able to reverse it. Roll up out of the corner. Barely got a one and a half count. Storm up to that second rope. Oh, just tossed away. Looked like he went for a tornado DDP, but it was. Mortimer Plumtree just distracted James Storm, allowing him to fall into this into this finishing move here. And let's see if he gets it. And he did. He got him. You know, I wish I could have seen a little bit more power from the Johnsons in there. Plumtree sending a referee away. He wants the pleasure of raising the hand of his tag team. The Harvard graduate, Mortimer Plumtree, brings his Johnsons to the NWA TNA. Wait, what is this? What? Re referee Switch Johnson. Why, what is this? I thought he was looking at the ref in there. He, he, he refuses to make eye contact with her. What is this? He's giving her money. Was that money? He gave her money. Was that money just changing? I want to know why. He paid what he got for it. Let's send it back to Goldilocks. Hey, Goldie, what are you doing, girl? Oh. Hey, hey, you, you want to make somebody? Uh, hey. Sure. Oh, you know, yeah. I got to make love. I'm pass on that. And, uh, I actually got it. Yeah. That's my cousin, too. He's one of, okay, well, I'm going to go tape something no, right now, we so. On TV. We're on, we're on TV, bro. You want me to real quick? You're, you're going that way. You want me to sure, call? absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, how, Isn't that hi, uh, which one is she? Well, you got, well, she's Bo's girlfriend, and oh. I told you she's my girlfriend, and okay. it's cut, yeah, right. there you go. Ooh, oh, whoa, hey, hey, guys, 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 oh! I'm, I'm sorry, no, there's no beer drinking here in the locker room. I need you, need you to put oh. those things down. We don't want any intoxicated wrestlers out in our ring, so just put those things down right now. Thank you. Okay. Well, Gee, there are sure some wussies here in the NWA. Hey, Bo. Who ever heard of getting drunk on beer? <laughs> yeah, it's really nice meeting you. Where you going? All of Where you, you, really. I, uh, I'm going to go do something over here. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the 1993 Bush Series Rookie of the Year, Hermie Sadler, and the current NASCAR Winston Cup points leader, Sterling. Sterling Marlin is the equivalent of the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion in the world of NASCAR because he's the Winston Cup points leader at this point in the NASCAR season. You know what? It's, I think this year he might be getting his just dues. He has sure stood the test of time in there, and he has just having an incredible year leading the entire series. And, of course, Hermie Sadler, part of the famous Sadler Racing Family. Great reaction here in Huntsville, Alabama for these stars of NASCAR. We know Sterling's from close by here in Columbia. I didn't know. Yeah, just about an hour away. So this is almost home. Sterling, right now you're standing on top of the mountain in the Winston Cup Point Series. You're the leader. You got a race this Sunday. Yeah, we're looking forward to going out to uh, Sonoma, California. Went to uh, Virginia a couple weeks ago, had a good road course test, so uh, we're anxious to get out, out to California. Absolutely, and certainly standing on top of the mountain right now as the Winston Cup points leader, a lot of pressure. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, we've got about a 100-point lead, and uh, hopefully we'll just keep racing hard and uh, try to get us more wins, more top fives, and uh, try to win this championship. All right. Hermie set. What? No, what is Stop it? everything! Interruption from that's K Crush. You know what? I am sick to my stomach. I'm sick and tired of hearing about some damn race car driver. Thank you, K Crush. This is professional wrestling. You guys call yourself athletes? You got no damn business inside a professional wrestling ring. Off the side hurts. Jeremy's apologizing to Sterling. You see that? Look at that. He's a suck-up. I am an athlete. 
athlete. You're looking at an athlete. My kind are athletes. Your kind drive a car around a circle in a left motion continuously. Whoa. My kind, we throw basketballs. We throw touchdowns. We run for touchdowns. We do arm drops. We do leg drops. My grandmama can't do what you do. Why don't you shut up just one second? Oh, oh. Herbie Sadler, right in King Crush's face. I want to hear. How do you expect anybody here to take you serious looking like you look? You look like a real athlete. Amen. Woo. Coming from an NASCAR driver, I love it. I love it. Apparently, you don't know just who we are. But there are lots of NASCAR fans in Huntsville, You know what? Damn you and damn Alabama. I'm going to introduce you to professional wrestling. All right, now it's getting good. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Kate Crush has got Herbie Sutton. Who's that? Brian Lawler. Brian Lawler. Christopher from the back. Brian Lawler. The son of Jerry Lawler has come from the back. What is K-Crush going to do to follow this up? Yo, 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 yo! K-Crush! Listen up, you motherfucker! Whoa! Mofo! You want to come down here and pick on these guys? Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't your kind come down and pick on my kind? Watch you in the ring next week, and I'll have my friends Sterling, give me some dough, and Herman, give me some dough, right in my corner. You got it, he said. K Crush has accepted it. Stop. K Crush and no Brian Christopher you. next week. Yeah, with Herman Sadler and Sterling Marlin. And oh, Ryan oh, I got some money to the house. Let's bring it up. Remember, he was Grandmaster Sexay in the WWF here in the NWA TNA. Brian Christopher making a name for himself. Well, I guess that makes it official as we saw K Crush accept the challenge. And we will have that matchup next week here on the NWA I can't, TNA. I can't wait to see. Whoa, whoa, what wait a minute. That's Jeff Jarrett and Jackie Fargo. Let's listen to I him. want you to remember who did this to you. I want you to remember Fargo, your next TWA champion. You saw that earlier before, but Jeff Jarrett was choking out Jackie Fargo. And their opponents being led to the ring by Fluff. At a combined weight of 462 pounds, they are Stan and Bo the Duffs. Yeah, and don't forget their cousin and girlfriend, Fluff. Of course, Fluff Duff. Fluff Duff, stand up, Bo Duff. She's 
their cousin, she's each of their girlfriend. This is an interesting family tree. It must look like a stump. You might say it's all in the family with the ducks. That's a good looking hunk of Americana right there. That was stand up. That, of course, is fluffed up. Yeah, fluffed up and bowed up. Who, uh, yeah, appears that he's got a, a maybe a self inflicted wedgie. It's a good thing reading is not a requirement to be, to, you know, to be a part of this. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be an IQ test for the Ducks. Double team on Joey Matthews. Oh. Elevation and drive Matthews face first to the mat with the size and power of this tag team of the Ducks. Look at the tobacco chew dribbling down Stan's chin the next time you get a good shot of his face. And how about that Jeff Jarrett attacking 71 year old Jackie Barber? Sensational dual drop kick that time by Christian York. You know, losing a lot of respect for him over here. Just, just to see that. I'm sorry. I mean, he's got a reason to be upset, and he's showing it in every way that he knows how. I mean, I'm... Yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. Great action. Nice double-team suplex, and off that suplex, attempted a pin. Referee Armstrong down for a two-count. York and Matthews are going to have to really be on their game. They're giving up a lot in this contest when it comes to size and strength. Oh, but they're not giving up anything when it comes to intelligence, I don't think. But I, I, when, it, when it comes to getting the job done, I'll go with the big raw bone country boys anytime. They don't have anything to give when it comes to intelligence. Yeah, this is the classic confrontation. Oh. Size, strength, and power as we see. Big boat up in the ring against Joey Matthews against the speed, the agility of York and Matthews. See, that's the that's big man just won't go. Oh, man. That size 15 directed to the face. Oh. That wasn't pretty, but that was effective. Pounds airborne. And amazingly, Matthews is able to avoid the pin and kick out. Tag is in to stand up. You know, if the Ducks do have any intelligence, they'll continue to keep the ring cut off on Joey Matthews. Keep him from his corner. Yep. Oh, that movie calls the Virginia necktie. And Matthews connected with it on stand-up. Imperative for him to get to the corner. Make the tag to his partner, Christian York, and both teams make legal tags. Christian York springs on the rope, baby! What a lariat took his head off of that clothesline. Doubly impressive when you take into account how big Bo is. Now Bo Duff shoots him off, attempted a sunset flip. No! Oh! Sit down, splash, caught nothing but canvas. Oh! Corner mount, attempted a series of right hands from York. Blocked by standing up. Oh, I'll tell you what, he didn't block that jumping back elbow, did he? Oh! Fireman's carry, drops him down to the mat. The Centon splash, he calls the cutting edge in. Only a two count before Stand Up is able to break it up. Break it up. <laughs> Maybe another cousin that they have. I'd be interested to see if there's any other. Oh, baby, oh. Out here. Matthews and Stand Up crumble over the top rope. Meanwhile, in the ring, attempted a tornado DDT. Penny connected. Christian York caught him with that great move. Can he finish him off now? Matthews holding off Stand Up outside. Christian York, high risk move on the way. He's going up. Off the Getting top. Getting his bearings. Wait a minute. There's Fluff. Oh, fluffed up. He's grabbed him. Cousin fluffed up. Interfering from outside. The referee didn't see it. Referee Armstrong was watching outside on the floor. Boat up the cover. Hook. Oh, and he got the pin. And the Ducks score the win. A handful of tights and a little fluffed up action. Christian York found himself to be crotch done. Bo sure looks proud of himself, doesn't he? Is that what it is? It makes me want to, it 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 me want to throw up. <laughs> throw it up? Maybe he'll be coming out on a later show. So 
sucker punch came flying in from somewhere in the back. As soon as we could see clearly through our big black eye, man, we lit up your world like the 4th of July. Hey, Uncle Sam, put your name at the top of his list. And a statue of liberty started shaking. Yes, 
first singles gold of the NWA. Referee Armstrong sending Bagwell to the back. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the next entrant in the 20-man gauntlet for the gold. Who's it going to be? Lash LaRue! 1998 WCW Rookie of the Year, former WCW Tag Champ, the Raging Cajun. Remember him from the Misfits in action? Here comes Lash LaRue. I'll tell you what, Jerry looks ready tonight, buddy. I mean, he has got so much... But he oh! Now that went, that was through the ropes to the floor, not over the top. As a result, the Rue is still in the contest. And so Jared, because he went out uh, through the ropes. Back first into the safety rail. That steel rail! Oh, and he just dropped in throat first right across the steel. Very smart of Jared to bring LaRue back in the ring so he can throw him back out again. Makes a lot of sense. You can't win it from the arena floor. Yeah. The move that he calls the stone throwing face first to the canvas. Here we go. Going to try and send him airborne, and he's gone. He's gone. Oh. I mean, so eliminated. That's two opponents for Jared. Two up and two down. Somebody pissed in Jeff's Cheerios this morning, buddy. He is just taking them on. I think it was Jackie Fargo that did it, Don. And he's out here to prove Last something to everybody. Has been eliminated. The next contestant in the gauntlet for the gold. Screaming Norman Smiley. The former WCW hardcore champion. The master of the big wiggle. Born in England. An international star throughout the world and in Mexico. And Jarrett again. Great strategy on the part of Jarrett. He's ready. He's waiting for the opposition as soon as they come into the ring. Look at this. There's the wiggle. Not, and he's paid for. not too smart, Norman. Not too smart. Jared is all about business tonight, and everybody who's coming down here should realize that. You can see it in the eyes of Jeff Jarrett. The NWA World's Heavyweight Championship is at stake here. Jarrett, four-time WCW Heavyweight Champ, and the winner is a big slam by Norman. Jarrett, the four-time WCW World's Champ, wants to add the NWA gold to his resume. And you know, I've known Jeff for a number of years never seen a look in his eye like I've seen tonight. There's an intensity there that hasn't been there before. Yeah, intensity, maybe deranged is a better word for it. Whatever. If it works, it works. And I haven't seen Jeff Whoa, this much out. Out. Oh, oh, God. Norman is eliminated. And Ladies and gentlemen, screaming Norman Smiley has been eliminated. Jeff Jarrett is determined to go all the way in this one. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't go through all 19 at this pace. Well, Jackie Fargo, the NWA rep, attempting to stack the odds against Jeff Jarrett by ruling that he had to be the number one entrant into this gauntlet for the gold. And so far, the Jarrett has been up to the cat for the gold. Apollo! Six times IWA heavyweight, four times IWA tag team champion in Puerto Rico. Six foot four, 265 pounds. Apollo comes to the ring, and again, Jarrett is ready for it. Oh, Mike, what is the IWA? IWA is the International Wrestling Alliance, one of the two major promotions in Puerto Rico. Man, he's impressive, buddy. He is impressive looking. Look at this guy. Quickly up to oh. his feet. Punting with the right hand. Former professional basketball player in Puerto Rico. Born in New York. Moved to Puerto Rico at the age of six years old. And Apollo is in control. Jarrett in trouble for one of the first times in this matchup. Apollo oh, yes. is reversal into a neck breaker. Now, is Apollo going to break Jeff Jarrett's streak? That's what I want to know. Did you see no medicine? Apollo. Oh. Oh. Jarrett is up. No, no, no. Caught the, caught the middle ring rope and able to stop on the ring apron. He's got to go to the floor, correct? Absolutely. His foot has to make contact with the arena floor to be eliminated. Man, that was close. Apollo going to send him over again. This time, oh no, through, the, through, the, through the middle rope, so even if Jared hit the floor, it would not be an elimination. You got to bring him back in there, Apollo. Apollo just recently moved to the United States, now living in Orlando, Florida, and you know that he would like nothing better than in his debut here for the NWA TNA to win the big championship belt, the gold of the National Wrestling Alliance, the world's heavyweight title that's at stake. The countdown in the corner of the screen is oh, and they're going to look for the goal. Eliminated! Oh, K-Crush, formerly K-Quick in the WWF, just hit the ring. Well, 
Oh, he saved Jeff Jarrett. He Jeff. sure did. I don't know what the story is there behind any kind of alliance, but he definitely saved Jarrett, who looked to be on the verge of elimination. He crushed. Oh, now that's impressive. Now look at Jeff Jarrett. What very smart. Taking a little breather here. Let K Crush do the leg work for him. Great axe kick delivered by K Crush. Jarrett getting that very, very necessary breather in the corner. Well, he's been going non-stop. He was entrant one. He's been he's been in so the whole time. And of course, K Crush set to face Brian Christopher next week on this program. As a result of the confrontation that they had earlier tonight, Jarrett now from behind. Jarrett on the attack against Apollo. How do you like me <laughs> Oh, you can just hear those there. defeated right hands being driven into the side of the head of Apollo by Jarrett. Welcome to America, Apollo. It almost looks like we've got a little bit of an alliance here between Kate Crush and Jarrett. Like. It looks like a handicap match, Ed. Well, you know what? I think Kate Crush and Jarrett are going after Apollo. If they eliminate him, then they'll turn, then they'll turn and deal with each other. The countdown in the corner of the screen approaches 10 seconds. Who will the next competitor be? Who will the next wrestler be eliminated? <laughs> got to get him out over that top rope, guys. Mitchell's Disciples of the New Church. Slash, who has competed in the WWF and Ohio Valley Wrestling, hits the ring. Apollo able to duck the clothesline, and Apollo connects with a couple of good right hands before Slash sends him off. Did you get a good look at Slash's eye? Oh, man, what's the deal with that? Hey, did you get a good look at Mr. Mitchell? I don't know what church he has, but it's not when you go to on Easter Sunday. I can tell you that. Well, oh, man. Now, we know Mr. Mitchell from appearances in WCW and ECW. Very well known. For his bizarre behavior and let's just say his interest in the occult. Oh, now, buddy, that hurts. Dropped him on his head with the DDT. Oh, that was cool. Apollo's the only one on his feet right now. Four competitors. Start chucking people, Apollo. If you have any brains at all, if you want to win the championship, start chucking them. You know, maybe nobody explained it to him in English. Maybe he didn't understand. Maybe it's a conspiracy. No, no, no. He speaks English. He was born in New York, then moved to Puerto Rico. Here we go. Airborne goes slash. Oh, Jarrett from behind. What, what is the point there? Why wouldn't Jeff Jarrett want to have him eliminated? Maybe it's ego. Maybe Jeff Jarrett wants to be the one who oh, eliminates man. Apollo. Vicious elbow drop by Slash. Repeated elbow drop directed to the chest of Apollo. Now it's it it from Jarrett. City, six foot four, 280 pounds, former USWA heavyweight champion, bodybuilding champion for many years. This is where the action really gets wild with all of these competitors in the ring with so much at stake. He's got a little bit of a familiar look. I can't place him. Well, Del Rios, I just explained his background. Yeah, I guess so. That must be it. I'm telling you, there's an alliance going on in there. Too many people are working together. Look, don't, don't let that fool you, Don. There might be alliances now, but that's going to go all out the window once it comes down to the last few. Kind of like the Survivor Series. Oh, oh slash fighting one. Completely legal. Out of Del Rio. Completely legal. It's Del Rios up in the corner. Repeated boots to the midsection and then a vicious hey, right hand of the Jared, jaw. Jared, look over there. He's speaking to Apollo. Apollo on the verge of elimination. And K Crush assisting Jarrett now. Apollo Did perched up on that top corner. Oh, man. Oh, what a release suplex by Del Rio. Slash now. Stay away from the action, which is pretty smart of him. Great strategy. Okay. Stay under the radar. Stay in the match. That's what it's all about. Who's next? The next entry in the gauntlet for the gold. Justice. Six foot five, 350 pounds, nine year pro from Cincinnati, Ohio, and a former NWA Wild Side champion. Justice comes out with a size of his knee. He's going to be tough to eliminate. He is huge. How do you throw him over the top row? Well, Very careful. Yeah, and probably with an assist from someone else. This has gotten very interesting.
interesting. We haven't seen anybody eliminated in a while. I have a feeling we're going to start seeing bodies pretty soon. Oh, what a big oh. hoop on Jarrett. He deserved that one. Justice could be a huge factor in this. Not only will he be difficult to throw over the top rope, he's going to start chucking some bodies himself. He's that big, he's that strong, he's that powerful. Justice able to catch Del Rios with a glancing blow, and then Sonic slams him to the mat. Oh. Scrape him up. Again, remember to eliminate. And Apollo is on the ring apron. He's not yet eliminated. But now Slash and Jarrett double team. Now, Mike. I completely lost count. 
Well, as far as bodies down on the mat, four or five because of the attack from the dog faced gremlin. Oh, look at Steiner, man. Somebody's going to start a there he goes. Yes. Oh, top and down to the floor. He's gone. Now, Big Justice sends the dog faced gremlin Steiner into the ropes and. Oh! seconds by Rick Steiner. And look, Steiner turns his attention to Jeff Jarrett. Is Jarrett the next to go? Oh! Back body drop! Apollo's almost got cake crushed out of the ring. Jonan, Salrios, all sizing each other up, sizing up what else is in the ring with them. Deciding whether they want to get involved or not. Entrant in the gauntlet for the gold, Malice! Another member of Minister James Mitchell's Disciples of the New Church. Look at this monster! Oh, oh, six man. foot nine, 300 pounds, and he just came out and choke slammed Del Rios! I don't know what the weight capacity of the ring is, oh. but we're testing it. Down goes Bruce! Look at the size of this monster, Malice! Oh, man, look at this! You gotta think. He's got Conan up. Conan choke slam down. It is just nothing but bodies in the ring, thanks to Malice and his choke slams. And here comes another one. Oh! Oh my God! Now use your head, Malice. Start chucking him. There you go, baby. Bruce has been eliminated. Bruce from the Rainbow Express is out. And Kate 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 He's got Conan. No. Conan up. Did he stay? Conan oh, 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 oh. eliminated. Malice has been the single most influential factor in this match thus far. Shy of Jeff Jarrett lasting from, from entrant number one. Oh, straight oh, the close oh, line. And Malice God. dropped out of his house. There's no way he is alive. Rick Steiner has been eliminated. Holy cow. The countdown clock in the corner. Another competitor coming oh, out. Oh, he is. Give it to the ref. Malice, Jeff Jarrett, and Apollo in the ring. Right. 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 in the gauntlet for the gold. Scott Hall. Whoa. Oh, no. Apollo back They completely in. missed it. Scott Hall, former WCW US champ, world TV champ, five-time world tag team champ, and, of course, four times the WWF Intercontinental Champion, but never the world's heavyweight champ. The outlaw, the true outlaw, as he calls himself a professional wrestling, left the WWF recently by mutual agreement, and Scott Hall comes in and is on the verge of eliminating some competition in his cleaning house. You know, Apollo was personal on that top rope. I can't say that that's the smartest thing I'd ever seen. Maybe he thought better of it and came back into the ring. Oh, oh sensational oh, super kick by Apollo. Stop Malice in his tracks. This guy's impressive, man. Jarrett to the ropes. Paul able to catch him. Is it time for the edge? Malice is on the score. Get him up. Jarrett up. Oh, yeah. Oh, There's only one oh, on that straight oh, 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 great action. Malice going after Apollo, but Paul's right on Malice. Smart move by Hall. The smartest thing would be to eliminate Jarrett. Don't forget, you don't win this by hurting people. You win it by tossing them over the top rope. Jeff Jarrett has been amazing. 14 competitors have come out. Jarrett, the first man into this gauntlet for the gold as the result of Fargo's ruling. And he's still in there. Whoa. It's to Toby Keith. Toby Keith has come to ringside. Is he an entrant? He's coming. No, he, nobody's making himself an entrant. What is he doing in there? He has no business He's in there. He's right in the face of Jeff Jarrett. What is this? Is Toby Keith? Has Jarrett up? No! What is this? Yeah! Another one that suplexed Toby Keith. Just suplexed Jeff Jarrett. He has just become my favorite country western superstar. He is the angry American. Toby Keith should be banned. Building. He should be banned from this broadcast. He has no business. Oh, 
Next to you tonight. Oh, all man, I had was that say, great stuff. That was the most horrendous, bogus thing I've ever seen. Jeff Jarrett got screwed by Jackie Fargo. He just got screwed by Tony Keith. It's a good thing we're a TV 14 rating because there's a whole lot of screwing going on. And you better pick somebody up, buddy, because you're going oh. oh. Listen to the nice angle oh. shots just echoing off the chest of this monster malice. Apollo and Scott Hall joining forces and the handshake from Hall. The next entrance, Chris Harris. The Wildcat, Chris Harris. Three-time NWA North American champion has come out to join the fray. Four men in the battle, four men still vying for the gauntlet for the gold. Harris is on fire. Oh, There's Chris. The move made famous by the great Lou Thazen. But great, oh, look at this. Vampire Warrior has come out. Formerly known as Gangrel in the WWF. Right, the leader of the brood. Hey, he's supposed to wait 90 seconds. He came out. Oh! oh I mean, that's a believe, wasn't that right? Well, you know, Toby Keith came out. That was okay. I gotta tell you, I'm still steamed about that. I am totally infuriated that Jeff Jarrett got eliminated, not because Jeff Jarrett's a friend of mine or isn't a friend of mine, but because of the fact that that was wrong. Toby Keith had no business out here. I'll tell you what, you see the way Toby Keith picked him up and slammed him down? Yeah. He had business out here. In the score. Oh, Vampire Warrior. Destroying Wildcat Chris Harris. Punches, shots into the corner. Look at Harris come back with those left hands. Malice, Apollo, and Scott Hall. So now at this they point, punches as well. At this point, who's the Iron Man? Is it Apollo or Malice? Who's been in long? Apollo has been in this match the longest at this right. point. I, right. think, I think Apollo's been in longer, but if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, Malice has got more than the gold. For the gold. Dangerous Devin Storm, formerly Crowbar in WCW, World's Tag Champ, Hardcore Champ, and Cruiserweight Title Holder in World Championship Wrestling. Storm can't wait to get to that ring, and as it should be. Get in, do your damage, throw out as many people as you can. Scott Hall and the Vampire Warrior in one corner. Devin Storm and Apollo in the opposite corner. Malice getting some last-minute instructions by, by Minister James Mitchell. Plotting strategy from ringside. What does Mitchell have on his mind? Whispered something into the ear of Malice, and Malice turns his attention to Apollo. Oh, Harris hurts. Scott Hall, he's just laying in the background, waiting for an opportunity, but if one doesn't come, they'll just kick it and wait. That's strategy. That's smart. Hey, that, that is up. That Sitting on the top rope, however, I wouldn't say is the smartest thing. <laughs> I've got to say that. It's something that jumps with Double team clothesline on Harris from the Vampire Warrior and Devin Storm. Hall like a cat, pouncing, sees his opening. Check the countdown clock. The next entrant in the gauntlet for the gold, Steve Carino! The king of old school, the only former NWA World Heavyweight Champion entered in the gauntlet. Incredibly successful in Japan for the Zero One promotion. And Steve Carino slowly makes his way to the ring, and that's smart strategy as well. There's no sense rushing out here. Very smart of Karina to duck that attack from Devin Storm. Oh, 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 oh. Baby. There it goes. Storm and the Vampire Warrior not able to duck that clothesline by Karina. Oh, sh shades there of uh, Shinjiro Otani. The Otani kick by Karina on Wildcat Chris Harris in the corner. Oh, very smart. Oh, Mitchell. 
Did you see Jay Spears are pushing back through the ring ropes? Uh, you know what? Did anybody else see it? Did the referee see it? No. If the referee didn't see it, it didn't happen. I gotta agree with you. Tony Keith can come in here and put Jeff out, and that can go on. Thank you, Don. Finally, some words of wisdom from that end of the table. <laughs> Boy, I hate it when I gotta agree with him. Force yourself, baby. Force yourself. Oh, jawbreaker by Devin Storm on Scott Hall, and then Super kicks him into the corner. Now is when you need to form an alliance. These two guys, Devin Storm, Vampire Wolf. The next entry to the gauntlet for the gold, Ken Shamrock! The world's most dangerous man, the legendary mixed martial artist, the first ultimate fight super champ. Remember back to 98, he defeated Jeff Jarrett and The Rock to win the WWF's King of the Ring, and Ken Shamrock comes in and unleashes vicious kicks to the side of the head, first at Karina, then to Storm. Shamrock and oh, 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 and look at that oh, man. man. Malice didn't buckle. He said, "Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it down to the mat." I'm telling you, this Malice is up. He is unbelievable. He is huge. Harris, Harris almost Jack out. Harris, Vampire Harris, Warrior Harris. has Harris. Can he take him over? He's on the apron. No, he's not over. Don't ever turn your back, Vampire Warrior. That was a mistake. Harris back in the ring. And Vampire Warrior reeling. Vampire Warrior, Chris Harris, Steve Carino, Apollo, Devin Storm, Malice, Scott Hall. And Apollo has been in there for a while. In the battle. Apollo entered as contestant number five, and he is still out there. He's on his 14th opponent, Mike. He has been out there for the longest time of any of the competitors, and Ken Shamrock was number 19. Who's going to be number 20? I'd like to know who eliminated the most. The 20th entrance in the gauntlet for the gold, Brian Christopher. In the process of elimination, it had to be him, Brian Christopher, the second-generation wrestler, son of Jerry Lawler, is going to be contestant number 20, and now everyone in this matchup is out. The gauntlet will continue until the final two men are left in the ring. And at that time, we will have an NWA World's Heavyweight title match refereed by Ricky the Dragon. Oh, Who Harris is that? gone! Chris Harris, Chris Harris is, gone. is gone! Now what we're looking at right now, Devin Storm. Devin Storm out. Vampire Warrior. Vampire Warrior out. Three quick eliminations all within a matter of seconds. Oh, Devin Storm and the Vampire Warrior have been eliminated. Steve Carino, I on Brian Christopher. Remember when we get to the Chris final Harris two men. Been eliminated. When the final two men are left, not only will Steamboat be the referee, but NWA world title rules will apply. It's no longer over the top rope. It's pinfall or submission. Close line by Christopher. Carino's out. Steve Carino has been eliminated. Christopher has come in and put four out in less than a minute. Now these five men, one of these five oh. men will be the NWA world champion. Two slam by Christopher, and that stopped his streak of success. Look at Shamrock. When he saw Malice lift up Christopher with that choke slam, Shamrock kind of stepped back a second. He was wanting to size this guy up rather than charge headlong into him. Quite frankly, I don't blame him. This is like a pack of wolves. Uh, zero in on their play. Look at this. Oh, man. Shamrock just put Christopher on. Christopher, Brian Christopher has been eliminated. Brian Christopher has been eliminated. Shamrock smartly waits in the corner to see what happens. Oh! That was just oh! elevated in back body. Oh! He was 10 feet. Apollo has been eliminated. 10 feet above the ring. There's three left. Look at Shamrock. Shamrock is just, he's like a, he's like a Look lion. Look at this. Scott Hall goes oh!
Well, this is what it has come down to. We began with 20 competitors. We have narrowed the field to the final two. The world's most dangerous man. The first Ultimate Fight Super Champ, Ken Shamrock, against Big Malice. Six foot nine, 300 pounds, a member of Minister James Mitchell's Disciples of the New Church. Shamrock has got a decided advantage here because he came in much later in the game than, than Malice. But you've just got to just look at the two of them next to each other. Look at that Malice's size. This is going to be this is going to be a oh, side slam by Malice. Hooks the left shoulders are down. Oh, oh, only a two count from referee Steamboat. You got a minute. Malice is taking it to Shamrock. He knows what's on the line in this. The NWA World Heavyweight Championship. I mean, when Malice came in, he's got him elbow. Took him over with the suplex. Malice again for the cover. And only two. Malice first to his feet. He's got Shamrock by the back of the head and drives him face first into the top turnbuckle. Shamrock appears to be in trouble. You were right about Malice being out here longer than Shamrock. But think about the size and power advantage that Malice has. Can he drop down at this point? No, instead he goes for a vicious right hand to the top of the head of Shamrock. I'm more and more getting convinced that Malice is a machine. I mean, he's huge, buddy. When he first came in, he eliminated like four or five people right away. The thing is, you can tell, he's got to be tired, he's in there. But he's doing, he's, it's not, he's not letting it slow him down one little bit. As we look over the shoulder of the minister, James Mitchell, he watches his charge, the monster Malice. Just three seconds away from winning the NWA World Heavyweight title. He's got him in, possibly going to try and take him up for a choke slam. Oh, reverse, submission move by Samra. He's got the cross arm breaker. He's got the cross arm breaker on Malice. This is Steamboat checking to see if he submits. Malice needs to roll through. He needs to clasp his hands together. Did he tap? Did he just tap out? Referee Steamboat checking. No, he didn't. Shamrock has the cross arm breaker. He's got it applied. Malice needs to close the gap. Either that or reach out and grab the rope. Shamrock wrenching back on the arm. It's all on the line. He's got to get Shamrock to break that hold or he loses his arm. Shamrock has broken arms with this. That's what it's all about. How long can Malice withstand the pain? That's the question. And he's got the rope and he gets the rope break. How fortunate can you be? Oh, Shamrock so close to winning the world's heavyweight title. Malice totally favoring that right arm, and who would blame him? I'm, I'm surprised he can still use it after being stretched by Shamrock the way it was. Like I said, he's a machine. Just look at him. Well, you notice he went with a headbutt for an offensive move instead of trying to use the big right hand, and he just rocked Shamrock with one. Can he follow up now? Shamrock able to duck the clothesline. The big move. He's got it. This could be the ankle lock. The ankle lock applied by Shamrock. Look at him twist. The ankle's not meant to twist and turn that way. Very smart, though, keeping his arms extended like that. He gives himself a little breathing room to take some of the pressure off of that hole. Again, we ask the question. How long can Malice withstand the... Did he tap right there? No. Referee Steamboat checking with him to see if he submits. No, he's crawling he's towards the rope again. Right. to get the rope. Right. It worked for him before. It worked the first, and he got it again. And Shamrock pulls him back. What's Mitchell screaming about? Mitchell is screaming about wanting a rope break, and referee Steamboat says no. Malice had made it to the ring ropes. I've got to say, that's another bogus call here. He made it to the ropes. He grabbed it. Shamrock yanked him off. That should have been a break right there. The submission move that has gained Ken Shamrock so many victories in his career. Can the ankle lock be the difference in propelling Shamrock to the NWA World's Heavyweight title? And Malice again reaching for the ropes. Man, that just hurts sick here. Think about it. The longer that he's in this ankle lock, the more pain, the more punishment, and now when he makes it the ropes, and what's Steamboat going to do? Mitchell demanding that he break the hole. Well, now, the other side. now he's hooked the ropes, and Steamboat definitely says it's time to break. Counting Shamrock, and Shamrock's using all four seconds. Come on! You gotta break it, Kenny! Come on! Steamboat getting to Shamrock's face, I like this! Shamrock, that 
time was very close to being disqualified by Steamboat. That's why we got Steamboat out here. But it is Minister Mitchell and Malice. Shamrock going like after that injury strategy. Oh, man. First yard, the leg. But I got to ask the question. He hasn't gone down yet. We're well, talking about Malice. He hasn't gone down yet. Does he have the drive that it takes to be the champion? I think he does. At this point, Malice is operating on just one wheel. The effects of the ankle lock showing. Listen to the crowd chanting, let's go, Shamrock! Oh, man! Shamrock walked right into the big move. He goes in for the choke slam. He's got him throttled. Shamrock in trouble. Remember, it's pinfall or submission. Shamrock, Shamrock, belly to belly. Put to the leg. Two, champion of the world I've got to say I was very impressed with that match I was very very impressed with that match between those two individuals that we had at the end Malice impressed the hell out of me Ken Shamrock impressed the hell out of me we have a new champion I'd love to see those two go at it again just mano a mano and well I mean I don't think we've seen the last of Malice he made far too impressive a showing but right now it's all about our new champion Ken Shamrock NWA World Heavyweight Champion he proved himself in the ultimate fight as the first super champ and now he has proven himself as the world's heavyweight champion of the NWA the National Wrestling Alliance the NWA TNA heavyweight champ is Ken Shamrock You know, when you talk about a guy like Ken Shamrock, either him or the wall. I mean, it, it, you want to get into a fight with these two guys, it's like it's like running in the Special Olympics. You want to get in a fight with him. Even if, you, even if you win, you got to be retarded to do it. Unbelievable. At a, at a moment like this, that's the reference that you're going to make. I, we've got our new champion, ladies we've and gentlemen. We've got our new champion. We promised you a historic evening. And yes, we delivered. We delivered a historic that evening with Ken King. Shamrock. Jackie Fogel. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, no. Oh, well, What's going on here? Jeff Jarrett again. Joe Cavanaugh. Oh, and Jackie Fargo. NWA oh, official. Toby Keith. It's Toby Keith as well. Toby Keith. They've got security holding Toby Keith back and Jackie Fargo. Just making friends everywhere he goes tonight. Now we're going to win the draw. I got to tell you. Jeff's got a beef. He's got a gripe. We've got a new champion, that's true. But if Jeff Jarrett hadn't have gotten screwed by Toby Keith coming in and getting involved with the match, he might have been our new champion as well. Yeah, well, why don't you tell the people about the disrespect that Jeff Absolutely. Jarrett has shown everyone throughout the entire evening. Wait, Who okay, cares? That's the biggest bunch of crap I've ever now, heard. Now, thank you. Entire life. Now you what? You mean to tell me that the world title... It's going to be decided by a gauntlet for the gold match. Dory Funk, let me ask you, did you ever win a title in a battle royal? Did you? Harley, did you ever win one of your titles in a damn battle royal? It's a damn joke out here, Bullet, and you know it. All of y'all know it. How in the world can a world title be decided in a battle royal? He just won't let this go. Oh, oh man! God, right on! Look at the biggest joke oh, I've ever seen in my entire oh, life. Damn you, oh, Jarrett! A world it. title is decided by a battle wall. Oh, what kind of NW? We gotta get some help here. Uh oh. Jackie Fargo, Toby Fargo, Keith are coming out. Roll, roll up. Oh, Let me tell you something, you pump. You no good, dirty, rotten, low down 14 kids, son of a. Son yeah, yeah, well, you watch. Then I was listening to me. The wrestling business for many years. He's a country music singer, but I'll tell you what I'll do, Pally. I'll get some out here and whoop your ass next week. We ain't gotta wait for next week. Let's get it on right now. Scott Hall! Scott Hall! There he is! Oh my god! Scott we Hall. ain't gotta wait. You want some of me, you damn. Jared, I can't believe this. They're going at it. We're out of here. Paul versus Jared next week.
We're talking about the amazing car. We're talking about somebody that was so dominant. Talking about somebody that absolutely rushed. Gail Cameron, you saw the fear in the girls' faces. You saw them climbing out of the room. You saw the fear in JB. And I mean it. If you're in the back of your mind, is there anybody that can stand up to Awesome Kong? You know, for about for weeks, in anticipation of this TNA Knockouts gauntlet, we talked about who we thought were the favorites in the match. And oftentimes, we centered on the knockouts that we were familiar with. Somebody like Ms. Brooks, who just caught Jackie Moore with that big boot. Someone like a Gail Kim. But then we saw Awesome Kong on Impact this week, and I think a lot of people changed their mind when it came to picking a winner in this match. Well, she was just so impressive and just so incredible how agile she was and all the different things she could do, and it's just it's just something that you can't help but think about. But I look at Jackie Moore, and I think of her experience and how tough she is and how she's not afraid of anybody. Nine. Whoa, what a that was right there on Miss Brooks. Crowd here at Bound for Glory in Atlanta counts down as you see the clock is well timed for another the next competitor. The participant from California, Shelly Martinez. I know you had a chance to talk to Shelly Martinez prior to this knockout gauntlet, and she told you keep an eye on her lucha libre moves, didn't she? Well, yeah, she did so much work in Mexico, and so she calls her, considers herself lucha libre with that background she's got. From California, and you can see how she's coming in. Just throwing the elbows, but Miss Brooks able to catch him, but didn't miss. Martinez and Miss Brooks, and Miss Brooks just got dropped that time. Martinez off the ropes, flying forearm shot. Well, she's got attitude. Just recently, she was in a the next Elvira contest. The reality show was just on TV, and when she was finally eliminated, she literally looked at Elvira and told her to go to hell. She'd see her in hell. That's the attitude she's got. Nine. I can imagine perfect for this TNA knockout gauntlet. Countdown clock continues. We'll find out who the fourth competitor to enter will be. From Tokyo, Japan, standing six feet one inches tall, weighing 272 and three eighth pounds, Awesome Kong. Well, you heard the announcement. Six foot one, 272 and yeah, three eighth pounds. That gives her, in my mind, a minimum don of a 150-pound weight advantage over all the other competitors tonight in an opportunity to win the TNA Knockout Championship. Look at her stride to the ring and look at, look at her on ringside. Even so, Cal Val just look ran and is hiding behind the broadcast table and not sure I can blame her. Uh, it's unbelievable. If you can see Jackie Moore, though, not afraid. Say, come on in. And if you're going to be a TNA champion, you can't be afraid. But you've got to wonder, they wonder in their mind at what Awesome Kong can do. And all three of them attack her at once. Probably a good move. But look at this. She just sheds all three. Take Shelly Martinez. The next participant from the Midwest, Minnesota. ODB. Who's going to be next? ODB is next. Here comes oh, look at the strength that you can that's see. A, that's Ms. Eliminated. Brooks is eliminated. Just the strength of Shelly Martinez is eliminated. She Two. just sent Shelly Martinez out that quick and look at Jackie Moore. Goes right at her. Jumps on the back as ODB being introduced, not ready to get quite ready in the ring. Oh, the ODB's got quite an attitude as well as oh. we saw. Look at this double under. Look at this. What a double oh. Lord. Just the strength of Awesome Kong and look at the look in her face. I mean, she's impressive. And Miss Jackie. Oh, look at that. Miss Jackie sits. Moore is eliminated. Just like that, she just eliminated three competitors, Don. She oh, eliminated no. Shelly Martinez, Miss Brooks, and the Pirate Tennessee Jackie nine. Moore. Steer off here, face down with ODB. And big, awesome Kong. Well, look at ODB trying to show she's not intimidated, sending right, but awesome Kong doesn't even fight. Oh, to Ontario, oh. Canada. Angel Williams. Angel Williams heading down towards the ring. Meanwhile, the action in the six sides has been all awesome talk. The three quick eliminations, and here comes Angel Williams, and all I can say is good luck, Angel. Well, you gotta admire her spirit, too. Just like Miss Jackie Moore and, and ODB and all of them, they're just they're going right after her. I mean, they, they know it's intimidating, but you've gotta figure out a way to beat her. You can't fight her one-on-one. -on -one. You just can't do it. Oh, my God! I mean, she snaps it off as good as 
see, buddy, you see. She is nothing like we have ever seen, Don, in women's wrestling here in the United States. Look at the insecurity try by Angel. Nice kick. Nice kick, but look at the impact. Not much. Well, you Ten, just got to keep going nine, at her and do like you're doing there with the double team. They're going to have to work together. That's just all there is to it. If she gets down to one on one, it's going to be hard for her to get beat. Double team suplex that is quickly reversed. From Los Angeles, California, Christy Hemme. And here comes Christy Heavy to the ring. We usually see her with Lance Boyd and Jimmy Ray. Christy sprinting to the six sides. But when you get there, Christy, as we see, she puts on the brakes the second she makes eye contact with Awesome Kong, who grabs her by the long red lock. Oh, man, that was just one of those things to be prepared. But when you come face to face and you realize that you've got to deal with Awesome Kong, then that was what happened to Christy Hemme right there. And she just got mentally beaten. And look at what Awesome Kong has done, holding her up high, and oh, no. Oh, no. We saw that adrenaline, yes. that adrenaline rush from Christy Hemme. She put on the brakes when she got in. She's being racked. Look at her. She's just, she's using her body and prints and using like a pretzel, just twisting it, contorting it. You Five, can hear Christy Hemme four. screaming. Oh, the pain has got to be unreal. She's just twisting her around, doing anything she wants. Power bomb coming. Oh, oh my God. God. Gail Kim, but if there's anybody that knows the power of Awesome Paul, it's Gail Kim, and she comes right after with a drop kick. I like this. Take the fight right to her. Catches her with that top rope missile drop kick. Follows over the series of moves, but then Paul just tossed her away. Oh, but look at this as they go after her. You see Angel Williams, and you see ODB going right. Wait a minute. Christy Hemme is hurt really bad. I don't know if we can get a camera there yeah. to see. We've got some, Christy Hemme. Some medics, medics have come out here, Don, to attend to check on Christy Hemme. And it's a serious situation oh. when you've got someone 272 and 3 8 pounds. She broke her back. Let's face it. She absolutely twisted her in two. And Gail Kim trying to go for a hurricane runna. I just don't think she's got the power. Oh, man. And now look at this. This is going to be it. Three, you can see Gail two, look, calling one. for help. Gail's holding on. And here is ODB. And there's Angel Williams. And can you believe it? Oh, it's so cool. It's been eliminated. That's that amazing. And it took three not to eliminate her, but they did it. They have taken Awesome Kong out of the match. Somehow Gail Kim able to stay alive, but Awesome Kong is gone. They're parting Christy Hemi to the back. Oh, she is so hurt. I mean, what, what Awesome Kong did to her just defied logic. I think we're more shocked, though, Don, to see Awesome Kong eliminated in this match, but it took three individuals to do it. It took Gail Kim, it took Angel Williams and ODB. Oh, nice move by Angel Williams as she just snapped her neck on the top rope as Talia Madison just faced the front of that. And look at this, ODB and Gail Kim with a double team. Angel Williams and is And sent Angel Williams out. Now we see, yeah, Talia Madison's in there. ODB, Gail Kim as well. We know who the tenth competitor is going to be at this point because of Hawks in the boat earning four, that spot. Three, ODB two, is just a wild woman. I mean, you know, she got that that monitor. The ODB. Final competitor from I'll tell you what Square, it stands for in just a minute. Lucy, Remember our situation here with the gauntlet. The rules earlier. It's a pinfall or submission match. At the point that we get down to the final two, we've got three in the ring, and here comes Roxy Laveau, the voodoo queen, out to make it number four. Well, she's got such an advantage if she's the last one, and everybody else has had to deal with Awesome Kong and everything else. But ODB right now, very aggressive. She's just wild. She's a party animal. You, you want to know what it stands for? Well, I'll tell you. It stands for one dirty bitch. That's what it stands for. Oh, thank, and, good. And, thank goodness we're on pay That's the only reason I'd say it, because that, you heard it, there it is. Well, you said earlier the edge, the advantage that goes with being that number 10 participant that the Voodoo Queen Roxy Laveau has. But then you added that we factor in what we just witnessed, the elimination of Awesome Kong. And to me, I think Roxy Laveau immediately becomes the favorite here. Well, she has to be, as everybody else has had to face so much. And Roxy Laveau, by winning that earlier, able to get the coveted 10th spot and look at her take control, Mike. There goes ODB directly into the turnbuckles. This is Talia Madison and Gail Kim, and Gail just overpowers her. Oh, look at the elbow shots by Gail Kim. Just such force as she goes right after Talia Madison. 
very athletic, wrestled all over the world, but right now you've got Gail Kim oh. to just eliminate Tilly her. Tilly Anderson has been eliminated. She's out. We're down to the final three. And no, now we're down to the final Holy two. Holy Lee has been eliminated. Down. Now, ring the bell because it's time for a match. Pin and submission to decide it. who's going to leave bound for glory as the first TNA knockout champ. Look at the elbow shots, though. They're not holding back for one minute. They're trying to beat each other up. It's not about finesse at this point. It's just about, look at this, and wow. Great move by Roxy LeBeau. She just let the momentum of Gail Kim carry her to the pin. It was so fluid that time. Was. Shot her off into the ropes, and then the fall-away slam just like that, but Gail Kim powers out at two. Back first into the turnbuckle. Voodoo Queen charges in. Gail Kim gets the knees up and look at her spin. Octopus oh. submission. Oh, she's got a hold of her. She's got the legs stitched in. She's pulling back on the arm. You can see it. Look at how Rock the ball goes to her knees. But look at Rock the ball. Stand all, oh, but she can't as Gail Kim breaks her back down. Uh, she's gonna get to she the ropes, to and yes, she gets to the safety of the rope break. Great move there by Gail Kim with that octopus, seizing the arms as well as the head. Gail gonna go high risk for us here. Here she goes, headed out to the top. Oh, and she went for that double drop, that drop kick, and she just Pin two. Oh, maybe no. we'll get the shot up just in time. She landed hard, though. Voodoo Queen just on the verge of victory. Pin her submission to decide it. Who makes history tonight at Bound for Glory? The Voodoo Queen or Gail Kim? Oh, Rocky Lamo now in control and showing her power and her strength. As that move, she loves to just spin that around and face plant it. Roll Gail up. Kim, roll up. Two, Two no. no. So close for Gail Kim. Both these. How important is it? How oh. special is it to be, wait a minute, bridge? Oh. Went for the power bomb, then floated over with that bridge and almost had the shoulders of Gail down. Now we've seen near falls here. Two of them for the Voodoo Queen on Gail and one for Gail Kim. Gail's down. Roxy LeBeau measuring, and I think here comes one of those Voodoo spells. Oh, just trying to get into the mind of Gail Kim, whatever she can do. But I mean, think about it for both these, how important it is to become the very first ever TNA Women's Champion. And look at Gail Kim showing her strength at all. She sends her back Ten, down. Two, three, got it. Got it. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner and the first ever TNA Knockout Champion, Gail Kim. History made in Atlanta at Bound for Glory as Gail I mean, think about this moment. If she's talked about this from the day she came to TNA, when will there be a women's division? And it was something she, she was just waiting for and waiting for. And a two-year dream realized, Mike. Gail Kim will always be the first ever women's TNA champion. TNA did it right. They waited until the moment was right. And we have crowned our first knockout champ and it's an awfully proud Gail Kim who accepts the products from the crowd here in the ATL. Don West cheers along at ringside, as I'm sure many of you do at home. And no! No way! No! No way! Like there is with the foresight, so it makes every move even more painful and more impactful. There you see it. Cage doors lock, and here we go. We are all in elimination as you see Daniels and the Cowboy James Gorman, they just go right at it. I mean, look at this. One counter, nobody. I don't think there's any two tag teams in DNA history that know each other better than these four. They have locked horns so many times, and in fact, Triple X has actually come out victorious, believe it or not, more than even AMW. They have some kind of a magic over AMW at times, but we saw what happened the last time they were in the cage. And let me tell you something, this is going to be a war. Exchange now, prime time in the south ball. The Wildcat Chris Harris. Harris momentarily getting the better of it until prime time drives the knee. Oh, a second time, and now a third right into the midsection of the Wildcat. Oh, you can see the athleticism of, of prime time right there. He just doesn't matter that Wildcat Chris Harris has a little size advantage. Prime time is so strong, but look at the look at the power of the Wildcat Chris Harris. Full Nelson slam. What did you say just a minute or two earlier about how these teams know each other so well? Just saw an example of it there. Prime time walked right into that Full Nelson slam, and now AMW double team. Nice high back body drop. And now Daniels. Oh, he's being hit with a series of shots from AMW. He found himself in no man's land right there, right in between. But oh, great counter right there by Daniels as he. He saw him that he's setting up for it. 
He took advantage, but there's Wildcat, as you can see, the two on one right there. Paul and Angel looking pretty good. Oh, the tilt right right and Daniel Chuck joins forces, and the double team moves, they just rammed him, they just drove him right into the unforgiving steel. Oh, nice. Close line right there by the Cowboy James Storm, as you see Prime Time go down. It's an AMW right now. They've, oh, again! The thing about this cage, too, is it's so close to the ropes. It's not a big distance away. So when you hit the ropes, 99% of the time, you also catch the cage. That's a great point. And now, speaking of catching the cage, we saw earlier when they said Daniels face first, and look at how Daniels has been split wide open. Well, I, like I said, it's like a cheese grater. I mean, you really can't describe it. And we remember when AMW and the Naturals took for each other in the six sides of steel. Before it was over with, the entire floor of the, of the ring was covered in blood. Everybody was bleeding it. It's almost unavoidable in a match like this. Like the intensity of the matchup is pretty obvious from the opening couple of minutes as AMW Thanks to Harrison, Storm going right on the double team attack, have taken control, and now they've got Daniels up. The Wildcat takes it from the suplex. A prime time in, blocking from behind. Well, that's what you're going to have to do. You're stuck in that ring in there. There's no way out, so you've got to help your partner out every chance you get, especially now with Daniels cut open right there. We don't know how serious the injury is. Prime time's got to have his back. Fallen Angel fighting what a through. Slam. Joins with Prime Time for the double team slam, and then Prime Time takes his own partner and drops Daniels across the prone Chris Harris. You can see right here the teamwork that Triple X is using, and both these teams have an unbelievable ability to know when to make a tag, to know how to keep each partner fresh. We talked about it a lot tonight, as we've seen it, but let me tell you something, folks. These these four wrote the book on us. Love that overhead sky cam type shot that we have, Don, that takes us above yes. the steel cage. There you see a look at it, which just really makes you feel like you're right inside the well, six sides of steel with these four. And, and look how high the cage is over these guys' heads. That's what's so great about that shot. We're not talking some little cage here. We're talking 20 feet tall. I mean, it's unbelievable. Now the opportunity exists for Triple X to take advantage of the double team. The headbutt by Daniels of all things. Daniels already split wide open. The blood just gushing out of his forehead. Doesn't oh. stop him from unleashing another headbutt. No, I think they went into this match knowing that it was very possible that they could be cut open just because of the, the dangers involved when you're in the... Oh, but cut open? Look at the oh blood! Oh my gosh, it's just it's pouring like a, like out. It's like a faucet just pouring out of the head of Daniels. Holy cow. I mean, at some point here, we're going to see where this is going to affect Daniels. Oh, it's I mean, going to have to affect him. He's going to get weak. As his adrenaline at this point, Don, is enough where he's fighting through it. But he will be weak. And I mean, the blood's just pouring out of his oh, head. Oh, you could. I'll tell you what, there is so much on the line on this thing. Because let me tell you something. You lose this match. And if you're Triple X, you're never Triple X again. If you're AMW, you're never AMW again. You've got to put aside. The fact that you're cut open, you've got to let it go. And I just want, I just want to put Daniels just wipe his foot. Look at that towel right there. You can see right next to him, and it's just, wow, coming down and but, You know, there's no tomorrow for one of these two teams. One team will go on, one team will still exist. The losing team will be forced to disband. Nice back heel trip by Harris. Gonna try and take him up and just catapult prime time into the corner turnbuckle. I'll tell you what, Wildcat Chris Harris, people don't realize the strength of this guy. This guy was so close to winning the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. So close, and the injury kept him from doing that. And I'm telling you, he's got so much at stake, and when him and Storm are together, they just click, and right now, look at the cowboy Jake Storm just going in there with a big and series of wow. rings and then a power slam punctuates it. Nice no, kick. kick right there by the cowboy. Drill five time on the side of the head. Did the Tennessee cowboy James Storm motioning now, making some kind of a motion to the Wildcat. Are they gonna go death sentence here? Oh, nice move right there by Christopher Daniels. Just oh, but there he goes right off the top. High cross body block. Oh, man. And early in the match, I thought to go for the death sentence, but I think they probably figured that with Daniels weakened from the loss yes. of blood, strike quick. Oh, absolutely. It was an opportunity. Oh, oh God. You can see right there the face of Wildcat. Chris Harris just caught the steel cage face first. Primetime, Primetime just elevated him yes. and drove him face first into the steel. I don't think people realize how strong the Primetime is. I mean, when you look at him, he's such a physical specimen. 
and you don't realize how sharp that steel oh, is. Look at the handcuffs. They were underneath the towel right there at Triple H. Hey, Scott Logan, well, Chris Harris handcuffed. Oh, what a dirty trick. Prime time. Able to use the cuffs at AMW. Look at this. Oh, he, he talked about that cheese grater. He's just raking his face directly across that steel cage. God. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna look and see. I think well, okay, Chris Harris might be busted open right now as we see Christopher Daniels at prime time doing the two on one. Triple X with the double team on Storm. Yeah, it looks to me like Harris here. He's, yeah. he's hooked in the corner with oh, the he is. He is bleeding, I'm telling you. It's, we saw his face just rake right against the cage. What's the referee to do in a situation like this? No, I, don't, I don't even know why anybody would want to ref a match like this. You're stuck in there. Look at the taunting right now. And Triple X feeling awful good right now. They've got the numbers game. They've got the, the Wildcat handcuffed. And the referee. Oh, look at this. He's, He's got the key. The key. He's, He's got the key. Dangling the key. Daniels has got that handcuff key. You're right, taunting is exactly the word. Oh, God. now he's taking the key and he's grinding it into the head. A day storm. I told you this was going to get out of hand. And look at this. And it is out the of taunts. Hand. Daniels almost like he's like he's wearing that as a medal, like he's wearing it as a trophy. Yes. Oh, this is just wrong. But you, you've got to give them something. They had a plan. They found an opportunity. Look out. Look at this. They just slammed Dave Storm right into the steel cage. Double team move again on Storm. You're right, Don. Face first right into the steel. Turn their attention back to the Wildcat. Oh, you can see Christopher Daniels right there. Just gives a blow right there to the Cowboy. Nice kick, and it looks like he's bleeding. Yes, he is. And now they're grinding it right where their head hit the cage. I'm telling you, it's almost unavoidable. Both members. When your face rubs against that steel. Both members of America's Most Wanted, both Chris Harris and James Storm, they've been split wide open. You see Daniels of Triple X already bleeding. Three of the yeah. four men shedding blood here with the six sides of steel. Oh, and Chris Harris is just feeling so oh, vulnerable, God. so helpless. He's stuck in the corner. Christopher Daniels just spit on him, and he knows that his partner is in no man's land, and they taunt Chris Harris. They taunt him. And Harris screaming for the key, but you can see Christopher Daniels has no intention of giving it up. And Storm is out. Storm's been laid out. The handcuffs in place around Harris. He's hooked to the, to the side of the ring. And now Triple X continues what is just an, an out and out assault here as we see Daniels up on top. Oh, wait a minute. Prime time to turn him around. Gonna take him up powerbomb style. Oh, look at now. this. Look at it. Oh, oh, he takes the elbow off the top rope. Christopher Daniels, and now Christopher Daniels has it in hand. And the teamwork is just too much for the Cowboy to overcome, and again, Christopher Daniels goes to the top rope, and this time he uses the team. He actually hit his partner, and then a spear. Close line, took down prime time. There's the spear, and look at that. The key is right there. Look at that. The key is laying right there on the canvas. You can see Wolfgang Grazier is screaming at his partner. They throw in the key to get the key to him. James Storm, he's got the key. Just slide it over to Harris. Oh, but I have to think of the beating the Storm's taking. He, he's just the pod lady who wants to make sure that he doesn't throw it out of the reach. Of he's got it. He's got it. Harris has got the key, and now Harris can uncuff himself. Well, this is what AMW wow. needs. That Absolutely, a little turnaround here. That incredibly hopeless feeling that Chris Harris had while he was cuffed to the corner, just watching his partner, James Storm, be beaten half to death by Triple X. Oh, he's he unhooked. Man, now you know it. And he is mad. Wow, another right close line right there. Boy. Look at his power. Oh, my gosh. Christopher Daniels just was pummeled into the man. Left arm lariat for primetime spine buster for Daniels. And now Storm back up to his feet as well. And here comes the AMW comeback. Oh, you can see it right there. They're just so far, but they're so close, but they don't. As you see, look at Wildcat, just blow after blow after blow. How many of those shots can you take to the head? Especially when you think about the blood that he's lost. 
But oh man, did you see the Cowboy Dave Storm? Just threw five times backwards into the steel cage. Elevated it, took him up into the air, just flung him into the steel. There's the high vertical by Harris. Oh, look at the strength that he can do. Just holds him up in the air, and again he holds him up in the air. And he just runs him back to the other side of the cage. And then plants him, powers him down off the suplex. And when we say that the blood is rushing to the head of Daniels, it's rushing down his head, pinning Tim Bartley. Oh, look, get him here. Look at the floor. Look at the ring. You can see blood everywhere. Oh, Five Dyke just couldn't hit it. But he does grab it right there, and he slams Cowboy James Storm down to the mat. Belly to belly as we oh, see Chris that. Harris, that's Harris. Harris. You can't you see, can't see him. You can't blood. identify him because his face is completely covered in a crimson mask. You've got that right, and now you see the teamwork right there in Triple X. Wow. Pop Lex, here's the pin. Cover, two. Oh, oh, he barely gets up in time. Now we see AMW. Storm gonna try and come back on clown time. Spinning neck breaker, he caught him with it. You see Storm right there again. Daniels. He sits Daniels back into the cage. This guy's face is gonna look like a pizza. Pizza when it's all over with. Man! Yeah, like raw hamburger is what it's gonna look like. Now prime time in trouble. Look at the AMW double team. Oh, oh man, he just slammed his head back. Left arm Lariat. Here's Did the he pin. No, Ooh. he fights out of it. Again, keep in mind here, the losing team will be forced to disband forever. The winners stay together. Oh, it's, there's so much on the line right now. They all know that it's it's so close. As you see Daniels put him in the cage, and now. Oh, wow, okay. Chris Harris has got Daniels right where he wants him, but prime time comes in, and here comes the teamwork. Slammed into the steel by both Daniels and Primetime. Wait a minute, they've got a game plan. They've got strategy here. What's it going to be? They make the motion that it's time to put away AMW. What are they doing right here as you see? Oh, wait a minute. They're doing AMW's own move. They're going to go for the death sentence the here. Death sentence. There he goes. And he hits it. Oh, that just rolled. Pin attempt. Here's the cover. Two. Here's two. He somehow kicks out of it. You've got to be kidding. It's a miracle. He kicked out of two. They tried to beat AMW oh, with their was... own move with the death sentence, but no, AMW's still alive. They're not going to let it happen. I cannot believe. I mean, that's just the... I don't know if it's the ultimate move of no. respect or respect, but did you notice? Daniel's motioning to prime time. Oh. Don't go to the top rope. Go to oh. the top of the cage. But Storm fights on Daniel. Oh, you can see right now prime time's up there. Believe me, when you, when you talk about being at the wrong place. Oh, look at this. Wow. He just slammed him from the top of the cage. He popped him over the top. From the top of the cage. Good God. You got to be kidding. Here's the pin. second away from forcing Triple X to break up for good. There is no way, but look at that right there. The Angels wings from Christopher Daniels to the cover. Oh, another two count, my God. They're going for everything. They're trying everything that they can. If they could just get that one blow. But when you've got all four in the ring right now, I mean, it's, it's mayhem if you see Daniels going up the top. But, we talk about high risk, but go to the top of this steel cage, it's the absolute ultimate when it comes to high risk wrestling. These two are fighting at the very top, as you see Daniels, who's just so Daniels going to the top. This. They're both up there. Move for move, look who's following him up to the you top. You've got to be kidding. Look, wait a minute, prime time climbing up right here. Oh man, Daniels, he's got to be weak from loss of blood, but he's going on adrenaline at this point. No. Prime time trying to make his way across the top of the steel. Look at this. Folks, this is do not ever try this at home. What is Prime time doing? What is he doing? No way. He's not going to try and walk that table from up to the No, no, he can't. He can't. He can not. No way. No. No. Keep it live!
Daniels will go to the replay. Daniels up on top. There's too damn much at stake. Trying to get his balance. You can see. Oh, he catches it with the elbow from the top. Elbow drop by Daniels. Here we go. I've never seen anything like this. seen anything like this in my life. Words cannot describe it. The carnage that we've seen. The incredible high-risk moves. And it's because there's so much at stake. There's so much at stake. And that's why you'll never see anything like this anywhere else in the world. But to the end, you're damn right. Look at that elbow drop from the top. That's coming. Oh, listen to the crowd. Everybody's on their feet. The appreciation is so obvious. They're fighting again up at the top of the steel. Daniel, look, uh, look at this. This Cowboy Jake Storm has got Daniels again in a predicament. And then Storm looks like he's going to try and suplex him in. Here comes prime time as well. Oh, here, no. here comes Harris from behind. They're just all fighting with everything. No! Oh. No way! No! Oh, my God. The Tower of Doom from off the top of the steel. Storm with the suplex on Daniels. Prime time with the electric chair. But Harris with the power bomb. This is the most effective Holy move. Shit. Because Holy from the shit. top came Daniels Holy all the way down. And that was the power bomb. God, we've got to see it again. Look at how much do they have left. Look at this, Daniels. And Storm took the brunt of that because they were so high up right there. You see Daniels. The blood there from his forehead. You see the blood from Storm. Ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing one of the most classic cage matches in the history of professional wrestling. And they're going nuts at Universal Studios in Orlando because they know what's at stake as well. Everybody's on their feet. Look at the Wildcat holding his ribs. There's no doubt he probably might have even broke one or two with everything that they've happened. But you know what? You can't think about that right now. You just gotta suck it up because if you lose, you're done as a tag team, and that's how these guys have made their mark. Went for the POD, but it was blocked. Wildcat wind up. Oh, he went for the catatonic, but it was countered. Oh, right into the cage. You talked about it earlier, right at the outset, Don. You said they know each other inside out. That's exactly what we just have oh. seen again. But uh, you, you gotta wonder how can the mind even register after the things they've been through, after the blood loss. Look at this. Look at that headbutt by Christopher Daniels. He's just letting Storm have it. There's nothing. It's just words can't describe what we're seeing here tonight. Cut him with the knee coming in. It's the beautiful elbow shot. What a wild right hand that connected by Daniels. Four of the greatest wrestlers in one of the, one of the greatest matches in TNA history. You can say it because you're dead on. To hear the crowd chanting best match ever. They got to see something special here tonight. And so have you at home. Oh, man. Look at this, unreal. They just, wait a minute, did you see that? The Wildcat. That was a desperation move, oh. and I'm not sure that it paid off that time. Oh, I don't think it did either, but he was able to grab a hold of Daniels, but he stripped on the back of Prime Time, and his face caught the steel cage. This is unreal. Oh, oh. Wait a minute, what's Harris doing? Did he got him locked Oh, in? he's handcuffed in turnabout fair play. And that's exactly what we've seen. The turnabout. Oh, as yeah. Daniels has been hooked with the cuffs. Prime Time now is in a handicap match, so to speak. AMW, 12 one earlier, super kick, nailed him. Look at this. Are they going to do this? As you and see, Christopher Daniels. They're getting ready to go for the death sentence. What? Wait, wait a minute. He's making the triple X side. Now, earlier, earlier we saw Triple X try to beat AMW with their own move. But they're going to go for the power plex. They got the power plex. This is what we've been waiting for. It's decision time. Samoa Joe, we need your answer. What's it gonna be?
Well, you can see him what studying the documents. Samoa Joe turning the belt back in or not? Oh! He just ripped it up right there in front of Mike today. There's your answer. You get oh! Oh my god, what a picture this is! Kurt Angle 